Hello, this is Thurbleton for the week of two, uh, February 9th, 2013, and you're listening to the Lincoln Cast. I am the anchor as well as uh, new drama on news. Hello. He's Hello there. Time? Dur- Durin with sports. He's uh, always the, sports. The Super Bowl happened, and uh, <laughs> San Francisco is still bad. <laughs> Wonderful and self-confessed cynic with the weather. Am I the weather? Yes, I'm the weather again. I get to do the joke. Wait, let me bring up the um the web page. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not gonna let anyone speak until. Oh God, San Francisco. Okay, oh, so yeah. so it's gonna be sunny and then rainy with a chance of frost. He's saying that Canada lost influence, but it is a complete chimera that Canada ever had influence in the Arab world. So there's a chance of flame and frost. It's as if there's a gathering storm. Yep, that's that is where, where, where <laughs> we're going to shut down right now. Where in the world is it? Before we do, I, I move I, my I mouth with my it. mic when I laugh at movies. <laughs> <and bad jokes. laughs> oh, as long as I'm laughing, oh, that's right. That's right. Like, fucking Tay Zonday joke in 2013. <laughs> what? What? Uh, Darren, how you been, sir? I've been okay again. Um, did, did, you enter, did you ever be, end up beating uh, Antichamber? I, I did, as as you learned five minutes ago. So we're not supposed to reveal that we just well, we just recorded this intro ten minutes ago. <laughs> what I have to repeat everything. And I, I made some joke okay. about the Indian so, rape so, thing. So, and I no, chamber, okay. So I'll quickly just throw out what it is. It is a first-person puzzle game, um, somewhat akin to Portal, uh, except it has nothing to do with Portals. Um, I can't think of two games that it's like. I, yeah, Portal, but what what's the other touchstone you'd use? There was that game a while ago, which was um, similar aesthetic with all like white, but and with like green blocks you could extend from the wall and stuff. I remember they did a quick look of it on Giant Bomb. It looked really I, awesome. I thought, I thought the first you talking about Unfinished Swan. No, no, I don't know. It looked like he had you, you. You only see the dude's hands and like robot hands. And it, oh, he's like wearing gloves or something, and there's like lights at the yeah, tips yeah, of his fingers. Yeah, it looked really interesting. About yeah, but yeah, it's like kind um, so of like that. Is, you know, it's, a, it's it's a puzzle game. Um, the big difference for this one is it deals in non non Euclidean geometry, which basically means that the level it changes kind of based on your perception. I guess it would be yeah. the best way to describe it. In this yeah. one. Or um, like just just so, things don't make sense in if you try to yeah apply like the buzz behind you before when you look at this wall now suddenly is not there and it's a hallway instead or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But there is like a, ma- a constant map that you can always go back to and kind of teleport back to rooms you had been to previously, mm-hmm. which is kind of like at first sounds really fucked up. And like, how do you have non Euclidean geometry and still have a map? But as you kind of learn how the, the rooms interact with each other and learn kind of the tricks of the game, a lot of it kind of starts to make a weird bit of sense. So last week we talked um, about this, you seemed to be positive about it. You, you were positively opt- optimistic about how the game was going, even though you're having a relatively yeah. tough time with it, right? Or was that Shinboy who was yeah, having a time with it? Uh, Shinboy was having a worse time, I think, than I was with it. Um, but like I, I had just gotten um, past the point where Shinboy was stuck at, and I think that was a big hurdle for the right. game. And, and a, a point where once you get past that point, some very important things um, in, in how the game works um, can be revealed to you. And I say that because they're not so much revealed to you as it is that they are presented in some fashion and you are supposed to just kind of decipher that. Yeah. Well, and let's uh, not forget, you made it past that because I sort of like pushed you in that direction. Well, it was more like you let me know the one thing the game couldn't. And I'm trying not to, to you know spoil anything for anybody who couldn't might be still playing Couldn't or didn't? Couldn't because okay. that's that gets my major kind of um, gripes with the game, and that is that the guy that created this game because it is a game created by one guy, basically. Yeah, basically. Um, there were other people that helped with like music or sound, yeah, and all that stuff. He, people, he whatever. Level the art, um, but the guy, if, if he's going to go for something as ambitious as what he tried to do here, he needs to kind of learn some basics of level design. And one of those big key basics that seems to be really lacking with this game and is incredibly important with this game is conveying information to the player through the level design. Mm -hmm. So he tries to be as minimalistic with, with um, words and with like direct interaction with the player as he can be. Um, So like you'll, when you go through a puzzle, 
before the puzzle, there's no real like hint to get through it. But once you've gotten through it, there'll be a little like painting on the wall and you click on it and it has a little like, you know, one liner that kind of says essentially what you did. I I find that incredibly funny, but also like oddly, like is, is it, is there a chance that he just expected you to approach that puzzle from the other direction? No, because this is every single time. I think everyone's like issue with it. And this isn't like, this is in no way their fault. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is definitely, um, I was about to call him Dean Rocket. Uh, that's the guy who made Daisy. Who's the guy? Uh, whoever made uh, Antichamber. It's like the description I usually give is it's a more minimalistic approach than P- Portal took because there's no right. interaction. The only hints you have are the, like the names of stuff and the stuff on the wall. There's like no nobody else in the world, but it's set in the world of like the the scale of like the Ocarina of Time of Zelda. Because you are like so many choices, so many times you have to revisit old areas, but with no one telling you where to go, would like what happened with Durin this uh, this uh, second time around? Alexander is, Bruce, by the way, he's the guy. Who made that's it. Alexander Bruce, guy in the pink suit. He completely skipped all these like uh, things that trained him on how to get to this puzzle, and then and, and, and most importantly, like yeah. you know when you when you come across these that these are clearly something you need to pay attention to because each of the rooms are numbered. I came in at number seven. Yeah. So, and there's nine of them total. So, like, I completely bypassed one through six. A lot of the stuff, and and, and part of the way I bypassed it was by just strong arming a puzzle that I shouldn't have been able to get through yet. Like straight up, I did not have the gun to get through it, but I managed to strong arm my way through it anyway. Right. And so, is that is that a bug, or you're simply able to do that? Um, that is a lack of good play testing. I th- well, it's it's lack of playtesting, but it's also the inherent design, sort of it's, like it's, so, it's not though because the thing that, that the, the the thing that I strong armed was that that and I think this is vague enough that you know it's not going to give anything away. But there's that that wall of of I think it was green that was almost it wasn't that solid like there was some, some holes missing on it. The one that got um, you the circus room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, like, that was something I did not have the gun to get through. Had nothing to do with the design of the game. You're not intended to get through that without that gun. But I managed to kind of glitch my way into the blocks and then continue removing them while swinging my mouse around wildly and got through it. <laughs> like, that is that is that that has nothing to do with the design of the game. That is straight Maybe up bad the design of the game, man. Who knows? You and that's, know. that's kind of a, pro- a problem with this. It's, and I mean, it's a problem with indie games in general. Like, you can only get so much playtesting, especially when you can't afford to hire, you know, 200 playtesters to, yeah, to check, like, test your like game. The, the hey, game I always point to... I will playtest your game for free. As a, like, a fantastic <laughs> example of an incredibly designed indie game would be um, Bastion. But that's a like, comparatively much simpler game. Like, it's... It's more yeah, easy that's, to... It's also a team. It's also done by a team compared well, to this. Well, this was done by one man. Like eight total. But... I, like just yeah. in general, like anything, this isn't like based off standard game design practices. Like this no. is a pretty new thing. So I can, I can definitely, yeah. to some extent, I can, I can put like complaints like that kind of aside. If I was to actually, to some extent, it. yeah. Like, they, like that's that's something I would not like levy against the game as an like that example is not something I, le- I would levy against the game because, like you said, that's something you kind of put aside. It's mm-hmm. one guy; he probably only had a very small group of people yeah. to help play test it. It was, it was probably the people who were doing his music and like <laughs> friends and family. Yeah. Um, one other thing that like he he chose for it to be this way, uh, but like what, what, when he there there's a Total Biscuit did a interview with him when he was back at PAX Prime 2012, I think, mm-hmm. um, where. He talked about – compare like people will compare his game to Portal and he says uh, with Portal, you tend to solve the puzzle and then the act of progressing is actually going through these motions of like getting – going through the portals in the right order and all that. Yeah. So you plan out ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Whereas with Antichamber, you are solving the puzzle and then once you understand it, it's very easy to get through it. Right. Um, that lack of repetition I think hurts the game a little bit. In that there were times where Dern learned how to like use this level of the gun, but then forgot it later on, and I would have to remind him like, "Don't forget, you can do that. That's how you need to get through this part." And he's like, "Oh, I forgot they taught me that." Yeah, that's actually something I've heard because quite you a just few simply times. don't use it for a while. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> In that way. one thing I wanted I wanted to get back to um, quickly uh, was I was talking about like his. Uh, desire to you know have a minimal interaction with the player through you know just straight up t- 
telling the player what to do. Like there, there isn't that for the puzzles. Like you, you, you have the puzzle. The closest you get is kind of the, the name of the room when you go back and look at the map. Um, and it would be okay if like, if that was the direction he took for the entirety of the game, like that, I would be okay with that. But it's when you get a new gun and then you come across the first puzzle after you have gotten that gun and there is straight up a mouse dr- drawn on the wall with the button highlighted that you need to press to do whatever the new function is and the words saying like like press and hold or something right next to that all plastered on the wall right next to the puzzle. So how I'm, would you try and show well, somebody I, I'm, that? I'm imagining a game with because – all right. The goal of – teaching a player the entire game through minimal interaction has been around for quite a while. It's, it's, it's not yeah. new to this game. But um, yeah. I think <clears throat> to some extent, that goal in the pursuit of that goal kind of gets in the way of having an awesome game. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing a, a alternate reality where he got like a random friend of his to pull a kind of like a GLaDOS or narrator from Bastion kind of perspective whereas whereas you're going through the antechamber you're hearing this like old timey pa system and like a scientist in the other end informing you how to do stuff like when you go into the room it's like hold down the left trigger off the rifle to have this work and stuff like that i i, I would love to hear that kind of or when you get to the end of the puzzle have the like the old timey guy on the end of the pa system go ah oh, i see you figured it out and he and he just says in like decent delivery the same thing that would be on those pictures on the wall it, 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 if he put some humor into it and that kind of stuff, I think that would have been well, like an awesome game. An the problem with that game. is is kind of the, the general abstract nature of the game in general. Like something like that wouldn't necessarily work, right? Um, but I think something as simple as within, like, and this is something again that Portal did incredibly well. That this game could have learned from is within that room that houses the gun. Create a a very simple puzzle that requires whatever the new feature is of that gun in order to progress. Oh, yeah. Like, directly yeah, inside sure. that room. In order to leave the room, you have to do that. Just any form of teaching. Yes. Yeah. Like, that would that would be the best. Whereas in this one, there were times where I would get the gun, and there wouldn't be a puzzle nearby. I would actually, like, basically from there, I would just escape out, and or I would hit, like, a, you know, kind of a, somewhat of a dead end or, or end up back at a place I'd been to before directly after getting the gun, and I would basically just escape out and just start teleporting to different rooms until I found puzzles that coincided with that new gun. Yeah, I think that's, just, I think that's not a good way that, of teaching. If you want to have that format where like it's a very simple, straightforward, simple, you would think that's simple, but some people just have trouble with that. And I think if you were to like limit, okay, you can't escape from this room, that might cause frustration. But at the same time, I think that might be the best option. Because I've seen playthroughs where they get the like the first level of the gun – and what I think would be very basic, it takes them like 10, 15 minutes to get to get through and understand. And they will just quit halfway through the puzzle and go to another area before going through the tutorial room, as it were. Um, well, and I think that's, again, kind of an inherent problem of and this is kind of what I was getting at before uh, we had to start re-recording. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of an inherent problem of his decision to make this game. It's one of the one of the many inherent problems of him, his decision to make this game. A, an open-ended game allow you to kind of fast travel around wherever you want to and approach rooms at any um, time that you desire, assuming you have the abilities to get into those rooms. Um, where that's one one reason why Portal is successful in what it does, and this game kind of struggles with it, is with Portal, you come into a room and you have to get through that room to progress yeah, to the next room. It's, it's very it's right. very linear in that in that, in that way. The linearity so when you come into a room, lot. yeah, when you come into a room, the most important thing about it that this game really struggles with is in Portal, when you come into a room, you know you have all the tools that you need to get through that room. Yeah, there, this are, game, there are many you're times never where certain. Yeah, you, you just don't have what you need, and it doesn't tell you that you don't have what you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, that's that's a, bi- a big problem, I think, that this game struggles with a lot. Um, how would you, th- how would you think of it if, um, for example, he introduced the visual language of the entire wall being um, covered in... Like, this is just my mental image of what I would do to semi-fix the problem. Um, if, you enter, if you enter the room with the gun and you pick up the gun and then something changes around you that indicates that you can no longer leave this room by hitting escape, which is what you can do throughout the rest of the game. 
and then you're presented and then the puzzle appears as opposed to yeah. um that would be okay and, and that yeah. would actually not only would that be okay that would be okay and be it would make sense within the narrative of the game right and, and so then then you complete the puzzle then the the effect around you dissipates and then you can exit the room as, as no natural or whatever yes yeah. something else that might work that won't hinder on his ability to like like i'm just going to quit out is of Pretty early on, you notice that there's some other entity in the game that you notice that's like you you see it going all over the room. I'm not, I hope I'm not spoiling too much. Oh, but there's, a, there's a plot, somewhat. Yeah, there's a, like a pseudo plot. There's, you don't really get too much into it. Right. Yeah, uh, right. but it you see you see it several times throughout like, the game. And what might be useful is uh, what what Valve does a lot, like especially with the, the Half Life games, is they will show you an like an element of the game like either what a new enemy is like or what uh like what a new gun is like but in a controlled environment before letting the player use it like they intentionally can't interact with it they have to watch it um uh, happen and maybe having that entity solve the puzzle first and then like they're oh, yeah. stuck in a glass wall or something and then so you get to go around and mimic it um, yeah that would be okay too like that's and that, that's the thing that, it, like, it frustrates me so much is, like, you know, here in just the last few minutes we've come up with a couple of different ways, at least, of potentially solving this problem. Right. Why did this not come up during the production of this game? Like, wh- like did, did – did, was there never a time during the playtest sessions that people were like, well, this didn't quite make sense? And I feel like that might be part of the problem with maybe – I'm guessing a lot of his playtesting being friends and family yeah. is it would be like they would bring it up and he'd be like, well – this, 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 and this, and this, and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, they, they just that give them a, they, they Being and, someone's friend allows you to give them a free pass, whereas a player yeah. would just be like, no, this, yeah, no, and, this is wrong. You fucked up. You fucked up. Yeah, and like, like Thur- Thurb and I were having a conversation about that on Mumble um, a few days ago, I think, um, and he mentioned like that uh, uh, somebody was having uh, having issues with the game or whatever, and they kind of took to Twitter and talked to him, and, and kind of he helped them understand what they were doing wrong. And that's great, except that not all of us have direct access to the developer <laughs> of the game every time we get stuck. Like Indeed. that stuff needs to be in the game. We cannot rely on the developer outside of the game world to be like, "Hey, you, I'm I'm stuck on level three. What do I do?" Mm-hmm. Like that does that doesn't work. So it, I mean, that that's that's what, that's what gets me back to my original point of like this game is definitely worth worth playing. It's really great. Um, the ending is is actually actually pretty awesome. Right. Um, though the game doesn't make a lot of sense. And I fucking hate when games dump you back to the desktop. Um, but I definitely cannot recommend it at twenty dollars. I don't feel like it's it's a game worth that amount. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, fifteen, sales. fifteen at the most. Fifteen, Just... yeah, fifteen. I think is a good price for this game, uh, which is why I'm glad I picked it up at that amount. Um, but twenty definitely just feels like too much. Uh, and it it's it's something I can recommend because it is really interesting to play. But it's definitely not even close to a game without flaws. There are some pretty major flaws with with the way the game is developed. Very cool. Um, so you I, would recommend it on a sale? Yeah, yes, I, I think I would do much. that too. Yeah, and like you know, when the summer sale comes up, definitely I would recommend picking it up. What do you guys think of the? Will people crib off this game? Will this be a thing? Non Euclidean games going forward. Um, I think it's already kind of been a thing. <laughs> I mean, if you look at like, like as far back as like even Echochrome, like to some extent that was using kind of yeah, yeah, um, a yeah. form of non-Euclidean geometry. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I think that it's it's definitely something that people are really interested in, and it it forces people to use their mind in different ways, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait to see what a potential you know non-Euclidean based world would be on like a much larger scale like that would be really neat. really a, lo- a larger scale like, I, I don't like know Arma? well what i mean like larger scale is i mean in terms of like production oh right yeah just like if well, if if the guys who made portal bought you antichamber yeah or like or, or like, like an antichamber 2 yeah or, well, made I'm by more like, than one yeah dude. like yeah. antichamber 2 made on unreal tech 4 yeah like, that would be that could be potentially really neat yeah, the campiness but, of it being like made in the uh, uh, the UDK, the Unreal uh, Developer Kit, was nice. But next time around, oh, yeah. it'd, be, it'd be nice if it was its own 
executed. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you know, maybe put some fucking options in there. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Like, let me, you know, on adjust that. my volume. Mm-hmm. That'd be neat. Um. So yeah, yeah like there, there are definitely some issues with the game, but yeah. So play that, and then aside <laughs> from that, um, pretty much Guild Wars two. Fancy. Okay. Cool. I did, I did, did, did take that back. I did play a little bit. Um, I picked up. Uh, Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy IX on my Vita for like uh, Square Enix is doing their 25 year anniversary, so like all of their Final Fantasy games on PSN are half off. Yep. So I picked those games up for like five bucks a piece. Oh, very nice. I'll, I've never played Final Fantasy IX. I don't think I'll ever play Final Fantasy IX. Never oh, I would, I would, I would highly recommend it. I, I don't like the art style at all. People are dumb. <laughs> uh, people are dumb, but we will get into that later. New Rama. What you been up to, oh, sir? Oh, we're getting to that now. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Are you going to blame the snow to? people again? <laughs> Fuck you. I can blame whoever I want. It's, it's, these it's are the, snowing bad. These are the problem members yeah, yeah. of our society that we need to get rid of. I'm telling you, Cynic. And I'm going to be right one day when I take over the world. And I will get rid of these snow people. All right, um, sociopath. Before, before, I, before I delve... What? No. Before I delve into that, um, so this week I have been playing lots of Company of Heroes, like always. Um, I played some Crusader Kings, but then my leader got the inbred trait, so I kind of stopped playing that game. Um, and <laughs> How does that work? Well, man. What do you mean, um, it got the inbred oh, trait? It, it's, it, it's a negative five. Well, my leader dies, and then I accidentally married him to his cousin. And then it's basically like a minus five to all stats. So I'm like, <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't minus like this five for incest. That's awesome. Yeah, um, you also... I don't know. Is, is cousin screwing incest? Sexual trait ...and then have a bunch of... Pardon? Uh, is cousin uh, screwing incest? First, second cousins first is okay. Cousin. Cousins are still cousin. getting too close yeah. to the gene pool. Okay. Exactly. It all depends on the state that you're in. Yeah. All different right. States have different laws. I mean, uh, let's, we, we can ask the royal family. I mean, we, we can get down to it and, and just talk about it ethically, and yeah, it's, it's kind of fucked up. But kind of fucked up. legally... I think little sisters are okay, but cousins are a bit gross. Stop it. Moving stop on. stop um, saying things on. with your face that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also played quite a bit of Guild Wars this week. Um, you did. It was crazy seeing you on. Am I the only crazy. person who hasn't played Guild Wars this week? What the fuck? Yeah, basically. Yes. Um, well, told to you share, be the on only this episode. I was really playing is I got my f- Mr. Walks, my video game friend from the United Kingdom, recommended me to some British radio. Sk- comedy shows. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> there's this really good one called that that. The one I've been listening to literally all day today. Um, it's called. The, what the hell was it called? Um, Damn it! Uh, That's a good name. Uh, 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 wait, let me let me grab my. You phone. hyped this up so I much, and you cannot even remember its name. You're on the cutting edge of time. No, I, I will say why you're looking that up. The unbelievable well, truth. I, Sorry, I'll, I'll have to look to look up uh, what what you're going to link us. But I do enjoy uh, some radio shows like the Firestone yeah. Theater. But they've sort of fallen out of uh, favor in the U.S. It's it's nice to see they're still popular in the U.K. No, the unbelievable truth what is, is what it's called. What is it? Basically, it is basically you have a host and then a panel full of comedians. And basically, what the show is about is the host gives one of these comedians a topic, and they'll talk about this topic. Except everything is going to be lies, except for five facts that That's he will difficult. spread into this topic. That's difficult. Yeah, and so the point is to make all of the facts sound as ridiculous as possible, and the lies. Equal, either equally ridiculous or pretty realistic sounding, right. and it's basically awarded. And then the other panelists have to pick out what are the lies, and that's pretty for cool. Getting it right, they get one point, and if they don't get it right, they lose a point. And how, however, lies the person has so called smuggled in in through the end of the round, they get the amount of points depending on how many lies. And it's nice. it's pretty funny. I, I did I wasn't really into British comedy before, but yeah, because I was spend- cool. A large portion of high school listening to um, the Ricky Gervais XFM show with Carl Pilkington oh, right. oh, and um, Stephen Merchant. There's, so they, you can totally get by any form of means you feel necessary, nefarious included, the entire run of um, their show on XFM, which was like three or four seasons, each episode being like 20 minutes long. I, it's like a good 20 to 30 hours of content. And it's just literally... Like if if you you should follow it chronologically because it's like their discovery of the man, the myth, the legend, Carl Pickington, possibly the stupidest person in the world, and at, or most intelligent, or most intelligent. I have to be fair. Um, it's it, it it no one knows about Carl Pickington. It's awesome. <laughs> yes. So if you if you track it from the start, you you get their discovery of this genius, 
And um, as you follow the show along, it's, it's, it's their progression of getting to know him better. It, it, it started off as just them wanting to do some radio and play some music and ended up being like this grand like societal investigation of a, a, the craziness of a single man. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's one. So I thought you, you were talking about something like that. Um, I was actually surprised. Right. So this is more so, of a radio show. Um, yeah, it's more of a radio show. Um, it's more in line with radio shows, I guess. Um, and there, there are a lot of people who listen to podcasts while playing like MMO grindy kind of stuff, and that's more or less what I've been doing. Guild Wars Two, and I used to do that a lot, but and then I sort of stopped listening to podcasts. But this is something that you know, it's like really humorous. It's in- interesting to listen to, and there's like what ninety episodes for me to run through. So that's gonna be that's what's that's cool. Wait, that's how long is each episode? Of Guild Wars Two. Um, it's a twenty minute. 21 minutes so okay. assuming there was commercials halfway through like a 30 minute broadcast basically like a 30 minute television show um it's i i highly suggest everyone check it out like everyone, Stephen fry guest stars in it etc does anyone else have like an interesting like thing they listen to because i have another one um i think i've talked about it here before writing excuses <laughs> which is i swear i've talked about it. It, it it's like some of the best fantasy authors in the world and they they literally do each episode they're about 15 minutes uh. long Disgusting. on how to write so yeah it's really like really interesting topics like how do you write love how do you do that or oh there's a canadian show called the debaters where they just have comedians debate and that's oh, that's so awesome that's, that's actually that's probably one of my favorite things debates are um, always awesome especially when comedians it's just called <laughs> the debaters you can catch it on cbc radio one wait it's on canadian Nine comedians <laughs> No, I'm assuming they. <laughs> hey, 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 Jim Carrey is a Canadian comedian. Exactly. Jim is- Actually, Jim Carrey is pretty cool. Ace Aww. Ventura was fantastic, and two was possibly better. I can't decide. How about Son of the Mask? He wasn't in that one. You didn't like Ace Ventura? Uh, I, I something I've been watching lately. It's crazy. Um. Way to, inter- way to not no, no, say no, no. your segment and then shit all over my segment. Is this what I mean? <laughs> you you just get a shit the, over other people's other segments? People yeah. Wait, we're just suggesting other things you might listen to after you... you yeah. It's like just something I've been like... Well, I don't want to know about it now that you're shitting over <laughs> my like segment. I didn't, like I didn't say your one was bad. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Asshole. So so Durin, Durin, what do you want to say? It, it's a, a YouTube... Let him speak. I'm going to talk over him but and tell Nubarama... To let him speak. <laughs> Turn what you've been watching, sir. <laughs> it's, it's a YouTube show, I guess, uh, titled My Drunk Kitchen. Oh, that one's great. Oh, yeah, 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 with Hannah Harto. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I had Linked never heard me. of it before. I just, literally just kind of randomly came across it, and that show is amazing. It's, I mean, it's, she doesn't try, like, you know, to, to disguise what she does. It's she gets drunk in somebody's kitchen, usually her own, and cooks stuff. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's like, legitimately funny. London during the Olympics, and so she was like staying with somebody in London and doing her London cooking show <laughs> while drunk in their kitchen. It was great. Like she, she's yeah. So when he first leaked to me, I thought that she was clearly faking because no, no. one could be that crazy. Um, <laughs> I, she, she is that crazy. No, she, she's pretty. Cra- I think the episodes where it's cut more, like it's actually like edited together feel more fake to me but when it's one of those episodes where she just rambles on for a, the solid I feel like the 10 minutes that are cut means like the fact that just proves she was pretty drunk and she was she had no idea what she was doing like, uh, well oh, it was cut really yeah. well so it was just like constant humor and that doesn't sound right that didn't fly but when i when well, i looked at some of the others people they generally aren't all the time funny they're just sometimes rambling well and it's right. it's it's funny because like you can tell that she's clearly not faking it because as each episode goes on like like from the beginning of the episode to the end you can actually or she could be just really good more and more shit faced yeah right and just to be clear this is not a show where to learn how to cook or to even no yeah no oh, it's oh, truly for entertainment value and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I watched the episode uh, just before we did the podcast where she was cooking cookies and after a very long time of not actually having made cookies yet uh, she finally got the the dough made and everything, and realized she didn't have a cookie sheet, so she cooked <laughs> cookie muffin pan. Oh God! <laughs> Wait, was that with the guy from SciShow? Um, I don't know. There was a guy on there, but he was very rarely on. My main problem with SciShow now, is that I've finished should... watching almost all of SciShow. It is. I, I will. I will get you on another science youtube channel i think you link me to one i don't know i, I think scishow has a, a very specific balance of like hank the guy who presents is just so 
like legitimately funny, but also yeah. knows a shitload about what he's talking about. That he, he just does better than talking people. about. Um, so SciShow is another one of these YouTube channels. It's just it's just SciShow, I believe. There's nothing particular about its channel name. Um, and they just put up like five to ten minute segments every couple days or week. And it's just them talking about various topics, like either like science news of the week or an actual topic like um, what is fracking um, or like the end of the world or how it, it's likely for the universe to end and stuff, stuff like that. It's, they're all like consistently interesting. <laughs> um, one of the most interesting is like uh, our, it was like monogamy um, in animals and humans. And that, that was like legitimately interesting in oh, that. Yeah, that's actually the one I saw. Yeah. Humans are not monogamous at all. Um so like that's are the you, kind are of you they done do. derailing my segment. And thing? Hank is awesome. Like the, the guy presents it is I'm legitimately fuck you awesome. Up so bad in your segment, you better you, watch out, man. You Ramo, t- what what good YouTube segments do you like watching <laughs> that <laughs> are still safe rated for families? Well, that's, that's, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's not entirely so, required. Yeah. You can say anything, it's really. Pseudo safe because you know the during well, was people getting in, drunk. Safe as in you don't need the onion writer to access it then I don't have anything for you. Oh, okay. Um, however, I do have a story about eating really disgusting food today. Oh, awesome. Would you hear the story? Yes, I want to hear well, the story. Well, before that, I'm going to complain about snow for a bit. Okay. <laughs> oh, so God damn it. The northwest, northeastern United States and Didn't southern Didn't we agree Ontario, for you to not do this because you've done it before? You can eat a dick, Cynic, because <laughs> you cut into my segment. Um, I'm very passionate about my... So it's snowed about 40, 50 centimeters in southern Ontario. To be clear, that's two feet. That's two feet. Um, And you know what that means? That means fucking shoveling snow for three hours. And it got so bad to the point that my dog, I had to shovel my backyard where there's grass because my dog couldn't go do his business outside because the second he walked outside, like he'd be up to his neck in snow. So I had to literally shovel the backyard of my house. So he could shovel. You had to to shovel out a crap hole for your dog. Yes, I had to shovel out like a <laughs> large trench that would be like <laughs> a latrine, know, even. Yeah, like with a diameter of ten feet. <laughs> what? So my dog. Bullshit! You, you shovel ten feet worth of snow. So and it's not even. A it's diameter. like that's huge. That's a gigantic that's area. A, that's well, it's a backyard. Let's see what he's got a big dog. Ten yeah, times no, three. It's diameter ten feet, right? So it's five not, squared not radius, times three, so 75 square feet of snow that you shoveled. That took you like an hour. That'll take you ages. It took a long time. <laughs> it took a fucking long time. And God I had damn. to do this for my fucking dog. And you know what I'm going you know to have to deal with when I go, go to City Hall on Monday? I'm going to have to deal with senile old people complaining about how their driveway hasn't been cleaned. So fuck you. Fuck you. If you're an old person listening out there living in Toronto... Fuck you. Hello, I woke up this morning and there was a large amount of snow in my front (laughs) yard. Going back to the food story, you guys know what a beaver tail is? Oh, thank God. You're finished talking about snow? Awesome. Yeah. Do you guys know what a beaver tail is? No. Not aside from the obvious. Is it an actual beaver's tail? No, it is a Canadian food where it's like, it's well-known Canadian, but it's just basically fried dough, like deep fried dough covered in sugar and chocolate sauce and then they and then they sell that to people, and <laughs> basically I was just walking around it's, it's town. So food, with chocolate. yeah, it's with, food. Basically, with a couple, yeah, with a couple other people, and basically there was this empty parking lot, and then there were a line of people, and then there was music playing from 2005, and they thought it was tasteful to play that kind of music. But <laughs> I, regardless, and it turns out they're basically celebrating that they're going to build an a uh, condominium on this parking lot and so they're just giving out free food and that's apparently what condominium companies do um cute so they had this these two big like trucks of food and some fucking clown that's making little balloons for the little babies right an actual clown and, um, yeah an actual dressed like clown. a clown yeah dressed like what a does clown a canadian clown like... look like did you ever see the movie it no no <laughs> um yeah so is that an old people joke it, no. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Um, you didn't ask me a question. What does a Canadian clown look like? It looks like a clown. I don't know. It, you know, like he has the maple leaves all over his face, and then he just says a boot and a, and okay. like, shoot them pop 
Jones. That makes sense. Okay, okay. so that, that's what I figured. Is there like um, a disparity in the colors clowns pick from country to country? That has to be right, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I, damn it, I'm the only one here who finds that incredibly interesting. Oh, well, I'll just Google it later. <laughs> Fuck clowns. What, what are you I'm, doing? I wonder um, if there's a site that tells you so like the most common the clown Indian, colors yeah. per country. Is so this fucking deep fried dough that's that that alone is enough to make you sick. And it's it's pretty big. It's like the size of like put your hands together, like palm to palm, and that's like that's the size of it, and just deep fried dough covered in the chocolate sauce and sugar. And they serve that with hot chocolate and fries. And that's what I had for lunch today. And it turns out, um for some reason, women like eating that stuff more than men do, which is really weird. This clown looks so sad. He's got like. All right, let me just describe this. White with red polka dots. Apparently, I don't, I don't, I don't think he needs to cynic, describe when it because thinks most of people a clown, know. Clown that like makes. No, but he is. He isn't bald or anything. Sorry, he's bald. He's bald with a hat. Look at his hand. Why no, no. no. What, I was, what I was saying though is like you don't really need to describe it because most people know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what the beaver tail thing? Beaver no, no, no. It. The the the, the clown. Is it just called it? Yeah, it, that's, that's the name of the movie. Oh, no, I was looking up um, Circus Clown on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 thought you were, I, I thought you were about to describe the link that was posted up here. Oh, was there a link? Let me have a look. I'm going to comment on this. Um, <laughs> All right. Someone describe this picture. Because oh, okay. No, it's, 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 it's a clown, but he's hand. got like reptile hands as opposed to human hands. Oh, right. I was looking um, at Circus Clown on Wikipedia because... There's like pictures. Old timey clowns look way different from modern clowns. As, Do they I not have the circus different. in Australia or something? The, well, it's infrequent. Yeah, like what's here. the fascination with clowns? Yeah. Uh, no, I was just wondering because because colors mean different did you, things. Did you pick that circus country, fruit and get right? worse too because you've never experienced? Like, there's the some colors that are always the same. Like I believe red being passion and blood and stuff is is pretty predominant amongst most cultures. But I think other colors like green and blue definitely have different meanings. Are we talking that. about the friendly clowns that go to birthday parties or like the bad clowns that rape children? I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> I was going to make that joke. And then I was like, <laughs> no, but friendly clowns, are told, because I, I have tremendous respect for a person who's capable of maintaining that level of energy all day. Like being a clown is probably really difficult. Without kids. Um. Sure. Yeah. Being, Why being... the fuck are we on the subject of clowns? <laughs> what <are> we... <laughs> I don't know. Because I don't this know. Says to derail everything that has to happen with me. You're <laughs> God damn it! Be prepared for your derailing. He, he's already had his segment. Right. Oh, right. And while I was shoveling snow the other day, I, I came the closest to. Wait. Was there anything interesting about the food you ate, other than the fact that it was fatty? It was disgusting, and also the the ladies that I was with. Seem to eat a lot more. Was that, of that shit was that was that it? Like you, you wanted to use the leaky cast as a vehicle for your sexism? Um, no, <laughs> no, no. It just kind of happened. <laughs> no, <laughs> women like eating fatty foods more than men do. Ah, I'm new forever. Um, no, but it was also yesterday. Was also the closest I came to drop kicking a kid. Um, basically, I was shoveling snow, and this fucking Did like eight year old kid. Oh, okay, no, right. this eight-year-old kid basically just like he he ran he runs into the pile of fucking snow and then like scatters it all over the driveway. Damn straight. That sounds so and, fun. Like, what? What's your? <laughs> <fuck you. laughs> what's what's your opinion on like? Because what's what's the level before the kid gets annoying? Like, at what age is it no longer adorable and just like oh, it's a fucking kid? The I'm moment it kill. progresses past crawling, right? Really? Crawling For is me, still anything over the age of six, I, I refuse to. Well, yours is a I subset to, of mine. <laughs> me. Um, refuse to enjoy as a human being. Kids only start um, getting awesome again at like 14 when they start thinking. For no, themselves. kids don't get awesome. Kids, are, <clears throat> I feel like they're significantly. It's like they they hit a stage where it's just like, I'm fucking the shit. I'm the shit of the world and you guys are all stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Until, like, Perhaps you know. like the kids I know, have known throughout my life have been like more hot. Like, Either I get, way. I don't know. Kids at age eight are assholes. That's all I want to say. Absolutely. If you, if I would come across like an eight-year-old kid, I won't hesitate to punch him in the face. But to be clear, face. if I was walking down the street and I saw a huge fucking pile of snow, and I, the, and why did someone was shoveling, I would have the deepest like desire to jump all over it. But I wouldn't would do you, it. 
self yeah because you're you're but i'm a grown-ass adult like, <laughs> i can i i've never had the urge to jump into a pile of snow really Fox news. like a pile of leaves, I, i'm in yeah, a situation but, yeah same really? here like, I'm in a situation I, where I, 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 I know, not... like even until now, I'm always the kind of person that like fucking scared of like insects and creepy crawlers or whatever. And one time while I was like shoveling leaves when I was a really young kid, there was like this worm that got in my glove, like my oh. gardening glove. And ever since then, oh. I've been fucking freaked out by leaves. So I cannot deal with that's why winter is my favorite season. Like, see, like with I winter, can you all can... I want about shoveling snow, but there's no fucking insects in snow. Winter, so you make like dead. a snow fort. You use the snow to build stuff. Yeah. See, I, that's what I, me I don't, like, having my then, limited then, like, exposure to snow. Wall. Just the existence of snow is already like a thing for me. So I don't <laughs> like the progressing beyond that to actually making <laughs> constructions out of have snow. You gone, have you ever gone skiing or snowboarding? I've gone yeah, I both. Yeah. But really? Only like wow. once. So I was gonna make fun of you for having a deprived childhood. Well, I, that's that's still true. But we've talked about this before. That's this. I'm I'm gonna keep moving along with yeah. this this uh, because we spent way too long on crazy tangents. <laughs> um, what and are just you like about? cynic, did you have anything else new? Uh... Hey, did you guys hear about the book um, "Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Leader"? Cynic, have you heard about that book? Is that the one you recently reviewed it's on about, It's about North Korea and the Kim Dynasty. Is that the one you put on Goodreads? Yeah, it is. The one. Wait, that's a real book. There's actually an yeah, interesting book you've read care. recently. I actually left a um, comment on it, which was like, "This is the only." Because the more book I read about recently. North Korea, the more crazy it seems. Like the, it's like some sort of weird pet project of like you know those weird psychological projects they put on gerbils or stuff like that. Except in like a scale of an Asian country, <laughs> it's like really interesting. This and is a, Escape up. from Camp 14: One Man's Remarkable Odyssey from North Korea to the Freedom of the West. That that. Is the one book you've read recently that sounds incredibly interesting? It's by Blaine. Not, not Harden. the loving care of the father leader, North Korea, and the Kim Dynasty. No, that's a, that sounds a bit crazy. Wait, was that written <laughs> by like a journalist, like the rest of these were? Or yes, it's oh. a journalist. So it's probably it's, so it's probably pretty good. Like, do you like it? No, it's really interesting. It's like a really weird look into the lives of weird, crazy totalitarian. Ever since the cult, Drew in North Korea thing, I've had like a, some form of interest in North Korea. Aside from that. No, I know. I've read I this feel week. Like I should read up a little bit about where I was born. I've read more fantasy stuff. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not going to hijack this twat. podcast about twat? talk about twat? my my twat fantasy. Stuff. Okay. The Twatcast. The Twatcast is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, they're dirtier than we are, but talk about nerdier shit than we do, which is kind of crazy. Well, no shit. It's called the fucking Twatcast. Why is that allowed? The wheel of well, time. That's, that's beyond. Podcast. Yeah, but it's, like it's the on. internet. Everything goes, and nothing. The is fact accepted. that they they use that acronym means. Wait, what does twat people. mean? Isn't it twat? Um, douchebag. I think it's 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 a British slang, isn't it? No, that's twat. The nay. It's twat. I don't know then. That's I, that's that's the weird thing. I I read that as like just the wheel of time. I don't, I don't even see any. anyway. I was just wondering if there was any equivalency between twat and twat. Anyway, I listened to that, read some books, like more books, a bunch of fantasy novels. Um, I think this one's the Ri- the Riria Revelations. Oh, wait, are you talking about the female fantasy? Oh, novel, Riera right? Revelations. Oh, f- female fantasy. I'm not. Oh man. Oh, you should talk about it. You oh about man. It. All right. So, I've I've gone through pretty much most, except for the Song of Ice and Fire, because I want to see if that ever comes near to completion. Of like the um, most recommended fantasy novels of all time, so I've gone through all the major lists and stuff that you find online, looking for um, what most people consider to be the best. So I've gone through all that and read all that. So now I'm in a situation where I either reread stuff I've already read, or I look up like the alternatives, like what else is good out there in terms of fiction, um, preferably fantasy because that's my my wheelhouse. Um, so there's a whole genre of fiction written for women. Um, gen- Fifty Shades of Grey. So, yeah, there's Fifty Shades. There's stuff like that, which I won't go near. But there's like a, a whole genre of female, like almost always like Lord by of the women. Rings and The Hobbit. Almost always written by women. In fact, I'm pretty, I believe entirely written by women. Fantasy novels for chicks. There's no other way for me to state that. Generally, has a female protagonist, if not. A female protagonist and a male protagonist, um, and there's a number of them Romance. which are highly rated. Like if if you actually look at books on Goodreads or whatever, like <laughs> Amazon.com, any form of like book reviewing site, 
you generally find that these books and these novels, the things within this genre, stuff like um, what's his face, the really popular one with the movie, The Hunger Games. Uh, I'd actually put The Hunger Games in this in this genre because there are some good things in here. Um, have incredible amounts of reviews. Apparently, women read more than men. That's that's pretty much what I can take away from it. Because if you go through the reviewers, which you can do on um, Goodreads, most of them are female. Um, so like if like a fantastic novel written like nowadays, like um, let's see the last uh, the last what's it? Airbender. The blade, of, the, not the blade of truth. The fuck. Joe Abercrombie. Joe Abercrombie. His novels are fantastic in terms of modern fiction. No, modern fantasy fiction. Um, I've forgotten the, the name of the series. I, I could look it up. But either way, that you'd see with like 30,000 reviews or like 10,000 reviews. Um, but if you look up stuff by in these in these like categories, let's see. City of Bones, The Mortal Instruments, which is what I read this week, has 255,000 reviews. What, what I, I also read this Goodreads week... Goodreads had that many users. What, I've, I've also read this week, The Devil You Know, Felix Coster Episode 1, which is written by the guy who did, I believe, Constantine, the stuff Constantine was based off. Um, Hellraiser. Uh, his novels, his series of novels, has 4,500 reviews. They're excellent, to a large extent. Like They're, they're legitimately witty and, and, and quite, quite engrossing. For, so that's 4,500 reviews. This book, called The City of Bones, 250,000. So I was like, yeah, okay, that many people liked it. It's got an average review out of 255,000 of 4.14 stars out of five. So it's incredibly highly rated. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll read it. Within a chapter, I think I, I was like going through my mental processes with Noob over Skype whilst reading the series. Yeah. And um, within a chapter of the start, I'd, I'd called the identity of the mysterious villain. I'd... Um, predicted the plot line for the female in terms of her romantic arc and i'd predicted the the end result of the male lead of the series all those three things i did within i think one to two chapters of the start so I, I was let's just say these books aren't particularly well written and this is this has gone through like a, many of the books i've read recently in that genre and I, so i'm kind of saddened to a large extent about like the lack of creativity and in general just poor writing quality and style of a bunch of this female fiction and the fact that people read this crap as opposed to the better stuff put out recently it's kind of sad well maybe you're just not a female and you just don't understand maybe i just don't fiction. understand maybe i just don't find the why don't you grow up dark and mysterious I, tubes. <laughs> I, I read an excerpt from 50 shades of gray and no they just the uh, the audience for those books aren't looking for um, high quality literature. Like it's about the best. I can like say. talking about your reviews, Cynic, about like you know how they're like really highly rated by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. If you go to like certain reviewing sites for like Japanese anime or whatever, <laughs> some of yep. the highest <laughs> highest rated stuff is like men men on main men on man like rape romance stories. Totally, so, I totally noticed that, it, and it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> really weird it's because it's it's because the people who love that stuff are far more dedicated fans than people who love Lord of the Rings that's that's what I was gonna say is like you said that that based on what you were seeing with these reviews that that women read more than men I don't think that's necessarily a conclusion you can jump to I think that more women review stuff than men review stuff perhaps yeah because if you look outside because if you look outside of, of just books and you look at like Amazon reviews the majority of the reviews that you'll see are women. Yeah. Well, almost regardless of the product. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's how, sure. how many, how many reviews did you say that that book had? 255,000. That, that that's yeah. that's more than <laughs> the return of the king has yeah. on Goodreads. Yeah. Told you. See, <laughs> and they love it. I, I, it has to be good, right? I was like this many people have to at least know what they're talking about. Nope. It, no, no, cuz that's the thing though, Cynic, is it the same reason why like Soap operas are so huge. Like yeah. I have watched soap operas; they are not. The good beautiful acting. is not the good most watched thing in the world. We and, and that's we are not the that. target audience for these books, and we those are. Books but are most written. importantly, but, like you, you can't look at at those reviews and see you know this overwhelmingly overwhelmingly positive um, overall review of this, right, and, but, and assume that that is going to be good. Right, because like. Because that's not what when they're you, looking for. When you they're, have they're a book like Lord of the Rings, for, for it's not writing. it's not aimed at oh let's let's aim this specifically at certain types of men. It's aimed at it's like a general fantasy audience. But these books yeah. are like let's aim this at women in their certain age group. Blah 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 blah. And 
it's it's catering to well, and, certain and it's, desires. And what's what's unfortunate about it is it, it it's hard to actually like critique it because otherwise you just come off as sexist. Yep. So the Leviathan wakes. Sorry, Leviathan wakes without the in front of it. Uh, by James S. A. Corey is like one of the best works of modern sci-fi fiction over the last like five to ten years. It's won a bunch of reward like awards. It's it's highly rated. I found it through the authors I follow, which is the best way to find books. By the way, follow your authors on Goodread, and they they usually lead you to awesome stuff. You look in the libraries. Um, My authors are not Goodread, so they have like the Leviathan Wakes again. Seven thousand reviews. I, I I'm just I'm just sad that more people like what why aren't these people i'm not going to call them all women but why aren't those two hundred fifty-five thousand people straying beyond the, like they're clearly reading they've read this multiple part i think eight part series or whatever of right. terrible fiction why aren't they straying yeah. to like think about it because they're, they're, really they're, again like i said they're not looking for a good story they're not looking for quality high quality writing but they they're like looking it. for exactly no, that's what I'm saying, though. They're looking for exactly what that book offers. Right. Which is, like, almost invariably is, 16 is, to 17-year-old romance slash high school romance. Yeah, which is just yeah that, that's, what, that's what they're but looking for. Why do you think Twilight, so, like, that's why they're not going to go you think beyond Twilight that. appeals to a general audience? Oh, I've, by the way, the on this, on this journey, which I've actually done quite... Like, every, every couple of years, I have this idea. Ha, there has to be something good in, in this genre. Because female fiction is a huge genre. And I've, I've known about it for a while. So I read all of Twilight, by the way. I've read all Twilight, Did you um, and it's, and I'd have to say that compared to this, that was not bad. That this this was work, but perhaps it's because I've grown older and therefore am less tolerant than I was before of the negative side. Think sides about of, the time that you could have done other things while you read. I, I was at the gym at the time. I was going to the gym. So. Oh, that's when I generally read inverted commas or listen to audiobooks or whatever it is at the gym or on the way to places and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I usually read on the bus. That's yeah. usually normal. But when I actually like sit down and read, then I can do it whenever. Like I, I, I was reading earlier today. I woke up today morning and read. That's, it was it was really good. The, the book I'm currently reading is Rise of Empire: The Rayera Revelations, and it's it's a very good fantasy. It's some sci-fi crap. Oh, oh, it's fantasy. always fantasy. It's always fantasy for me. Yeah, it's very good. Fantasy. <laughs> Anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. Read one type of books. I, I've been lamenting right, females and their poor taste in books, and I have been reading good books. To I don't know. I don't understand how you can't like a bad boy protagonist with the soft side. It's always the same side. thing. It's always a badass. It's always <laughs> a jackass who doesn't yeah. like the main character who somehow falls for her in due duration of the book, or she's somehow different no, from I everyone else she's met. Point is like. He it's almost like there's a formula here. It's yeah, it's, it's the almost... the bad thing is it is the part of it that makes me sad. It's um the fact that nice guys finish last. <laughs> no 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 no. It, well yes that. Oh. But um in these books right the main character is invariably someone who thinks they're normal or has been normal for the majority of their life, and then find out that they're spectacular in some way shape or form like the Harry Potter um formula. But the best fiction out there is about the heroism of the normal man or the, the complete flip side of that, which is like the the um, the boy finds a sword formula, which is like the wheel of time or whatever. Um, but this is almost invariably the same thing. It's it's a person in high school. So girl, 16 years old in high school, she looks av- – no, sorry, she describes herself – saying that she believes she's average and invariably the description she puts on the page is of an incredibly attractive woman. Like, for example, in this case, it's like <laughs> a a redhead with a slim figure and not particularly tall, but with like with a small spattering of freckles on her face and a large mane of hair. It's like, how are you, how do you believe you're not attractive, you stupid woman? And, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. They always believe they're normal. They turn out to be spectacular. They fall in love with a man who would, who would never have looked at them twice in their mind's eye. Um, and but suddenly, once they take their glasses off, they're insanely attractive. And it's like, and a lot of this fiction, they're the shit ones. Like they're consistently being saved by the other people. Right? There's, there's no, there's no strength. There's no to heroism this to, there's, yeah. to this main character. There's no heroism. There's no strength. There's like these aren't people I'd want other people reading about or, or looking up so to basically or, it's a it, it's essentially a, like these are books about the lois lane character like from her perspective Lois, yeah perhaps like yeah actually i'd actually i'd, I'd t- totally agree with that in fact um one of the well I, 
it's weird because it's a flip side of this. There's definitely like fiction out there which is like legitimately strong female casts. And and, and for a long time in my yeah. life, I've believed that men write better women than women. Um, but it's not entirely true. I, oh, unless I'm that. unless I'm horribly mistaken, there's a um, there's a series of books called The Women of Avalon or something like that, like the, the Mist of Avalon, which is about King Arthur, but told from the perspective of the women who influenced his life. Um, and I've wait, heard that's wait, incredibly so good. King right? Arthur, a, fa- a lady, like in Fate, no, Day Night. Oh, what? No, in fa- really, in Fate Day Night, King Arthur's a lady. You don't know. That's the twist. Saber is King Arthur. That's so dumb. Anyway. Um, well, yeah. I mean, like it's uh, the time will tell, and we can revisit this this topic later. Is <laughs> I mean, we we could go topics like with, with references like Mirror's Edge. Wasn't that written by a lady? Man, I mean, I, I, uh, I wish I could just yeah, I believe a quick so, way yeah. to reference and that. And then, like, we can talk about it when um, the new Tomb Raider mo- uh, game comes out because that was written by a lady as well. Oh, was it? That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And also, yeah. I have to point I, out. I, I, um, don't think it's in, I don't think it's that men can write better women. I think it's that the women who write these books, like you're describing, yeah. are. No, as I said, like, a long time I thought that was not, the case, but it's not always it. the case. Like, you're right. Yeah, they're, no. well, I mean, a lot of it is they're, they're not approaching it the way that they should be as an author. Yeah. Instead, they are injecting their own personal fantasies and their own personal insecurities into these characters. Yes. Right. I'm, Absolutely. Just, I'm sure this is like similar to some fiction that men could write, where it's just like really weird and just like completely exploitative yeah. or something like that. And so, like, I, mean, I think for- Ma- Matthew Vorey <laughs> has totally had the, the same idea as me, and he, he's, he's written an article, I think it was two years ago, about the Twilight movies, and um, he's lamenting their popularity, and I totally agree with him then. But this, is, this has been a thing for a long time, but I, I wanted to point out that um, the Uncharted series, written by a woman, Elena, I believe it was her name, and, like, the women in that series are awesome. They're, they're legitimately fantastic characters with a lot of depth to them, and they're not weak, they're not, they are strong people. Um, with, I mean, they're not, they're not men with, with vaginas in those, in those games. They're like legitimately, <laughs> they're, they're awesome women, well-written women in fiction. I, 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 I would like to see more of that. And I'd I like to see people, I hate how people are, are, are attracted to fiction like this. Anyway, yeah. So we've got on a tangent. That's what I did this week. I read, <laughs> but I didn't. Very cool. Words. Bad dude with a soft, sensitive side. <sighs> oh, now that we are an hour in Thurbleton, what, what have you been doing? <laughs> um... <laughs> I have I like uh, I have not been playing too much. I've just been revisiting old games. Um, I, I, I beat Annie Chamber last week. Talked about that. Uh, right. I tried playing a little bit of su- uh, Sword and Sorcery, but I just keep failing on the second boss. And I'm like, uh, I need to take a break and try this later. Right. And the music in that game is wonderful. The music is wonderful in that yes. game. That's why I, I want to beat it, so I can like so I will not feel guilty about pulling the music. So um, good. <laughs> yeah. And I've been trying to play Hawken. But just recently, there's been You're there's been this the surgence of people playing as scouts, um, which, in layman's terms, yeah, is running around this. really quickly and lightly with a shotgun. Ah, of course, like in TF2. Yeah, like, well, yeah. like in TF2, guns, yeah. like in Call of Duty or something, and that's they're pulling it off, which is the annoying part. Which, like, I'm okay because they're they're playing a certain style that's really well. But I should be just as effective with like going a, a heavy mech because that's the whole point of playing a mech is you're really bulky and it takes these long fights. Um, and it just I seems like the it's mechs are the ones get get taken down by Ewoks. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just seems <laughs> like the, it's. A, it's well, I, th- I think maybe like that that influx of people playing that class is maybe showing an imbalance in that class. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, always. Like, so I, I, I was going to draw a um, a comparison between this and a couple of months ago, where heart speak, heart seeker spam was a thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely something. People will gravitate towards what works. And you can't I think really heart seeker spam still it. is a thing. Is it it's still a thing? thing? After the, the even after the nerf, it's still a thing. thing. Um, yeah, it, I, I'm almost like prefer Heartseeker spam because you could see them. What people are doing now is they're um, they're like basically going into stealth, hitting you, going right back into stealth, hitting you. So they get all these bonuses when they're going out of stealth right. and you don't see them for the initial attack because they exit stealth. Mm. You see them for a few yeah. seconds, uh, for like a, a half a second. See, I haven't, you know? I haven't been having that problem because when they start to do that, I just fucking drop AoEs and they die. Yeah, I guess I should play a character that has AOE. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, are, we talking play- about, are we talking about? Are we talking about Gilmore's here? Or are we talking about Hawken? I've, yeah. I've lost it. Gilmore's. Okay, 
I thought we're talking about thieves when they, when they do this like stealth, like in and out of stealth bullshit. I thought Thurbleton was talking about now. Woken. We, we were, but the, oh, say yes, with the heart secret we, span. We said oh, we okay, over right. to yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you're the one who, who brought this on. Yeah, so no, it I, turns I, out I, I lost don't it. Don't do well versus Ellie's. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, then I, uh, the, one other game I've been playing is uh, Primal Carnage. I'm playing a lot of that. Um, apparently, they added a, a mode other than Team Deathmatch that is get to the chopper. Mode. Oh, that sounds amazing. Oh, that makes sense for that game. Which, which pretty much it's so far it's only been one map, which is docks, and you start off, you make like a, a U shape throughout the map. Uh that so is it's kind of le- left for dead style then where it's like point A to point B. Yeah, it is left for dead style. Um except like it's it's it still follows that same you're going to die very quickly, you're that gonna mission, I think it was yeah. the hospital with the ho- with the chopper on the roof. That was awesome. Uh, that, that dead, is, dead, like, dead of something. We should we should do a um Left for Dead. Uh, I'm really leaking it. Like, Ed stream or something. Dead Arrival or something. And anyway, it's 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 very fun. But what brought that on was uh, anybody who who may know who enjoys watching StarCraft, uh, Husky StarCraft, and a few others streamed them playing that game. And I was like, oh, I have to see if I can get into the map they're playing on. And I did. Nice. <laughs> I had so much fun just killing them. That's cool. I would yeah. ha- I would also enjoy killing Husky over and over again. It's, yeah, me too. It's because like it, brutally sodomizing him with a kitchen there was, knife. There was a time where I actually enjoyed his commentary and what oh, he I know, did. right? At, at the very beginning when Starcraft was like in yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's pretty cool. And like, Husky was great. Fuck and off. then he he, he kind of like he has the Steve Urkel effect where initially he's he's funny and kind of endearing and then the more you're around him, the more I you just realize me. how fucking irritating of a person he actually is. Yep. Hey guys, Husky Starcraft here. I really just like it, watching. It would help if you breathe every once in a while. Yeah, he just doesn't stop talking. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. I, I think he's figured out how to do inward talking. Like, inward <laughs> like Jack Black has taught him the secret. Oh. Well done to him. So I don't know, but yeah, it's. I significantly prefer Day Nine. If Who I is that dude Starcraft. again? In 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 the tradition of fiction, skewing towards the like the dark, handsome man. Who's that guy that Steve Urkel transforms into with the, the machine? Is it Stefan? Stefan Urkel. Fuck yeah, Stefan. <laughs> Does that, he have a sensitive side? No. I, I always thought he was. Well, he's Urkel. He's smooth, smooth operator. Just fucking smooth. I, I need to look this guy up. Stefan. Steve Urkel. Wow. But yeah, it's it's the the main two big uh, new developments have been I've taken to going back to Minecraft and just been playing a lot on there, just relaxing and having a good time making stuff. Way too so I actually have a thing to, to bring up to you, Thurb. Uh, if you are enjoying yeah. Minecraft, um, a friend of mine has a, a current server that's up and running that if you are interested in playing on a – what is basically a bare-bones server intentionally, um, they are looking to have more people join just to kind of build the community. I might look into that because um, like the, the server I've been playing on is – it's Heck very – it like you don't have too much in terms of uh, helping you in the way of uh, – plugins or whatnot uh it, it's the, the the main things are just like security and uh protection and like chat i think no tech it uh no no tech it i like no. i i like tech it but it's too much I think it's it's nuclear it's reactors. Its own separate thing yeah it's it's too much it's not even minecraft anymore too much of a hill uh yeah. the, the main thing that i like about them is they have um a world for beginners and there's a bunch of trials you have to go through and, huh. to get to the actual build server uh, okay, yeah. See, this one is is very, very bare bones. Like it's, it's just a small group of friends playing together, and they like it, it's so bare bones that um, the guy running the server has even disabled creative mode for himself. <laughs> nice. Like, like everything is just like it is. When you start out, like you'll you'll get the help from the people there, as opposed to from the from you know kind of going in and breaking the game um, instead. Yeah, I mean, like as long as he keeps it whitelisted, that's a, a great idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely whitelisted. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. We'll, we'll, I'll get that info from you the later thing on. Maybe about Stefan. Uh, I want. I want a copy. Is like he always <laughs> wears suits. Oh my god! What are you doing? <laughs> he wears suits all the time. I want to. I totally want like a whole. Yeah, he does. Because he's a Fucking badass. I know. To, to quote the Great Gatsby trailer, "The man in the cool suit." <sighs> See, I I know that I look better in a suit. I just can't be bothered wearing one. God damn it! They're so annoying. All right. They're making a Great Gatsby movie. When's that coming out? Everyone, everyone who like becomes the age of the adult needs to have a suit. Oh, yeah. I have one. Yeah, I, I have a suit. I just don't wearing. I still don't have ever. a suit. I, I I need to get one. I hate sweating, and I invariably sweat when I'm in a suit. 
for obvious yeah, reasons. Yeah. Even if I get like cotton or like a really light. Um, it, it, yeah, it could, it could be snowing out, and I'll still, if I'm, yeah. if I, especially if I'm in a suit, like I'm pouring sweat. It's gross. I hate it. Like a linen suit, I still sweat in it. Oh God, I they know. have Leonardo DiCaprio playing Gatsby. Yeah, no, he, what? Dude, yeah, what are you talking about? Leonardo DiCaprio is fantastic now. He's fantastic. Yeah. <sighs> a legitimately good actor. I think he would have been a better Nick Carraway. <sighs> Oh, perhaps. Oh, no. We'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. After he uh, plays, there, there has dude. been one other thing I, I, that's that's new for me, and that is, I have watched like three to four hours. I think I'm like six episodes in of House of Cards, brought to us by Netflix. Oh I've yeah, heard how is of that? that? It's really good, mind you. It's really? like the, the main thing that's drawing me in is the fact that Kevin Spacey is the main guy. Mm. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's. I'm sure it's just like any other show. It's just I love Kevin Spacey. He should be my sorry, favorite sorry. actor of all time. I, I yeah, think he's like, a lot like of Netflix, Netflix has, been, has been kind of like saying for a couple of years now that they wanted to get into original content. So like this is literally the, the finally the first yeah, I mean, product it, it's, of that. So I was curious as to how, how it's gone. It's really well done. I think New Brahma would like it because it basically it follows the part of Kevin Spacey as a senator who uh, is, is working around Washington. Uh, the pilot episode is he gets burned by first backing up the president before the, the show even begins. And like as he's – the president's inaugurated, he's like, yeah, we're not giving you that position we promised. And so Kevin Spacey is set off in this like it, – it's – I'm not sure if he's – I'm still not sure if he's trying to get revenge or if he's just being crazy on his own. I don't know. But the whole season's up. Apparently they just put everything up at, at once. They're not yeah, just stagnating yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting experiment. I wonder how I just like, I I haven't sat down to finish watching all of it. I love how, how many episodes are there in the first season? Um, I'm not sure. Let me look it up. What what kind of Kevin Spacey is Kevin Spacey portraying in this? Is he play, he's, he he is playing a southern senator ooh, uh, with a heart of evil, like a heart of darkness, or with like he's just like being wronged and is trying to. Here we a, a ruthless and cutting Congressman Francis Underwood, Oscar winning. Oh, Kevin so he's Spacey. playing an asshole. He's so good at playing an asshole. <laughs> pretty much. He's pretty much playing an asshole. That's awesome. Uh, for like I, I 90% so percent of the people he runs into. And uh, his wife stopped at nothing to conquer everything. Have you this guys wicked, watched... Um, the Shadow of Greed, Sex, and Corruption in modern DC. If you guys finish watching this and like it, have you guys seen the thick of it? No, Mr. Yeah. Walks recommended me you need to, to watch. Uh, and I believe there's a movie like there's a movie equivalent of In the Loop is the movie um, based on the series. It's about the um, the setup towards, I believe, beginning the war on terrorism from the spe- perspective of an yeah. English politician, a, a group of English politicians. And it is it won um, a bunch of awards for best writing in the year it came out. I think it was like 2004 or five because it is like. Have, you know the guy who play, have you guys um, seen or played Ellie Noir? Yes. Um, the uh, police sergeant who you first come up against, the Irish guy who just fucking goes uh, into you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the I main character in this movie, and he plays nice. uh, that character is oh, based man. off this this character, and um, but he's a politician, so he just like if you wanted to see dudes being laid to waste by badass uh, angry Irish uh, Scotsman. Um, it is, it is, spect- and it is, it is legitimately fantastic, written and incredibly interesting, and it's won many, many awards, but no one's seen it. It's called In the Loop. I, I, I will say, In the Loop is available on Netflix, uh, like free awesome. streaming. Fantastic. Again, they aren't paying us. It's just <laughs> seven bucks. You can watch a bunch of TV shows and whatnot. But I love the idea right. of House I, of Cards. I love Kevin Spacey. A couple minutes. Wait, wait. Before that, a couple minutes ago, I said Leonardo DiCaprio should play Nick. That was wrong. I meant to say Tom. Okay. Leonardo DiCaprio okay. play he, could, Tom he could play any of the, ma- the male lead, the male leads in that. No, he needs to play Tom because he was such a good asshole in Django. That's all I want to see. Oh, in I still haven't seen Django. You should probably see Django. It's good, but yeah, I guess we can move on to Guild Wars Two stuff. Oh shit! So I, I guess I should be sure. leaving, huh? <laughs> 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 Nonsense. There, there, there's a few things. Okay. Um, it's it's not really like breaking news or whatever, but it just was an interesting thing. Breaking um, news. But Josh, like uh, a person came on the Guild Wars 2 forums uh, complaining about the uh, World versus World jumping puzzles. Uh, and Josh Foreman, possibly known from appearing on the Lincoln cast as yeah, a, a yeah. guest for the Christmas special, um, 
when you know after after he him. came on our podcast he he got accepted into arena net it's crazy yeah i think our podcast made him famous <laughs> enough for him to work at arena net now that checks out that's that's, yeah, that's that was all truth. truth that was all truth. <laughs> but anyway he he got on the forums and just did a awesome job of keeping his cool being as like uh ex, explanative explanative explaining everything he could to this guy uh it really shed some light on to anybody who didn't know, like the, the workings of uh, ArenaNet and why people who make levels can't just be put off doing that and start working on changing the mechanics of programming because they <laughs> haven't been taught about it. Is, is that was that the essence of the dude? What was the dude saying? Um, the dude was uh, there's just so many times where he's just acting like, like a crazy like, idiot. Why, why doesn't that dude who cooks my food not know how to build an aircraft? What? <laughs> no, he, he first like complained about why are they there and then uh, why do they interact with the rest of the map and why is ArenaNet wasting so many resources building this when there's clearly other issues that need to be addressed? Oh, right. complaining about jumping puzzles or some shit like that. And, and why is it that every map uh, or every new update like the, the Halloween and the Christmas have the jumping puzzles but we still have all these big issues? And so Josh was pretty much saying like, well, the reason why is because it takes one guy or maybe like a couple guys a few hours to do that. And like, well, they need just – why do they have a jumping puzzle team? It's like they don't have a jumping puzzle team except for the one that I'm working on, which is standalone thing. And by, and by I there, Thurbleton means job, Josh Foreman. I, if, yes. if Thurbleton was working on a jumping puzzle team, I would A, hate that jumping puzzle because Thurbleton likes jumping puzzles and would probably know what to, <laughs> how to piss me off and be – that wasn't with me on this podcast because we, I, I don't know locked in a dungeon somewhere answering yeah, questions. We only have like potential or internet employees on our podcast. <laughs> my, my, opi- my opinions mirror Josh Foreman's in the development of this upcoming jumping puzzle. And that is he has something that uh, he is right now. I'm not sure if this is what the public are going to call to it, but one called baby mode, which Yay! just makes all the hard jumps. Cynic mode. Which is just like fuck it, make it easy. <laughs> I just, I, I just hope they 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 continue like to live calling it baby mode. That would be yeah. so awesome. And to be clear, I like hard platformers. I just don't like the way jumping works in MMOs. I do also like on Steam. I can't remember which one of my friends it was, but I saw they were playing a non-Steam game, Guild Wars Two: The Jumping Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I love I love how you can rename stuff on Steam. I know someone who decided to get Guild Wars Two just for jumping puzzles. Really. That's crazy, Here's Mr. Walks. Really? <laughs> yeah. But I guess I, I guess we'll mention that one. We might put it in the links. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a Reddit post that pretty much summarized everything, and and the guy did have some some valid arguments of uh, on on full maps they're taking up queue spots because people are wanting to do the jumping puzzle or stop others from doing the jumping puzzle. And it's this whole inner debate, but uh, it's just a nice read. Cool. It gave me a chuckle. The the main thing, if New Brahma wants to talk about it, is the uh, ArenaNet released. Some information about the new update at the end of February called uh, The Flame and Frost, The Gathering Storm. I.e. an explanation for my wonderful joke at the start of the episode. Exactly. <laughs> of the, actually, yeah, Cynic, since you're the weatherman, do you want to talk about the weather coming up? Uh, kind of. So <laughs> The situation worsens for the citizens of Wayfarer, Foothills, and Diesa Plateau. Like that. Talk about it like No, that. you started. That was fantastic. You should keep going. Volunteers have, yeah. Volunteers, Volunteers have a race. Yeah, volunteers have a race. You <laughs> asshole. But the refugees hobble down from the shiver peaks. The storm there gains momentum, but the forces of good are beginning to rally. I sound like a beetle now. That's pretty no. good. I don't mind it. I can't. <laughs> really, I can tell. But it's pretty the land close. And its peoples. Someone must hold back the gathering storm. In Flame and Frost, The Gathering Storm, the second installment of the four-part series, the stakes are raised and the battles rage in the foothills of the Shiver Peaks. So I hope this means there's more further, than like two random dynamic events. Based on <laughs> a, a couple of things we want to talk, I want to talk about is they said it's the second installment in a four-part series, but they've also said they want this like Flame and Frost thing to go on for <coughs> the first year. So last time we yeah. talked about so this is a thing that's happening in PvE, specifically in like those two areas in the north, the Norn and Char Zones. And the last time we talked about this, we hadn't really, they hadn't really outlined like what duration they expected this to go over. Because the idea is for them to add new dynamic events, perhaps change some zones. In inverted commas, change the world of Guild Wars 2. But let's be clear here. They, they said the exactly the same thing about the Karka events before, which 
they did, I guess, change the wall of Gibbles to <laughs> it added but, a new um, area. Yeah, so like Nobody they said that to. about this as well. And last we, last time we talked, it was about the January update to the game, in which they um, put in the first couple of things in this series, the Flame and Frost series. Uh, and and from memory, Thurple thing that those are like just two just two dynamic events, or was it more than that? Um, it wasn't really dynamic events. It was just like they've added uh, some NPCs and some corpses and some signposts you have to clean up. I'm guessing. Um, so is that like is this threat mysterious still? Uh, it's it's still mysterious. There's still like uh, theories about what it could be. Um, we are beginning to see. I think some people have reported seeing um, uh, geysers or just like th- things coming out of the ground. Uh, not really an event that pops up. As well as people have claimed to see uh, new buildings up here, but it's just like refugee camp stuff. It's still a gathering storm, and it's still not anything we can fight. Wait, so is is this like? Do we know the chronology of this? Is this supposed, this, this supposed to be happening um, simultaneous with the events of the end of the game, or after the events of the end of the game? Or well, I believe this is post at, after, post yeah. uh, Dragonfall. Interesting, because it's 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 weird when it comes to adding content to MMOs, specifically because they did choose to put these in, I believe, like what fifteen to twenty areas, like level wise. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, the other thing is like th- maybe they can just make these stories in no relation to yeah. the large plot. Because my immediate response to this is um, with the human areas, like the divinities reach and so on and so forth you have an idea of there being a legitimate government so there's this pol- a police force and is essentially in the serif and then you have the queen and you have the castle and all that stuff the walls except none of these countries ever have borders the human um, race doesn't have well sure not distinct borders but at the same time like you don't really see that with the others like in the char areas you know that there's a command structure you know that there is a, what it's very militaristic in that, that that there's like generals or whatever they named them at the top and they have that that structure might as in the well center Somalia of them. in Charlands because the second you leave the the flame citadel, there's just a bunch of small outposts here and there, and you have no sense of like, is this a village? What what is this? It's just a farm? Yeah, oh. like there's like okay. you, you do see some people patrolling, but there's but there's there's NPCs who seem to be official like sorts who um, patrol. The, the char I think stuff. actually have the char I think have the best setup in that. The different legions have claimed more or less the maps. Right. Uh, like the Ash Legion has claimed the far north part where the Flame Legion is. Uh, I think like Iron Legion claimed the starting zone. And Right. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's like the Iron Legion is there because they built the city and that all, that all kind of um, ties together. But the, the, the main thing I have with this is if there's a situation where people are dying like mysteriously in like swathes – and are like leaving areas of your your well kingdom. I don't, I don't know what else to call it, your country. Uh, like just like fleeing from there. Wouldn't there be a situation where things are a little? I can't believe things remain mysterious for very long. Like right so by now, it's this just... is this. Yeah, this is what I'm wondering: is is this changing existing places, or is this simply going to? be new stuff because changing existing places will be significantly more different. Like Cynic was saying, if people are leaving, I'd like to see like, you know, something actually changing rather than like a bunch of NPCs. And even beyond that, like just, just, just from the NPC perspective, like the government shouldn't leave that area alone. Like that, I can't see see a, a situation where there aren't like significant bands of people being sent to this area. Right. And, unless and I see... Um, unless oh, this is happening simultaneously with the dragons, like the only way it makes sense is that if the entire world's eyes are on the dragon, which at this point in the plot in level fifteen to twenty areas has, hasn't been defeated yet, um, maybe then it makes sense for right. this to be happening, like mysterious goings on in the northern Shiver Peaks. Because but, in in the original Guild Wars, when they did the post end of game content, mm-hmm. the thing is it's instant, so they can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, they like can you have, leave town, it's oh, suddenly like level twenty fives right. everywhere as opposed right. to level twenties. Exactly. So, but the thing is, now that it's uninstant, it's hard to fuck around with the chrono- chrono- chronology. Yeah, fuck, sure. I can't talk chronology. Yeah, sure. Chronology of the game because it's uninstant, so people who have completed the game have to see it, the exact same. If it's just going to be a zone as the people who haven't completed the game. Yeah. And I think that's probably really difficult to do, mm-hmm. trying to figure out, like, even if it's going to happen, like, 
concurrently with the dragons, then it has to it can't change too much because then people who will, actually it could, but because then people are missing out on the original content that was there. And if they're just going to be adding new stuff, then they're going to have to wedge it in somehow without changing too much. So this of announcement the was for story of the game. February twenty sixth, so it's still quite a, a yes. few weeks away. So we don't really know how they're going to approach it. Like the, all, they, all they say here is that like the situation's gotten worse, and they, they've listed out their changes for other parts of the game. But in terms of the actual stuff for that area, the, the, those two zones that this is affecting, we don't really get a, like an idea of what's going to happen. As Nis said, like I, I, if they're going to change those areas and they're expecting this to be something that I'm even remotely interested in, two dynamic right. events, whatever it was in the last update, isn't or whatever, just small changes. I think as you guys outlined, um, isn't enough to to make me care yet. Yes. Uh, Do we talk about any of the extra stuff they've added with this or not yet? No, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Okay. But, um, I mean, lore-wise, it comes back to they're at a really difficult spot. Exactly, and Thubbles' like statement there, this being the second installment in a four-part <laughs> series, really comes up because if that was the first installment before, like, is this going to be a thing? Is this going to be big at all? If well. One thing, and this is like just roughly speculation. I, I quickly tried looking up my source for this, but I remember for uh, hearing that uh, Ritlock will play a role in this, but more so they're bringing in another Char um, NPC that is like helping Ritlock solve this particular issue. So he's going to die and, at the end. I guess that's kind of no. I that's... think they're more just like bringing in a uh, like Ritlock was the thing for the dragons in the pre sure. uh, like in, in, in between two books. I think they're making, and this is just a rough like prediction. But I think if they want to have a year's worth of content stuff happen, they'll have this new char hero appear uh, that like the people will start to recognize and see in in maps. Also, Cynic, uh, I doubt I doubt. It- um, the hero will die unless this event is only going to last one year, and then after that, all of its changes will disappear because this is not story disappear. mode. So they can't keep this guy in instance forever. So you're going to have to see him around, and oh, if it's true. a non instance area, you're going to be he's probably going to live. No, but you yeah, still see well, like look around when you're doing story stuff in yours too before you get to the last battle and stuff. Right, but you don't you don't really meet like the, day, the however, big characters that die, like the vigil guy or the guys like oh yeah true they're only in instances uh-huh. right so the the problem is this lore is completely restricted to the game mechanics the fact that they chose non-instance etc well, or instance, yes or, and yeah, no because so. we aren't talking about them adding new line myself because like for example, this is February. The first part of this I was, feel like, was January. No, I feel like the difference is adding new landmass is completely a new thing because they they don't have to change anything. They don't need to fuck with, you know, like what's the existing yeah, balance. Of don't you think area? that's what they, they, they're they leading just, up to doing? Because just stick it in there. To me, like this is being part two or four part series. This the Gathering Storm stuff and the Flame and Frost thing. That sounds to me like as it, like Flame and Frost is going to be the equivalent of the first novel in the trilogy, and then when that ends, it'll lead up to a situation where they're going to open up a new zone in like in Jan- July or something. If you if you go right. by whatever. Or it would be June. What the fifth month? What's the fifth month? May? I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> May. Yes. May. Yeah. So like <coughs> in May, they'd open up a new area because that would be after the four part series over and it'd be book two, Frame and Frost Part Two, the Frostening or whatever they're going to call it. Um, yeah, that, that could be it. Like, but perhaps Frame and Frost isn't like the whole the name for the whole arc. Could be interesting. Well, I just assume it is because it's like a prelude to the Flame and Frost, and then Flame and Frost. Again, yeah, I like book one. The title and the subtitle. Book, like the book first series in a, in a, in a series <coughs> of novels has a prelude in, in general, like a, a prefix or a, a opening chapter which sets the the, the scene. Because this couldn't be like regardless. Oh, I don't. I hope this isn't something minor because I feel like they. If if they want to keep this game exciting for everyone, like they can't just have a bunch of minor updates. I think they need something substantial halfway down, and this is around the time where they should be adding something relatively substantial that's going to be either bringing back players or keeping people interested. Hmm. And from what I've seen so far, it. I guess I'll reserve judgment until this entire thing is rolled through. I guess hmm. that's what I can say. Yeah, I'm hope. I'm actually personally hoping for. Me to be able to explain, experience it as like one thing later, like if, and right. that's why I'm kind of hoping for them to add new landmass after this like first initial run, 
because if they keep it such that like the lower parts of those two areas are still like people fleeing then as you get towards approaching the new landmass um you have like the second like more complicated part of the plot and then the actual plot of whatever this frame and frost develops into the frostening happens like later on an actual further landmass you can actually experience it as one read through in inverted commas rather than having to come back to the game like every month so just, even though that's what they want one question. like out of like i'm just curious what do you guys think of the lore impact or just like the stuff um the Karka update change for you fuck just in Karka. terms of like, fuck the like, worst idea like, ever exactly but I'm, it's, I'm I'm highly against sea monsters, like monsters from the deep bullshit. No, no, no. Anyway. I, in terms of the amount of content it added, I feel like it's almost minimal other than the fractals. Well, it's just irrelevant. It's hard to say yeah, because... I think if they yeah. put more into the like post-event yeah. stuff... Yeah, Because exactly. while the event was going, it was fine. a really good zone. Like, was just, when was the last time you've been to that island? Because I haven't gone there since then. I never went. There's nothing there. <laughs> because as Stumbleton said, like while the event was going... It was actually a pretty vibrant, interesting place <coughs> with stuff happening and shit going on. Yeah. It was only because after it was like, finished that it's it kind of and then, died out. And then people just leave it because there's nothing there anymore. But then there's, they didn't that's... put anything there for us to be interested in. Like the, Obviously, like the but car can be over. You can't even 100% that place. Can't you? I, I have no idea. But I, no, all, you all, all I know is that, is that there's like no really... I, from memory, there's no, not even any events happening there. Like any significant... Anything to do with your time if you were going there aside from no. farming. So the question is, is this its new thing like the Karka where it's, it's completely disconnected or is this something that's like Guild Wars Beyond from the original where it's building on well, the existing... Well, because we've talked... When we talked to Josh, he kind of outlined to us um, the development of the Karka bullshit. And right. it, that all happened. like they, As he said then, like they didn't release Guild Wars 2 with plans for DLC content scheduled out for the next couple of months. They literally had to start working on the Karka bullshit. Wait, was it when the game came who out? predicted content like this that's like really small and in small packs? Who was that? Who was uh, that person? Who were... Was it Shinboy? I think that person. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it was like Zomb. Uh, not, not Zombie Pie. It was uh, Zumi Ramen, right? It was Zumi Ramen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, like what so, I was saying before we went on this tangent was that, uh, like, my prediction is that along the same lines, of what we're talking about right now is that we'll finish up this, and this will be like the the, the char character appears, <laughs> and then the next three months or in four months, we'll have something that happens with a human uh, NPC leader appearing, and they'll all start banding together to make this group again that we'll see more active in the world. Oh, so that's so, just a, a rough prediction, but sort of like what WoW had. Um, the the I don't know if Darren remembers Sarufang was this guy yeah, that came yeah. out of like the Silithid like the War of the Shifting event that happened that big massive event that WoW had that oh, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. blew up into this lag fest but people rallied behind this this orc NPC that Blizzard just created and I th- I think they might try something like that where they I'm they make a whole bunch of whether or not NPCs they'll do something like that where it's some an event that affects the entire world or an event that will affect a race, and then next next time there's going to be an event that affects another race, like oh. kind of like how Alv does his TF2 updates, like class by class. I wonder if they're going to do it area by area rather than entire. Oh, world, yeah, that's, because that's kind ha- of what I was like leading up to. So, so when they they only had like a month to start developing the Karka bullshit, right? But they actually got like all this time, so at least a month before they started Flaming Frost. Then all of this time leading up to like the next couple of months leading up to the building up of Flaming Frost to actually have something compelling and large. To, for this to be it so maybe it will affect all the races i don't know maybe but i, I actually don't think so because i i honestly the bigger don't believe it, so. the less the less change we'll see in like a smaller wow. thing like, to me it's, it sounds as if like this whole leading up stuff because the stuff they've put in is not complex i'm not going to say it doesn't take a lot of work but they haven't put anything really significant in yet and that could be because they, they're using this time between then and whenever this comes out to actually build whatever they're putting out later. Right. That could totally be it. Like, so it's, it's very likely like, <laughs> cause I honestly, I don't believe that we'll get like a human side to the flame and frost thing. I think that flame and frost is actually going to lead us to the, the further North of the shiver peaks, or maybe 
like into the the mines and stuff that or whatever it is the, the tunnels that they run within. When I think the of flame, I think of char, and when I think of frost, I think of Norn. I'm assuming it's just in that area. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I'm it's saying charm. that's the flame and frost thing, but that's going to be the fir- like the four part that's going to happen like in the next two months since we're on, we're on month right. two of of four. Mm-hmm. I think after flame and frost, the thing they have for this whole year is going to be like the next thing involves that char NPC teaming up with. Uh, the Asuran NPC or the human so. NPC. I, I think event. that Flame Frost is going to lead to an actual new landmass or whatever, like new explorable zones mm-hmm. that that will further like the story and and deepen it and and broaden it. Uh, and that's when the other races will be. I don't think the other races will have like their own stories. I don't know. When, to go when do you think they're going to start padding for expansion content? Like, hey, we're leading up to an expansion. Here's gonna here's content that's leading up to it. Wouldn't it be crazy if this was it? it? Wouldn't it be crazy if this was it? Is, I don't no think it's, it's it either. Well, well it's like they, they, well, they, they, why, why wouldn't it be? They they plan on on extending this stuff out for the next year. Like, what if this is a giant long lead up to their eventual announcement of an expansion? Like that that isn't really too crazy given how long yeah. they plan on for this to go. Exactly. Yeah, we, when true. we when we first talked about it, we didn't know it was going to be a year. Uh, so yeah. it, we do have to reshape our expectations because if you do talk from a, like a year from now, that's a year and three months or so, three, three and four months since the game came out. So that's about right time where we predict an expansion ticket. Right. Hmm. And, and they've also said that like it's that they originally said like it's, you're going to get an expansion's worth of content in the February and March updates. Uh, and people took that as, oh, we're getting a ton of new zones. But they said, no, you're getting features that you would normally see an expansion appear in these months. Really, I'm, uh, I'm seeing features that I normally expect after launch. Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of like uh, it's some of the stuff I'm still on the fence about. But can we? I guess can we, we start. Yeah, we. Uh, that? Yeah, we'll right. segue into that with the uh, new map that they're offering for structured PvP. Uh, noob. A brand new PvP map, Spirit Watch. This peaceful green veil nestled between cliffside shrines of the Norn Spirits of the Wild is about to echo with the sounds of combat. In Spirit Watch, players score bonus points by capturing the Orb of Ascension, Ascension and running it through any of the three shrines on this new PvP map. So I, guess, I think the first thing we can take from this is that, like similar to what we talked about earlier with the Josh Foreman, um, <laughs> this is people who don't know how to fix stuff, but they do know how to make maps. Right. And so <laughs> since they don't really have anything else to do, they pumped out another map for us. Um, I guess this is the kind of thing we can see on an update, just like regular map pumping out. And I'm, I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, like Cynic, what do you think about it this? It combines with of like, their um, other stuff, the announcements that we'll talk about maybe later or whatever, um, of like slowly introducing these maps into more competitive play. Because... Like the general idea is, um, they are, like one of the big things is the orb of ascension and running it through the tree shines and whatever. They're experimenting with different um, plays on the conquest game, game format. Yeah, well, yeah. not even game modes because I, I would love for them to play with game modes. But what they're doing is just complicating the conquest. They're 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 playing right. more with conquest, which is what they said they'd do. Like, to to be fair, and so like they're adding this map, like cool, like the visual style. We only get like a thumbnail of it, but I think it looks dumb. But it, that aside, like it could be a map that plays really well, and if it is a map that plays really well, then there's nothing I could be but happy, assuming they are very cautious with how they introduce this into the competitive format, which they can be, thankfully, with their, their new PvP systems, which we'll talk about. Like, I, I, sure, I, sure. If, if, they, if they're going to be adding maps, that's cool. I would have liked, if you asked me what I wanted a couple of months ago, I would have said maybe some stuff that calls back to Guild Wars One a little bit harder. Like, I would, I, if they, if they. I, I I like originality and all that stuff, but all we've gotten from Guild Wars 2 from the start, like as soon as Guild Wars 2 came out, has been new stuff and new ways of looking at things and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I I'm kind of I kind of want some of the old stuff back. I I, I would like them to just reissue like like, like full on redone Guild like Wars 2 HD if I, remakes of the, yeah, yeah HD remakes of old maps. I I'd, I'd like to see that. That that'd, that'd uh, be yeah. kind of cool. I mean. Like former Guild Wars players, big part of their fan base. I'm going to make that assumption, and yeah. I'm sure that is a credible assumption. And like playing, I that would fan actually base isn't necessarily bad. say that's probably not the case. I think the larger uh, majority of players of Guild Wars Two did not play Guild Wars One. Oh yeah, just just going on numbers. Well, there's there's, there's I mean, just more people playing Guild Wars Two than they did. Play yeah, but yeah. um, but yeah. then the people who didn't play either game wouldn't care what the new map looked like, like right. as long as the new map that's different from the others. 
to, to you can't go wrong. Stage. It's not yeah. like you're going mean, to piss off new players. And it's not like I the think. maps I want were those are old maps? shitty maps. They, they actually looked really were, cool. Were those old maps like... Were they, were they Conquest maps? That, oh, no, they, they could not be used for Conquest. I, I'm just saying, they would have to be like a fully remastered thing that actually calls back to the old maps. Because at the moment, we, we haven't had anything like that. We, we don't have anything in this net set of maps that harkens towards the old ones at all. So I, like, yeah. it, well, it, and I think a lot of that to, is, you know, they... they, they um, toyed with other op- options in mm-hmm. beta. I mean, we, we know that much. We, yeah. we know they tried out, you know, Deathmatch and um, Capture the Flag and all kinds of yeah. other modes. And this was the most popular and this was the one oh, they yeah. got no, right. I, that, that's not what I'm So we, I'm so we know they're... It's not yeah, Conquest. So they they, they with them. I, I, it's not Conquest. Or right, just, just in the terms of like the visual... What the maps look like. I, that's oh, so that's you, you, mean, I mean. You, don't, you don't mean literally like those maps. You just mean like... no. The just, spirit of those maps. Yeah, I want the spirit of those maps remade. If if, if, if you were like to ask me what I really stuff, wanted yeah. from Guild Wars Two, we've only gotten new stuff. So I, I've had my fill of new stuff. I, I, I like the new stuff they've done. I've seen pretty much all of it that I wanted to see. So if they wanted to get my attention again, it would be like because that they, what they're doing is releasing a new map with a slightly new game mode into the game. And as I said earlier, no matter like all all the players like Durin and stuff like they would be happy with a new map as long as it did what they're doing here. But if you want to get my interest as well, it would be if this map also like harkened back, had the spirit of one of the older maps. I I find that fully interesting because they said that. So I, I think the hard part of that would be is like this game takes place in a completely different place than Guild Wars One, right? In a lot, no, in a lot of cases, same. Well, it's it's, it's still Tyria, same, and and it's, it's the, the first exact thing they same it, map. Like when the, they said the PvP takes place in the mists, which yeah. is this area between that's places. true okay and yeah. when they said yeah. when they first started talking about the mists was they would be hearkening back to stuff the guild was one did because it allows them to do that because it's this place aside from time and the what they gave us from that was battle for kylo which is like referential towards some of the backstory of guild wars one and stuff and like parallel story but doesn't but i don't think it's asking for like an like an exact reaction, you're just asking for some sort of nostalgia bonus for people who yeah. played the original Guild Wars, and that's and, not necessarily and, a bad thing. And, and, I, be... and I think that's something they're going to do. I think maybe they're wanting to get this stuff out there now, and that that's probably going to be something that will come. Uh, by at then, some would point, I care? Maybe that's, a... that's my worry. It's like by then, would I care? Is my is my question mark for that one? And, well, I mean, after the Canther expansion, I, I, I guess the other year. thing you have to look at too is is looking at what their player base currently is and and where the um the 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 level of happiness with the player base and everything mm-hmm. like like I understand where you're coming from yeah but do they care right now about that but, but that's, that's what makes me so annoyed is they, they made else. a new map man they made a new map why couldn't they just make this map slightly different like why, why did it have to be this they could made map? three of the same maps but why did they have to make this I think this goes along the topic we we, we talked talked about earlier of the the map makers are are a little constricted in what the uh, the programmers and the people who are mm. are balancing the game right. ha- are are working on and so the people who are making new maps can only work in that that constraint of it must be this three three point style yeah no uh, I, I again I'm can, not worried about whether it's conquest or not all I want is some visual yeah, flair that he's he's looking yeah for aesthetic difference yeah oh, okay. well, I, I just didn't like the way this map looks but when it comes to the orb of ascension running it through the three shrines still being conquest that's I, that's what people that's what they're constrained to and I and I and I am fine with that because again that yeah, as, actually, as I, you've all been saying it's, that's what their options are that's all they can do well I I, I think we I can, we can move this to really cool I, I think we can move I this to we talked about this on like on a paper type and talked about uh, SPVP. Uh, what was the last time you guys did SPVP? Uh, last time I played SPVP was with two or three days ago. Months ago. It's it, it and Duran, you can back me up on this, but there's a difference between tournament style, which we'll, we'll talk about, and just join like uh, join in um, oh, that's styles, early. which is the join in style is really just these joke builds, like most like predominantly thieves. People just running around pl- treating it like a death match and not necessarily like a uh, hold the points or or like going for the overall objective. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of fighting between points. Um, do we think that if they like when they add the ranked mode that will sort of balance that out? So the high should we talk about the ranked mode first? Absolutely, it will. I I I don't. I think it's just going to add like a different level of, of death match until you start to see you can join in as a group. 
Uh, which well, that's, you, that's the thing, though, is that, is that at, at the lower levels of the rated, yes, it will be very similar to the unrated um, because those are bad players. That's that's kind of the whole point of this is the, you know, the, the good ones rise to the top, quoting I, Guild Wars 2. Well, I mean, how do you... When I when I the reason I stopped playing, I, I had this like whole rant about this. It was like at the in like November last year, and as to and, it, and it, that kind of led towards me just stopping playing PvP. And it was too, is yeah. that um. So which one are you guys referring? Do you guys are referring to obviously the 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 free join the the crappy matches you, the ten v ten crap right? Yeah, ABA, yeah. ABA, just, yeah. Just, just right now there there's two and a half the one, slash right? three ways to play. Right there's. Join in, mm-hmm. which you can only do by yourself. But once you're in, your friends and guildies can see which match you're in and try and join, and join that as well. So, normal that's, server match, by the way. But you're still going to be on opposing teams. Like you're not going to be on the same team. Yeah. Uh, the other option is tournaments, either mm-hmm. paid or free. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I, I guess we can talk a little bit about. So uh, which changes would you guys talk? Because all the changes I see here are the tournament changes. I can't really see any changes for the... Um, what we're specifically so, talking so. about is the... The rated um, PvP that they're adding isn't that for yeah, tournaments? It's... No, that is not Wait, for the team rated PvP or just how do you have rated rate? stuff if it's just crap? Because what you do is you have you have individual player um, ratings, uh, uh, and yeah. then at, and, and whether this is in, at, at launch or not, or, or when this comes out or not, um, you could even do team based ratings. I mean, it's, it it basically would work similar to the way that WoW's arena system works, where um, whether it be you know solo or in a group, like you have a, a rating for that, and you are then matched up against other people of your rating, wins gain you you points to get you higher ratings, but losses. I think if, if they implement points. that into just the standard jumping into match bullshit, I, I'm worried because it's, hey, it's as an option though. It's not it's this, not like they're replacing it. This. Yeah, I, I'm worried oh, too. Okay. It, basically, we're talking about uh, Tyler Beers, one of the game designers for Guild Wars Two, made a post um, talking about how they're going to add a ranking system. Um, for like a, a ratings, um, mm-hmm. but basically, and, and I'm worried because this is going to be a tough challenge for them. Do you just get points for killing people, or do you get points for defending and capping and capping uh, nodes? And yeah, for for either of those, then you are fucking drastically skewing what classes and what builds can get points easily. Because if yeah. if they, if they're going to say, hey, um, we're implementing this into a um, parallel like competition scheme with the crappy 10v10 bullshit um then what you're going to have is a bunch of people just farming these points because what do you do if, if, if it's if it's like awarding you for completing objectives then obviously people who can hold a point are, are highly coveted and so you'd get the the fucking sandbag ellies and your sandbag guardians rack, racking in these points for doing what is admittedly skilled but is not in the grand scheme of things even remotely like um, valid competitive forms of play when slotted into a team. Like you, you can become really, really good at being a sandbag, and if if they choose to award people who hold points, then that's good for you. You're not a very good sandbag. Have you learned how to operate with a team? Have you learned how to move around the map properly? Well, I, I mean, there's, there's easy ways to solve that. I mean, it's it goes. You're looking at very, very, very basic. Um, criteria for, for points i mean what if what if there was like you you get you know certain points that go towards your 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 rating or whatever for holding a point you get even more points for fighting on a point you get very little points for fighting off of a point you get a lot of points or you get you get you know maybe some bonus points for raising uh um a uh teammate or maybe even some more bonus points for killing an enemy who was attacking one of your teammates. So that sounds like, those like are all the, so if I played a specifically all the things you put noted there, if I played a sandbag hundred blades, um, what's banners warrior, I could capitalize on all of the top rated things you just did there and fucking barely played the game. Like I, I just did the one thing really well, which is, which is fair. Like you are playing well to get more points because that's, that's just how games work. But if I played that specific build, a, a sandbag. But see, I, I think that's that's not warrior. an issue with this rating system. That's an issue with warriors because warriors are fucking OP right now. <laughs> warriors well, are strong. And but... I'm okay with that type of build so long as as people progress through the ratings, it's not going to end up being this deathmatch mode where everyone's just running around killing each other, mm-hmm. not caring about the major objectives. Yeah. 
I, I think that's why, like the if they're gonna go the route of of um, itemizing how you get stuff that that um, increases your rating, I think that's that's gonna be very important is to do yeah. things like that 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 you know prioritize fighting on a point, right. helping out teammates. Um, you know, like I said, killing enemies that are attacking your teammates, things like that. Or they could actually go the incredibly easy route, which maybe isn't quite as fair, but is is definitely a route that a lot of rated uh, competitive games use and just go with the simple win-loss. Hmm. I think that's going to end up you more with... You win a game, with, your rating goes um, up. Th- that's going to end up more with people who play Deathmatch because you can win just by killing everyone. So... I hope they don't do that. It's, it's kind uh, of crazy because um, one of the coolest, one of the, the greatest things you could do for any form of competitive landscape is just whisper the term weighted, because then immediately all the people who just play for funsies don't join that mode. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, just just by having a equivalent, like no matter how they do the rating system, just having a um, parallel version of the ten people bullshit hot join. Could immediately have better quality of players in there. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, look, look at the game now. Like even without the the term "rated" in there, mm-hmm. you know, go into a free tournament, yeah, and just having that that word "tournament" in there, yeah, and suddenly people are actually working together and yep. they're fighting on points and they're doing what they need to be doing. They're actually playing the game like, properly, which is well, yeah. I, I have my own, well, I've, playing I've the said, game more properly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've said what my I've had my thing with that, but yeah, exactly. There are definitely people I'd rather play with than the ten v ten not join jackasses. Excuse me. Yeah, Excuse it, me. it's still AV8. Oh, sorry, I have yeah, a question. <laughs> What's up? What's up, noob? And then we'll move so on to the next. Two next team bit. rated PvP. Is this so? Is this for ratings? So I'm confused. We haven't gotten there these yet. These are team ratings, and they're separate from regular ratings. Yeah, exactly. So the the other big change they're doing is um, doubling down on their two one v one like team system. Um, right. Because the, there are some. Because or, the way they could do it, we, it's not one v one. I guess well, one team versus one team, two it. team. Yeah, it, it's yeah. rather than the old format of uh, eight teams playing three round events, mm-hmm. they're now doing just two teams will do a single match. And oh, okay, okay, I, I missed that part. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure <laughs> this is for free or paid or it's what. For, but it's for paid tournaments, I believe. Yeah, so but I believe it's for. Then, what they did last month, I believe it was, is that they um, said that for that month, paid tournaments are going to be specifically on one map. No, um, that's that's this month. That's, so this that, month? that's what's happening now. I thought they experimented yeah. with that last month. Let me have a look. Yes, yeah, so it says the next map will be Battle for Color. The previous one was something uh, Temple of Storm week. Yeah, exactly. Te- yeah, so it was only a week. Sorry. Yeah, it was only a week. Um, so they made paid tournaments for that week, only playable on that map. And each one was a, a two-team deathmatch, essentially. Well, not... De- Single elimination, two team. Um, so now that they realize that people fucking like that, because of course they do. That's how the first game fucking worked with GVG. Um, so yeah, now, now they're just doubling down that and saying that for at least they're going to be experimenting with having normal tournament modes being a kind of map rotation with um, that two team elimination. That that does map. not sound at all like what I'm reading here. What does it say here? This it says, is not. This, this this does not say anything about tournament. This is a new type of competitive PvP that is a one-off, one v one match uh, with two pre-made teams. And at the end of the the match, um, the ratings for each team member is then adjusted. Oh right, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm talking about you, we're talking about different things because for mine it's, it's the Tyler Beers one for February six, which is hello everybody. I'm Tyler Beers, one of the game designers in Guild Wars two. Thank you for participating in the Temple of Silent Storm week, where PvP tournaments were temporarily changed from eight team three round events to two team single round matches. So far, our response has changed has been overwhelmingly positive. Due to your feedback, we've decided to keep this format for paid tournaments, and beginning next week, we will have, we'll select a different map to feature on all paid tournaments for that week. The free tournament format won't change. The next map will be Battle for Kylo. A number of players have mentioned that while they like our new tournament format, they'd be much happier if we also had matchmaking, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so, yeah, we're talking about different things. Um... Okay, so some, somebody mentioned two team rated yeah, play. Yeah, I, I was talking about two team rated. Well, the rated yeah. stuff is going to be for all tournament play, isn't it? Oh my! No, the rated stuff is not tournament play. Is so it just is, for? Are these ratings that for team play? The, same the rated tournament thing? is something that's completely separate. So what's going oh, to yeah. happen basically is you'll still have um, you know play server, now or ser- serverless choice, whatever you want to do with that. Choice, you'll still you'll still have free tournament and you'll still have paid tournament. Yeah, this is another option, and this is. Uh, team right. rated. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if these ratings are the same as regular ratings because it says ratings for each member of the team. So I'm assuming 
these are the same ratings that you use for 1v1. Yeah, I think I don't think they're making a whole different th- uh, method. I think they're just trying to smarten up the way each team's compositions are made and, and they're faced off against each other. Wait, so yeah, like, it's if not, these like, ra- they, they make it sound like this is like a new separate thing, but yeah, after kind of looking at it, like it's more like they're adding a rating to your player, and when you hop into these matches, like you will actually be matched up with people of your rating level. Right? Matchmaking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're putting matchmaking um, into a game in 2013. Really- I would clap, but I'm holding something in my left hand. Um, <laughs> Me holding. Yeah, yeah. The sure. scotch. They, they, well, it's a bottle of water. Yeah, sure, scotch. Um, yeah, <laughs> like I, they totally have to. Well, this is a good step in the right direction. People want matchmaking. I've I've wanted matchmaking for a long time. I'm game. on guild matchmaking. But I'm actually and, more and, excited. And, and about sadly, that. no response about custom uh, arenas yet. But I I, I, no. I think that's probably going to be in, in March. Yeah, yeah, I think. What I want from PvP is more variety of different things to do, not just regular conquest. Yeah, yeah, we, I think that's also been a thing that, that has detracted people <laughs> yeah. is because uh, it's. I, I know when I started playing the the opt join in one, it it was I didn't like doing it because we went through this rotation and it was fun running around, but obviously, like always, like all right, well, I'm taking a break as soon as raid on the Capricorn shows up. <laughs> There's no yeah. option just to join a match and just keep playing that. Uh, I think with or, the, or the, even do something real simple like at the end of each match, do like a map vote. Like let oh, everyone pick be so what good. map they want to play next. Again, good. these concepts in 2013. But yeah, I, <laughs> totally. Uh, but, I, I think this this might get people more into at least the tournament play, knowing that when I join in, it's going to be Battle of Kylo. It's going to be people who aren't going to tr- oh, hopefully run around and try and kill people. They're going to try focusing on the the objectives. But there's still a lot of people who just like run around with thief builds and just yeah. play deathmatch. But just to be clear, like um, the one I was talking about off the two, where this um, the changes to the two team rated play stuff, um, that's only for paid tournaments. That's it's going to be different. So it's only going to be so. Just to be clear, paid tournaments are a whole team goes in and you can't change a team members between matches, I believe. And I, I'm not sure if you can change your actual build. I think you still can, even though I think that's dumb. Um, between well, I mean, matches. paid tournaments. They said they're going to keep. They're going to change to two team single round matches. Yeah, exactly. So I, that so, stuff is. There's um, no in between rounds. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. it's a single round, yeah, absolutely correct. Sorry, um, but it, yeah, no, I, the I wanted to point out that um, your your thing there with um, people want to like choose what what map they play on. Um, this is kind of that, but not because the single most requested map for people to play on in any form of tournament play was Battle for Kylo, because it's the third round in the um, eight round elimination. So 18 elimination. Yeah. Um, so it's actually, by the time you get there for most teams, um, you're you're now inviting the guys who beat the other guys. So it'll be the hardest match of the lot. So a lot of people just felt like they were under-practiced on that map specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a slightly, entirely aside from what you were saying. But yeah, just to point out, it's awesome that they're doing this for Battle for Kylo, because a lot of people want to have like serious practice for that map and now they're yeah. they, now they're getting to do that which well that cool. that's just that's the next map for the week or the month or whatever yeah, so exactly. and probably um, change it, it, it will change we're just starting off on this on a good foot yeah yeah um, it sounds like it sounds like they're maybe looking at a, a weekly change yeah which is cool I, I love this idea for paid tournaments well and and, and it's, it's it's kind of sad i i, I know because whenever you guys stray off to, to talking about the um 8v8 random match bullshit and the ratings there I, I just completely tune out and keep reading about this paid tone stuff because it's, it's the only real way to play. well the, the rating thing is nice <laughs> because one thing that one thing that'll actually allow is players who are serious about structured pvp and play a lot of it will get highly rated and and be matched up against each other in non-paid tournament stuff and will allow them to have you know actual good yeah um, practice on all of the maps really hope so i really hope so and i'm any form of matchmaking is a, is a definite boon to any online multiplayer game, um, especially if it's skill-based matchmaking. And so, so here, uh, yeah, or at least from my opinion, I, uh, that, this, these changes are all good um, yeah. for the most part. Except for this map. It looks lame. I disagree with you, Durin. Look it up. I think the map looks great. Uh, I guess on the subject of 8v8, we can go to... You're just to... not used to trees down in Australia, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an owl. Sure. <laughs> So we can talk about, you know what this reminds uh, me of? Freaking that Hawk missions. character, like Tom Hawk, Tommy Hawk from whatever his name is from Street Fighter. That's what this 
map reminds me of. <laughs> really? That map reminds you of Tommy Hawk from Street Fighter? I, I forgot what his name is. It's something Hawk. Um, T-Hawk. T-Hawk from Street Fighter. Yeah. I'm just looking at the picture they provided, and I, I mean... <laughs> it's just, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's something about the color palette, paper. and... It doesn't seem like Street Fighter to me. I don't yeah, know. Maybe it's a bird. <sighs> Maybe it's a hawk. That, yeah, I, I, it's I a raven, assume that was a hawk. It is in the shape of a T. Oh, it could be Raven. It could I be believe, Raven or Owl. Well, it's, it's Norn, so I believe it is a Raven. Yeah, that's a Raven. <laughs> no, Norn. I was trying to sit the benefit of the doubt on that one. <laughs> Nor, Norn also had Al, but Al died when Jormag. So why would it be? Uh, oh, it could be Al, yes. But, no, it's got a beak. It's got a, it's got a defined jaw. Yeah, that's definitely not Al. Yeah, that's, that's a Raven. I know. Should I? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> that's my screw up. Moving up to team up for guild missions. Oh. Uh. So what's this stuff about? to do with so your what guild is numbers? This, as the newest oh, and latest and greatest of the Lincoln Forest yeah. guild leaders, so tell me, me as the old this. guild leader what the fuck this is about. Me, I'm not quite this. sure. I mean, like they're I think they're intentionally vague, but uh, basically they, they've they're giving us a bunch of missions that are designed for like coordination and group play. They don't say how many, so they might go back to the eight. They might go to five, um, or it may just scale. Like, yeah, it, it may just scale with more I, people. That would be the best option is that it just scales to however many people you bring. That way you're not like, well, sorry, I know we have a guild of like 20 guys, but we're going to bring the best 10 every week to make sure that we get the best guild merits and get our stuff out as fast as we can get it. <laughs> well, boy. And, boy. Is it going to be a per week thing or is it going to be just an instant reset like dungeons? Uh, I really hope they don't go into a format of you can only do this once a week. I think that's a bad move. Yeah. It's um, it's interesting that they use the term missions here. So. Th- to me, that says that it's going to be instanced, right? I yep. think it might be instanced too. Uh, yeah, I think so, it might so. in the world, but if I mean, it's hard to say because, like, one of the things in there is cross country challenges, which might be a little hard to do instanced. Yeah, as well as mm-hmm. uh, group puzzles. So, like, maybe they're going to add races. But I mean, like, oh, with cool. with Race, guesting, jumping you have puzzles. the option for everyone to get on the same server. But it would be a smarter system if everyone was just instanced on a giant map. Yeah. But that yeah. takes their resources and all these things. Yeah, it's, it's the size of the map that that becomes difficult there because they're capable of doing a shitload of instance content if you see the, the dungeons and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, can, do, do you? Because they, how are they doing with Wallace as well? Several loads from from my understanding rather well. Um, do you think they could have large maps in this system if this is instance? Like, how big do you think they could go? Um. I don't know. I mean, like it, it's. I'd love up- to see this, something the size of a fucking like uh, borderland. If yeah, I'd, I'd love to see grand scale. Yeah. Again, I'm just looking at this picture they provided. I'm pretty sure that's the um, into the like the 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 mist's loading zone for structured PvP. Is it? Yeah, looks like it. Is it? I don't think yeah, so. I'm pretty sure that's, that's it. But uh, I don't think there's no tarps there. Oh, there's tarps there. Um, but that's that. That could just be just a promotional picture. Yeah, the I other that was thing like a visual glitch um, about this is you earn guild merits, which yeah. uh, basically it's going to be a new currency for guilds for upgrades and buying stuff. I find that incredibly well. So okay, I've, I've got a problem with that one, and yeah. it, it might be the same thing the cynic was was getting at. Um, but okay, we're what uh, four months or not four months? Uh, Half a year. Months into the game? Yeah. No, Does that's not like about six right. Six or no, five. Six, five. Or six yeah, five, yeah, six. Six, yeah, six, yeah, six, five, six months, somewhere around there. Okay, um, we have more currencies in this game than the months that this game has been out, <laughs> and they just keep piling them on. Yeah, like I, I, I'm already dealing with like eight fucking currencies for things mm. right now. See, like but it's I, getting I, ridiculous. <laughs> outside the currency, I think this is like for a game called guild wars this game has surprisingly little guild support and guild stuff to do and i think this I is going in the right di- direction of now there's stuff to do for your guild like i, I agree but i think i think place. instead of guild merits like why don't they just make like give you like influence bonuses and add new stuff to the influence right, or but, something but, that would be awesome is some sort of like time like is, is event calendar thing where you can Say, oh, right. yeah. hey, we're having, well, yeah, <laughs> like, like a planner almost, <laughs> yeah, saying, hey, guys, we're gonna get together on this day and do stuff, and then when you post that in, oh, like, God. let's say, a message of the day, people <sighs> will see it as it pops up on their chat screen. I mean, like come every on. other, it's not like MMO, other, it's not like other MMOs have done that. Uh, <laughs> it's entirely new no, thing. You asked them to invent something from scratch. Is, what are you talking about? This game has. Yeah. 
really terrible guild support. Let's be honest. Like yep. for a game yeah. called Guild Wars, yep. outside of it just a meeting the place and a place for people. Oh no, it's not even a meeting place because there's no guild hall. But mm-hmm. like outside of a place for people to press G and find other people in your guild, mm-hmm. it there's no support. And I'm, I think this is prodding them in the right direction. Like guild oh, yeah. merits, I disagree. I think it's a good idea because if you use an existing system, then you're forced to you know like change the prices of these things based on how much influence is currently worth by adding guild merits they can add a bunch of new stuff that are worth let's see new my problem with that is it it, it sounds okay for now but if, if this is their um <laughs> if they keep taking the easy route and just adding new currencies every time they add a new function to the game two years from now this game is going to be unplayable for a new player. But the thing you're gonna is, come in and you're going to be looking at like, well, how, much, how much gold do I have? How much influence do I have? How much karma do I have? How many laurels do I have? How many of each of these different dungeon tokens do I need in order to do this I thing? And how, how many, how many, uh, how many ectos do I need for this? And then how much, how much does my, how many guild merits are we getting per week? Like that's just what's in the game fucking now. I agree. Like, like, what's going to be there? Two let's years compare now? this to the real world. What is our primary form of any any form of reward slash trade? It is dollars. Money. What one fucking thing you can trade them between countries? Sure, but within a country, you generally have one form of tradable currency. And the, but even that aside, like, because this the is what they've is, done, right? This is what they've done. I this is what they currency, continue. you're restricted to what you can buy, and at the same time, you can earn it in different ways. If you have money for everything, then that simply wouldn't work because certain- right, and I'm not yeah, saying that, yeah, that exactly. they just reduce it all down to one thing. But what they need to do is they need to be smart about how they do this yeah. and look at. I don't know, you know man. They don't really have an official guild currency. They, other than they need, just do. It's called influence. Other than influence, they need they need to look at what the new function is yeah. and where it fits. Like, if it fits, instead of giving me guild currency, why aren't you giving find me? A way to do it. Like when you have a collector's version of this game, you get an item which you double the coin to get that one thousand influence. Why aren't you just giving me those? That'd be pretty cool. As rewards for yeah, this like stuff. like instead of adding this whole new fucking thing, like I said, just add in infl- or make this um, give influence for doing these guild events, and add new stuff to the influence thing, which has been stagnant since launch. Everyone already has everything they fucking want from it. Yeah, and, and do we give think us some that... to actually spin influence again rather than dropping karma things every week? Do do we think that we will get new upgrades with the influence? That allow guild members to use the merits to buy stuff. Like I think, I think the merits would be an awesome thing to buy the guild outfits, like the shield oh, and the cool. staff and all that. That would be cool. And then you have to unlock that with influence, right. but, but the players can use use their own like, merits. It sounds like an awesome idea, but doesn't sound like what they're saying here. They say, this yeah, that has kind of cool upgrades yeah. and rewards. Like rewards, maybe. Like maybe you're right. Maybe. That they'll be going to add like a guild shop to the influence thing, and if, if you unlock the guild shop with your influence, then where is that guild can, shop going to be? Um, it's a, it's going to be in a guild hall. Your guild I, mean, it, I don't care if it's a fucking window. A maybe city. you can just like, spend your guild merits on getting like a cool guild shield. That would be cool, right? But, if I I honestly hope it's what they're originally saying, where it's guild merits are currency for guild members and not for the entire guild. That would be, what? be awesome. Is if they turn? Oh, you mean like each individual person gets guild merits? You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. guild merits are used by the person to buy stuff okay. from the guild. And it's rewarding people. And I, for I, and I can see that. And like I said, I don't have an inherent issue with this. I just think that this is get them this is in a very dangerous. We don't direction. even know what the fuck this is. Let's be honest. Well, well and, right. and I'm if saying, they're I'm like this, 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 every time they, they've added a new new thing, they've constant they've they've been adding new currencies. This is not the first time this has happened, and I just feel like this is a dangerous path. Mm-hmm. Here, here's going. something else that's going to be shaky. Wa- shaky uh, ice is. If the guild merits are player based and not guild based, can you get merits with guild A and then spend them on guild B? No. Why wouldn't you be able to? If they're if they're player based, then they're a player based currency. You can stand down from one guild, represent another. You still have but that's unless kind of unless they tag it to the guild. I mean, if if if, right. if they don't want people to do that, if they if they want it to be per guild. You've introduced Absolutely. five currencies, not one. Because <laughs> these persons, yeah. Because we are we are only bound to five guilds right now. Yeah. Which is something else. They said we would have limited, like limitless number of guilds we could be in. Um, and, and like I realized that yeah, it's it was a constraint that they had. Like you could only be in five at one time instead of as many as you wanted because that's how much they can uh, fit with the programming. But I mean, it kind of has to be worried that if if it is just going to be so, if we rewind tokens, to like what this makes it sound like, which is like guild merits is a thing that your guild spends as an entity. What do you, what kind of 
cool upgrades and rewards would you want? Adding vendors to my guild hall. But first, <laughs> a guild buying hall. a fucking guild hall. <laughs> um, maybe, that's, maybe that's the big secret is like the, the most expensive thing for guild merits is everyone kind of pitching in together to eventually buy the guild hall. Right. What, I mean, what else could be far like, no, we already have like, like over 10 generations. We already have Otherwise, item prime I think it stages. Be, it, it, you know, it could, it could be like, you know, some... <laughs> like maybe guild related boosters or co- we like um that. do we have guild boosters yeah we, well, yeah i mean we have we sure. have like in- influence boosters <coughs> all that it's just those banner things yeah the banners um well, yeah but those are all only accessible by officers well they're accessible by whoever wants to like the guild leader wants to give the options to I, I'm, I'm right. re- we're returning to like we're, we're putting aside the side that the fact that this might be like individual play we're, we're saying if this was a guild based expenditure Yes. Oh, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I, would you yeah. want it to be? Because I can't think of it. Yeah, even... I don't know. Like, like the the idea of upgrades. Like that's the one I'm not really like. Rewards could be just about anything, but like upgrades. Like, well, what what? Give us an example of what a reward would yeah, be. Yeah, I have no idea what it could be. They can't be tabards because they've said they can't do anything like that because of the char. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can't be capes. Well, they didn't directly say tabards because you might be able to pull off tabards. I don't know. Yeah. How about armbands? Um, I miss capes. Yeah. Give, give us a wristband. Well, I mean, and they already have they already have guild armor that's already in the game. How about like a little? It's ugly, game? but it's in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, what was like maybe an emote? It's, maybe it's other variations of guild armor. What was like a series or of emotes like the that the add... guild can unlock? So, so cosmetic, like, or like the ability to add like a guild sigil to your existing armor. Hmm. How about titles? People love titles. Yeah, People do love titles. How about sense. hats? Oh, shit. so just like you, all all the rewards we can think of are are cosmetic ones or. Of course. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean like, uh, otherwise, I mean, I, everything else that you would expect to get from, like, something, a system like that, it's kind of already in the game, right? Yeah, like, like we have there's storage. Already, there's, already, there's already Guild Love Love um, <laughs> Siege stuff. Yeah. We have Guild Storage. We, you know, there's no real need for Guild structured stuff, mm-hmm. really. The thing is, um, before they, I think before they do this shit, they need to expand what Guilds can do. Yeah. And currently yeah, I agree. Not- if if, if the, this your, announcement had been made after they put in guild holes, I'd be way more excited. Yeah, yeah, guild I mean, like upgrade. That, that would be great because players could <laughs> add like yeah. If it's if it's in like player housing and all that, as well as as guild housing, like the, the personal. It's like giving people highways before they have cars. There's you can't do anything with a highway. You just what do you do with these rewards when you don't have anything to spend? You can, you can walk on a highway. Build... <laughs> yeah, but you can also walk on. A <laughs> you can't. That's illegal. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, I, 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 I'm really hoping that it's just the upgrades are influence based and the rewards are guild merit, uh, player based, and goes across guilds. It's weird. That, do more. you think they'll be reusing? Because they say new missions, right? And, and, and we've already said that that probably means instant con- instance content. Um, yeah. Because, like, if, if for example, like one one of the things that came across my mind is that they say cross country challenges. Like, what if a mission was, hey, if everyone meets up in X place, then NPC will will walk over to you and say, hey, does your guild want to do this cross-country challenge? And then you have to go across the world. The problem with that idea is, even though it's an awesome idea, um, like be, being based in normal PvE maps, um, is that once a bunch of guilds are doing it, then you're having like thousands of people meeting up in this random spot. And, fast. and um, doing the same or just like slightly different obstacle courses and challenges or whatever or, 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 or maybe it's maybe it's not that maybe it's more like you need members of your guild in multiple different zones kind of doing this doing things at the same time okay. all building towards a, a oh, larger a fucking shit objective. show i will not want that <laughs> that's, well, that's, because that's that's, that's that's the thing though noob is that i don't think any of this is going to be hard right i think like the the bounties the the fights are going to be <laughs> zerg fights yeah they're not going to be the things that are gonna be balanced around making sure they're not going to be boss fights you know, yeah, this is why I think well, if they are boss fights, they're going to be like world boss fights where you just stand there and attack it. Running around. So, well, alternatively, that, that's something that that would be a cool option. Is if they made this available in the world, um, it would be something like okay, let's all guest to this server, which is why they had to wait until guesting was around to mm-hmm. uh, uh, put this in, and then a guild summoned boss. That would be something that'd be cool, but I, I don't I know. I'm still it's like if you're just a regular dude playing. But the alternative to that is if they do. Game, that's not fun. Sorry, sorry. What was that? 
I don't, I don't want to be in the middle of another guild shit while oh, I'm running. Exactly. That that's, that's why I'm worried about it being the open world. But the alternative is if it's instance, what you, what would you guys think if it was like they just took, for example, and, and the one I, I hope they do is um the where the fire Snowfrack. elemental is in um oh. the sewer starting area, you know that building with all the crazy shit happening? Yeah, the, yeah. The Imagine there. they took that just that building and made it its own instance and put a guild in there and gave them objectives to do in that building. In the same construct, even though they're reusing content to a large extent with the, with the area itself and the enemy spawns and the map design, See, if they gave us cool things to do in that as a guild, that could be interesting. Even though When I think content. of co-op missions yeah. in general, I think of just single-player missions and just games in general, like single-player missions for multiple people. And I'm, that's what I think of when they say guild missions, I'm assuming mm. it's a similar story mission-esque mission with many people. Because with the like problem slightly with that different... is that then they'll have to be making all this new content, and I'd rather a new landmass than that. I like, doubt they're going to make a new landmass just for guild missions. I think it's just <laughs> going to be you. Place. Yeah, yeah, no, That's definitely. not what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, what he's saying oh. is like, if, if that's what they're going to do, if they're going to spend all the time of like creating new content... Yeah. Just for this stuff, like maybe those be- those resources would be better spent. Yeah, but if they did something like my other idea, on. which was I think they're like building, reused, but I mean it's, it's hard to say though because like Cynic, you like you are kind of embodying the contradiction of the player base and why yeah. Arena is having a hard time with this because like on one hand you want more guild stuff, but mm-hmm. on the other hand, if they're going to waste all this time um, on the resources to build new content for guilds, you'd rather they do a landmass instead. Yeah. I don't but know. then, but like, in in this case, unlike the argument that um, went up with uh, Dudeface, we are talking about the same people working on both. Like, if they are making large scale, yeah, yeah, guild yeah. unique content, then that will be the same level of design as I mean, you do like world the, stuff. There's like just a bankrupt amount of guild content that exists. I think we need to get guild to a certain level. So I, I would love to see much. like stuff like remixed, instanced remixed areas. Um, approachable by a guild even if it's like now, now it's uh, the other thing is there's no reason it can't be all of these things yeah <laughs> it, could, it could be no. yeah. These things, yeah we're just trying to pr- predict which one we think they're most likely going to go with yeah and and honestly if i would say which one they're most likely to go with it would be hey everyone meet up in this area it'll in normal pve it'll spawn a um a dude oh, fuck give no. something to do. it's gonna be oh actually, i actually think it's gonna be a small instance a small instance with a very small amount of people yeah I- yeah, uh, small yeah, probably a small amount of people. And um, hopefully they'll go higher than five. Or unique content or no. remix content? It's going to be existing areas, red lined off. And yeah, I'm thinking something red. along the same lines as personal story sort of stuff. Sure. With more know. people. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, it's not particularly amazing, but I'm I'm fine with taking that over nothing. So, <laughs> well, they did the I, thing, would, um, I would love for Guild Mission to be like, we they reuse the content from Claw Island where you just have to like hold hold back waves of guys like oh, a horde cool. mode. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would be awesome. Horde mode. Fuck yeah. I'd love to see horde mode. Uh, I'm curious what the puzzles are, but I'm I'm thinking there's going to end up being like jumping puzzles where oh, that, probably, that that yeah. involve like the mechanics like five people need to be on these switches or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I love the idea of but, remixed old content because it's it's comparatively yeah. low effort for them to do and it could be really interesting because they, there's a lot of cool places that I've only seen once. Um and and you aren't going to go on your travels again unless, yeah. like, you find yourself brought, like, you know, lured there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to make a new um, character. Which is a big, so. uh, a big deal for them, like they've said in the past. Like, they, they want to get players out there looking at these different zones mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Which, so, like, that would be that would definitely be a good way to do that. Uh, I, th- I think this is a good way to segue into the last uh, bit of, well, the second to last bit of news. Wait, let's complain about guilds first. Let's complain more about guilds. <laughs> I think we've I'm, complained I'm enough about, about guilds. No, wait, wait, wait. For this but, week. like, I don't know. I feel like they <laughs> had more with guilds in the original fucking Guild Wars than they have now in that game. Did they? I think, I think you're looking years. back with rose-colored they glasses. They had guild battles and guild halls. Well, they had guild battles and guild halls. That was the only two things that they, they really did well, have. Well, I mean, like, they also had guild halls, but by that same token, Guild Wars was a far more instance game mm. than Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if they want to revisit and go back into instance stuff with guild halls, but uh, I oh, think they'd I also... see like, why not. Guild I mean, I'd also like to see them add uh, more options to make it so that I, instead of going to Lion's Arch every day, uh, I can just choose to go to Divinity's Reach by default, and there's a Mystic Forge there, and I think that'd be a, like a, a good use how of about, resources. But how about we have a guild hall, and then we use guild merits to purchase a Mystic Forge for our guild hall, and then we all just hang around in our oh, guild hall. Oh, that'd be cool. How cool would that be? That'd be I mean, cool. It, it's, 
I agree. That would be very awesome. But at the same time, um, for people who are not in guilds, they go to Lion's Arch or something. And well, they are... if you're not in a guild, you can suck a dick. Is well, what it's, I think. it's and like they would be great additions to our <laughs> guild or any guild. But they don't interact with people who are doing like who are in. Don't like sucking dick. Join j- bomb. I would love to be at the at the meeting because there's invariably a meeting about this where someone sat down with. So how about guild halls, guys? And everyone was like, "What are you talking about? Why? Why would we want guild halls and guild wars too?" And I want to punch them all in the face. <laughs> it's not a game about guild. I want to punch them all in the face. <laughs> that gives it the name. Yeah, I'd love to be a fly on the wall on some of these things, and it would be awesome if they just like released all the like if they recorded this or live streamed it or something and let us like just watch not interact but just watch some uh, meetings they have indeed yeah all that stuff fascinates me mm. uh but the other thing we can talk about is uh there are it's a it, i guess this is an attempt to revitalize uh people getting into the other zones is w- p- people have seen they've changed the way achievements work now you can choose your own daily achievement uh, oh, yeah. and this <laughs> this sort of has me worried Devolve into what's the most efficient way of getting my daily? Yeah, check I, on the I, internet. I fear it's just going to be people falling back to, all right, we're only going to do X dailies from this larger larger option field. I think they should make a middle medium sized pool that you can choose from that randomizes once a week. That's the perfect option, I think, in my opinion. I think so too, but um, do I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see a problem with people just finding their most like. Their own most the efficient way of doing it. Because the cool thing why is because, happening now. Because not everybody enjoys the same stuff. Yeah, it's like, the there people, be, there's I mean, actually groups of people might, who this do gonna sound crazy. together and stuff. It's this cool. is going to sound crazy, but there are probably people out there who enjoy underwater combat. I like and it. So um, when that and those up, people they, are wrong, they always like and doing they it. probably should get their I'm hand up. I don't know if I'm there, are, there are maybe other people who don't give a shit about crafting, so gathering is not something they want to do for a daily. Durin? So, yes. I agree with you completely. Um... If they, like, I think this is a great thing on its own, uh, but I think that if the objective of this change, this improvement, is to get people out into the other, like into the inactive zones, uh, playing more, I don't think that's going to work. Right. That being said, I still think this, like, if the like point of this is to let people do their own thing, I think it's it's a great idea. No, because at what point? Like, what's the value of a daily if you don't I have to really work hard for it and the, when the you work hard the, you do stuff you don't really like the inter- I mean, introduction of the daily like as it sits right in, as, as of this, this recording which is they you know they change it up every day one of or six dailies of, are significantly more money, difficult than they were at launch uh, options like that was maybe their intention with this is to get players out there into all those different zones and everything um but what they probably have realized is one there are clearly some that people just generally don't like to do and begrudgingly go out there and do it because okay. it's the daily and they want to finish it. Um, and I mean, this did they mention bounties out there in here? The, oh no, they have to uh, because I, mean, I can see bounties like kill veteran in this area. That could be really simple. And- uh, I I will I will add on to this that since they've added this change, I have not done a single daily. Really? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I, mean, I think you're crazy because, because they're so much easier to do now. Yeah. Yes, they're so much easier to do. But the only reason I did the dailies prior was to get the coins to work on Mystic Clovers and all that to work on my legendary. Mm-hmm. Um, it was never like the the uh, like the karma was nice, but now that I have all my obsidian shards, what about the laurel? I have no use for karma. Laurel. So if they added, so if they gave some reason for that, like yeah, I could use the um, or jewelry laurel. chest boxes as a very poor karma to coin ratio like exchange but i mean like i'm not even motivated to do that and the only other thing that like has kept me interested in the game was working on for my legendary just because yeah i'll start playing again when this new content comes out but it's not out right now so i'm not like that interested in it um i really have no desire to do the dailies to go out of my way only because the rewards aren't that appealing to me god i've, so wait, I've never the understood reward that was appealing to you before was karma no, the rewards that were appealing to me was karma to get obsidian shards and the mystic coins, like stuff I need to get clovers. So what's Those changed things other than them exist. adding laurels? I got all my clovers. Okay. But what about That's laurels? Why he doesn't you don't do have them. all your laurels. That, I mean, so, like okay. 
that's 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 what my issue with with you uh, bringing up a, your counterpoint to the way dailies are done now. As well, I haven't done dailies since they changed it to this way. It has nothing to do with them changing it this way. It's that you've done the dailies for what you need for, needed out of the game, regardless of whether they've changed it or not. You would have stopped doing dailies anyway. Yes and no. It's like the, the it's the the format I had for doing the dailies, basically just going into world versus world, killing a bunch of things and gathering, worked for my play style. Um, for this new play style of actually crafting stuff, which I usually sold all the mats, uh, going underwater, I don't really fight a lot of underwater things in World versus World. I like I don't go into the oh, PVE okay. world. I see what you're saying. So, so the thing is, like they've added laurels, right? But the, it's if, it's the, why would I he go I'm, do I, that if he doesn't want to do the things like laurels on? Well, and, and I think that's why this change that they're making um, as kind of a. a an evolution of the changes that they've already made mm. is it, so what they're doing now is is they're going to have like ten total available of the of the total twenty um, each day, <laughs> and you choose which five or six or whatever of those ten you want to do for your daily that day. Mm. Now, I, I feel like I personally feel like they should go a step further, and they should just make all twenty available, yeah. every day, <laughs> yep. and you just choose the five that you want to do. Pretty much. But Permi doesn't, Permi doesn't want that for just having a massive drop down on my top right corner of my screen. But well, right, yeah, yeah, I agree that that's that's a good that that is a well, good do? option. Whether or not that's the right one, I'm not sure. All they'd have to do with with the UI to fix that is you go into your your achievement list thing for your daily and, you and just add check marks to them. You choose which ones you want to track, yeah. and those are what you track. Yeah. Yep. And that, and then they, you like can just keep it that way. So end up being the easiest ones, even if they don't yeah. enjoy it, for the well, sake. Of and it, and, and if, even, even if you're tracking like those five, if you just kind of inadvertently finish another one while you were doing them, it still counts towards it. It's not like only those checked that count towards it. It's just you <coughs> can choose to track five of them at once because those are the ones that you prefer to do. I like Duran system. That, Twenty. Just do, let I mean, me pick. In, in the end, I've, yeah, it feels like they're, they're 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 kind of again like it feels like they are moving half a step in the right direction. Yeah, again, I, I was never objecting with you. I was saying that on the one hand, the motivation to do it is has dropped only because the, ex, the, the minuscule extra step that I have to take is not <laughs> like motivating me enough for the rewards given. Like, I mean, like, right. yes, they're insanely cool rewards. Are they cool? I might do it. What if, yeah, I mean, like, pretty you, cool, yeah. You get gear. Um, you can get random gear. You can get a, a like a cat tonic. You can get obsidian shards, which again we talked about last week. It'd be uh, awesome. Get, if, it'd be awesome if they added another reward. You could also get an un- unidentified die. You get siege. Well, you can also get gear. the ascended gear. Yeah, and, and ascended, ascended gear. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of cool things, but I'm just like I'm happy with where my character is in terms of, of stuff. I'm. Like I, I, the other thing is I'm not really that like motivated to keep working my legendary because like while the the laurels are an excellent way to get money, it's just that huge um, cliff that I have to climb to get my precursor. Uh, which I mean, like if they if they improve that, I would be more motivated to work on dailies again and start like driving myself. To get this. Yeah, for and and that's the thing is I, I I never said that you were necessarily like. What I brought up was not like in a, like a counterpoint to oh, yeah. your to you saying a counterpoint to mine. It was more so clarifying for anybody listening. Like your issue with it is not like inherent an inherent issue with the change. It's that you hit a point personally where you didn't feel like you needed to do dailies anymore. Well, yeah, and it's like it's ArenaNet is trying to solve like get people into more doing dailies and, and playing the game more often on a daily basis, having fun. I'm like half hoping that maybe a person from Arena listens to this podcast and will be like, "Oh, we need to find a better way to solve this issue." Like maybe maybe. So if somebody from Arena Net is listening to this podcast right now. I have already said <laughs> you're better to, to solve this issue, and that is to let me pick all twenty. All 20 yeah. No, no. And let don't me just do pick that. from don't pick do five. Don't of them. do that. Yeah. Don't do that. People like, are just let, gonna pick whatever's no, no, easy. The reason why you want to do that, the fucking like like base idea of Guild Wars Two is play the game you want to play it. Or play the game the way you want to play. If you don't, if you don't work hard for it, you really don't. And by putting it. restrictions on dailies of telling me I have to do these things, kind of goes against that. Even though no, they're I'm opening not saying it up you have to do, 
I'm I'm asking for a mod, like a medium pool of dailies that randomizes each week, so people are forced to try something new. That sounds like what even they're doing. They... And, and, that, and that's what they're doing. Well, and, like... and what I'm saying is that's not going far enough. I feel like I like basically what I'm saying, noob. I never want to do underwater. I, I don't want to kill 25 things for a daily underwater. That's not fun. Yeah, that's you never have the choice not to. And if there are going to be really some good. days where I'm going to have to do it. Well, and noob, as you said, they've presented us with that choice right now with the five options. I've just chosen not to do it. No, no, no. But the thing is, they're forcing those five options. I'm saying give us ten options and we pick five out of okay, those Okay, if they and give us ten options and asking that's us to do doing. five, I'm telling you right now, if they give us ten options asking us to do five, if there are six of those that I don't want to do, He's not gonna do it. I'm just not going to do it. That's the problem. Yeah, like they're, they're could, they may give us ten well, available. Then, then you don't get doing. the rewards of all the hard work. And that's what they're doing. That's what no, happens. but see, noob, that's the thing. It has fucking nothing to do with hard work. It's that yes, there are things in this game that do I don't work. enjoy. It's no, not about fun. It's, it's about grinding and getting rewards from the grind, man. Noob, you, don't you, get it. you don't get it. In all it. seriousness, noob, in all seriousness, what I'm getting at is it has nothing to do with like hard work as opposed to not hard work. It's that there are things in this game that I don't enjoy doing as much as there are other things I do enjoy doing. And by giving me the, the full option, the, I know there are 20 total. Everybody knows that. They have said that there are 20 total, and they are picking 10 per day to choose from. And from there, you choose five. They are limiting. There are some that are not going to be available for me to do. There are maybe things that I enjoy doing. And like no, no, I, I completely there's a understand. Bad day and there are six things that I don't enjoy doing out of the ten, and I still have to pick five. That means there is at least one thing they are forcing me to do if I want to do the daily that I don't enjoy. I'm talking about what Thurb said from the very beginning. Is if their objective is to have people experience parts of the game that they no longer experience, having them pick whatever they want to do and then just it's. It, at the end, it's not necessarily even going to be what they want to do. It's just going to be what's most efficient of getting these dailies. That's not necessarily the best way of going around achieving the goal they're setting out to do. I think the, the efficiency thing is going to be the case for some players, but I don't think that's going to be everybody. I think that, like I said before, there are people, believe it or not, that do enjoy underwater combat. They would pick underwater combat as one Those of their options. don't exist. That is not the most efficient way to do I it. Mean, that's I going like to take underwater you, combat. But people enjoy it. There are people yeah. like, for instance, there are people like me who, like, I actually enjoy 1v1ing veterans. I think it's fucking so much fun to do. It is I not like it. an efficient way to, to do your daily. It's one of the ones that takes probably some of the longest just because each fight does take a while. But it's one I would pick every single day because I enjoy doing that. I, th- I think their best bet, um, if, they wa- if their objective is to give, like, is, is keep this daily system, and if they want to get people more active in the zones, add this same format to the monthlies give us like the four they always like to give us and then give us two other options of do 60 events in Diesa Plateau or another option do 60 events in um, some other zone which I can't I, remember I just think like that's, that's a bit like far it, I, I think it'd be cool if um, maybe not 60 maybe 40 or well, something not, not but even it, that. Like, like over a month's time I'd say that imagine if um, the dailies were as Durin said which is 20 and pick any five you want but to get your monthly, you have to do all of those in different zones, and it actually tracks it, what what you've done in the past. So it says, yeah, like you have to have you have to do all of all, all like all twenty of them in at least five different zones. Yeah, and it can't be the same as you did last month. Not even before that. Just that one month it tracks your previous month. If you do new new set this month, that would be cool. Like as much, as much as I don't like doing underwater combat too much, especially doing twenty five of them, if I only had to do it once for the entire month and that counted, you know that 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 checked off something on my Not monthly. Even that. Like imagine I, it was twenty and pick five, so you can pick any five you want. So defeat oh, okay, three okay, veterans, yeah, yeah. but then it it tracks where you did those dailies for the month, and then you can't do this in the same place the next month to get those dailies or to get it to count for the monthly. So yeah. That, that would be interesting because you could still do the only five things you like in this game if there are only five, but just do them in a different zone. See, I'm a bit reluctant about that because I think because they added these lower rewards and by like direct thing, they're adding these rewards as cash value rewards because you can sell these for gold. Mm-hmm. So if you're making something that everyone is easily able to do and is easily motivated to and super accessible and it's like impossible not to do you're technically helping lowering the value of these rewards but see that's the thing though noob is that as it sits right now they're still incredibly easy to do and yeah. incredibly easily motivated to right, do. but like, some people don't everybody like, everybody don't who plays the, the game daily will do their dailies except, almost every day 
Chip Thurbleton and a bunch of Unless other people. It's, right, but that's a choice. It's not because they're hard to do. Thurby even said that himself. It's, it's not that these are just incredibly hard to do and that's why he stopped doing them. He stopped no, doing them because everyone, he doesn't personally have drive If this it. becomes even more accessible and everyone just can do it because it's, it's so much but fun. But that's the thing. Yeah, it's like not, the, the popular consensus of people is, is that this is an awesome idea and people are, are getting behind this. It's just for the scant few. It's like I see the meta of the, of the game and just like I'm just like I don't really feel like putting the time in for this even though – yeah, if people who, who did do the daily did rake in some money with it and then like stocked it away. They could work for whatever they're, they're wanting to get. Um, it It is nice. I, I'm sure people are working for it to get – a set of gear, working for it to get uh, the, the cat items, and this will help them out. It, or, or like die collections, or yeah. But yeah. that's the thing, though, though, Noob, is like, it's not, this change is not making it more accessible. It's going to be just as accessible as it ever was, because they're the exact same events we've always been doing. All they're doing with this one is they're giving player choice. Hey, and that, that equals accessibility. And, and so the question is, are they giving us it, full it choice, does. or are they giving us the illusion of choice? Mm-hmm. Um, so they're it, giving us some choice. They're not giving us as much choice as, as some of us would like because, like I said before, I think that they need to go all the way and just open up all 20 and let yeah. us pick from that. But we do still have choice. If, if, if there are 10 available for that week and one of them is underwater fighting, I have the choice of not doing that. Yeah, You, you have more like, likeness for there being 10 than 5 of finding 5 you want to do. Yeah, whereas now I'm looking at it and I see underwater combat and I'm like, fucking hell, mm-hmm. today's daily sucks. I and in, case, in I terms, terms of Noob's work. argument of it being easier and therefore undervaluing stuff, that's again, that's that's not their aim. As we've discussed, their aim is to get people going back to zones and doing old content again. Right. And also, but, the only thing that's really so being under, be undervalued at all by this change are dyes, and that's okay because it's good. just fucking dyes. Yeah. yeah. I am all for dyes being dirt cheap because yeah. they're, colors. they're really expensive right now. They're fucking and it's just yeah, cheap for colors. Yeah. Um, like that's the only thing being devalued by this. Everything else is like cosmetic stuff or ascended gear that you can only get this way anyway. Hmm. And you got to earn money, and how you earn money is by doing stuff. And this is, other this is all coming from a dude who do. doesn't do any of this, by the way. This is new Rama. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't do I, I any think, of I this? Think, we, we, I did this today. I, I did we've five dailies in a row this week. <laughs> we can revisit this after the updates happened and after all of our speculations have been like are turned into factor or uh, false. And so it's, it's, we will talk about this again. This is just like our our feelings towards this, either for or against. Uh, but we can we can move on to the main topic, oh, yeah. which dang, we're about two and a half hours in. Yeah. What was this topic about? Pause and take a break because the main thing was is Colin Johansson got on the forums and talked about how oh, yeah. um, the main thing that we've been talking about that is like oh the February update is going to be the world versus world update. There is no world versus world up. Dates happening in February. They're all it's getting pushed to March. July. Oh. Okay. Probably July. Who knows? We're just going to keep pushing it back. <laughs> Whew. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Colin Johansson. I, I don't know uh, what year. It, I'm not surprised at all. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little hurt about it because they kept saying, like, it's as somebody who I was on the fence about World versus World, and they not only said, like, hey, you're, we're putting this off, but they <laughs> hinted at the stuff that's going to happen. So we're we're in a wonderful um, situation where when the game came out, I stood on the hill and looked at the landscape that was World vs. World and I said, no, nah, I'm done. And Thurlton went in and said, you know what? I'm going to trek down <laughs> this hill. I'm going to go over that next hill. I'm going to go over the one over that. For a couple more hills, at least make sure that this meta and how this game is progressing isn't to be written off. And what, 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 it was, what it was <laughs> is I I broke down like, okay <laughs> – what are people doing? Yep. What are they doing that makes it effective? What aren't they doing? What are ways to do what people are not doing effective? Like, can can I do things that people are not doing? Can, and yes, can and I do still it be effectively? effective? Yeah. Um, pr- pretty much like a, the way I played was. Uh, it, it, I guess we'll get into the the things that are, that are changing. Uh, I played like the uh, asymmetrically. I went where people didn't. Uh, I, I hit stuff like I would go with twenty people and take a tower like a ghost. I love that. That's how I would love to play this game. It was if it was totally effective to do so. And and I play <laughs> like siege where if you're attacking something, you have people who are focusing at 
the inside, but the majority of people are focused outside because if somebody comes – like if somebody's coming to help, you need to be ready to stop them. And one of my biggest complaints is how a fourth of the class types and also the majority of people like who play this game – like who play World vs. World, Thieves and, and Elementalists – can very easily make their way past a line of people and just instantly get inside. Um, like one of my complaints is like, if a point is in contention, there should be some detriment for them getting inside because a, it rewards people who are actually defending, who are idling inside a point and are like actively defending. And it makes it people who are wanting to def- like defend a point from the outside have to organize and try and attack the attackers. Now, disrupt, for me, I listen to that and I say, I don't want to reward people who are idling in places because I think that's the dumbest way to play video games. But so, well, what's the actual issue here? Is it that things are too hard to take or is that things aren't changing enough, like hands enough? Or like, where do you see the issue in that? What's the core of this? Because only well, then can we decide what the but, gameplay needs to the things that they've announced are going to happen, and then I'll say the reason why defending something is completely pointless, except for maybe a quarter of the stuff in World vs. World. Uh, the things that they're they're bringing out are... Uh, let's see, let me bring, let me to, trying to read... He, he, what, what I love about this post is he intentionally... He, he, calls, uh, he calls it WVW for World vs. World. Right. He calls it Love. <laughs> And then he also calls it Dub V Dub. Damn straight. So he uses all three. He's covering all the bases. <laughs> he uses all of them. Uh, but uh, he, he's he going to. Th- the they're working on a progression yeah. system, uh, which are new ranks that you can earn uh, that will be visible to other players. Which is relatively exciting, uh, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's relatively exciting. Yeah. I'm curious if it's going to be um, just like eventually, a couple months from now, everyone will be of the rank of general. <laughs> or. To have it uh, like really, my favorite uh, model was what World of Warcraft uh, originally did with their battlegrounds. Was depending on what your performance was, there was going to be like the top five percent of the people playing were like the rank of general, and then like the people like then oh, a sliding scale system. Yeah, it, it was scaled. Like if yeah. you played your uh your your ass off for the first like for a week. And we're really good, really into it. You would get that rank, but if you slacked off and someone else yeah. worked more than you, they would get that rank, and you would go down to the second rank. See, sort of thing. That with PvP titles, they 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 do pretty well with it. In that case, where reaching top level is going to be, uh, you're going to be sweating blood to reach that top level. Yeah, but and I think I can say more people play World versus World than play structured PvP. But the thing is, it's um, I feel like they're going to do it in a way like. If you're not playing 24 hours a day, you're never going to hit top level, and but you're probably going to hit rank eight. So we're gonna, it's going to be like a weird thing where new players going to be bottom rank, but most like the majority of the players are going to be in the middle and like a really small top. So like a well, I, sort of weird. I realize that, but is there going to be a point, like I said, a couple of months from now, where yes, <laughs> that first month, the extremely hardcore people, hardcore people are going to get that, or at least get very close to that, and then as the game continues. More and more people are going to. No, no, the point what is, it saying takes months for that is, person to um, get there. It's the it's going to be a situation where it's going to be a scale so long that at the beginning yep. everyone will be no, from no. one to eight, yep. and by two months later, people will be. Some people will be fifty, and a year later, maybe some people will be sixty, and then the gradation will be so large that that will so slowly differentiate the players. So the player base will have to reassess what is a good rank in that. At the first month, maybe being rank 15 is totally badass. But a month, six months later, rank 60 is totally badass. But in the end, it's only this one continually sliding, like, huge scale, which is what they did for structured PvP. Like, I, no one's level 99 in structured PvP, for example. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, That's what's likely like, to happen. It's like, I, I understand that model. Yeah. I don't think that model is the best option. Oh no! Because... No, I don't. I don't think no. so at all. But it's it's yeah. the option that I think they'll go with because that's what they do elsewhere. Because it works. Well, it, I'd prefer Thurbleson's model, which is like the top five percent are generals, and everyone below that is something else and something else, and that changes depending on who is the current top five percent. I like that, but that's not good. Either. But I feel like so wait, you're, say, you're saying nice you're saying like top five percent is generals. Everybody else is 
like gradations I mean, of that, like lieutenant. So, well, well, no, it's like if, oh, okay. you're in the, if you're in top five percent, uh, if you're like ninety five to hundred, you are our, like the rank of general. If you're uh, ninety four to ninety, you're the rank of like commander. So you need to be yeah. able to maintain that rank. Not, not the blue icon commander, but just commander. And it, it breaks down a captain, all that, and then yeah, the base level is just crew. Yeah. Um, or in this and that like that's where the most inactive people, the people who are playing it more actively, will get to the rank of like grunt or yeah. squire or something but the main thing man. is you have to earn you have to you have to maintain that rank not just earn it once yeah, I, don't See, like I don't know i think yeah i think the problem the problem with that is like i don't want to play up to discourages general, players like, who can only like, maybe play love love for shorter chunks of time but this already there's no progression because in the pvp system i'm still rank 15 or whatever it is but and people right but the difference is You'll always be rank fifteen until yeah. you move yourself up. You can't Whereas go on a vacation. rank, you won't always be your rank because it's all based on what other people are you'll doing. Feel so you feel that you've lost something in Thermos. Right? Yeah, exactly. Because if you're there, like you rank up to general and then you go on a vacation, like progression. and then now you're no longer general is right. the big problem. Yeah. Either way, like if they want something like that just for the top anyway, whatever percent, then I can maybe on. understand that. But carrying it through the entire program, I don't think that works. But I think it's uh, likely that I, they're going to imitate the PvP. Yeah, we'll quickly go through these other updates, then we can keep talking about it. Yeah. Um, there are new World vs. World specific abilities and bonuses that you can earn as you rank up. So, yeah, it's like if you get to that rank, they're going to be emotes. Down, abilities are going to be emotes. I guarantee it. I'd like to think that let's say you get to the rank of commander, and then you fall back down. I'd like to think you'd still get those abilities and bonuses. You just wouldn't get the title of it. Like you wouldn't get the um, the E P rating. <laughs> But you'd still get all of the power that is associated with that. So you still have the e test. So what are they adding? Are they adding like abilities and stuff? What, what's happening? But basically, uh, as you rank up, probably with new Rama's model, uh, you will get new abilities and bonuses uh, for your play. Oh, and new those abilities won't be just emotes because they said that they will they will not be things that will make you hit harder or anything, but they will be things that will make you more useful. In a world versus world, emotes emotes make you more useful. I'm I'm guessing one of the options is you can carry more siege. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking too. Or carry more supply. That is yeah. that is so strong. If that, if that's a thing, that could be pretty and, dangerous because I mean it. I, I mean, it's, it, but that's the thing though. Is like it does. It's not something that you as a one person now suddenly do more damage. Well, well no, but like, supply it, it allows is your more side to erect siege faster. Supply is yeah. way more important than damage. Like supply is I'll, huge. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second and why. Like it's. Carrying more supply may not be the best issue, right. um, but I, like, I, 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 think it, I think it's more like um, you maybe get like a, a ability to erect like a, a guardian like shield over your dudes for like ten seconds or whatever. Like, How about like a cool abilities. emote that shows a golden spear? I wouldn't be surprised to see Wolf of Only abilities. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't think it's gonna be that. I think I think that it would be closer to like. Carrying more siege or, or not siege, uh, supply or um, maybe a large area wide uh, um, sprint bu- um, bu- buff that you can put on everybody or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think it's going to be something like a shield because I think that's that's too combat direct gameplay and would make you more powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, because like they said, they they specified like that you will not be. I mean, I guess they specified you will not. It will not be anything that le- allows you to do more damage. Yeah. But it will make you more useful. Use, useful. So mean? I mean, yeah. That's very little. It, very little. Like, of this is them specifying. Yeah. They 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 tend they tend to be very general, uh, open ended with these posts. But yeah, yeah. It, it's the other thing they're they're talking about is um, they they will continue to work to rebuild the way the game uh, loads models and compresses data. Basically, they're going to keep working on fixing culling because they realize it didn't uh, fix it this time around. Really? Yeah. So, what was? Is it still? Is it better at least? Um, it's it's a little bit better. Like they they said that the uh, low polygon player model was only the first change in this, but it's it's still an issue, and AOE stealthing is an issue as well when it comes to because people will just associate that with culling. Um, I don't know. That, right. That's that's one thing. Uh, they're also – this is something that's really on the fence for me is expanding reasons to be winning in World vs. World beyond the total weekly score, which to anybody who doesn't know, the people who play World vs. World and earn points, which uh, every tower you own on the tick mark, which is every 12 minutes or so, 
that gets totaled from all the different towers, depots, and keeps and all that towards a um, a progress bar. And as the bar fills up like experience bar, as you go through these levels, you get bonuses for the PvE server you're on. Bonuses like more health, a uh, chance to get uh, a crit when it comes to crafting stuff, chance for an extra gathering node. You know what? Uh, I, I've always hated that. Yeah, it's... It did really work because I'm fighting for people who aren't playing the game yeah. and I'm not directly contributing because I'm spending all my time in World vs. World. It's, like, uh, yeah, it, it's a derivation from like the Temple of Agents um, stuff from the first Guild Wars, which is based off uh, Hero, Hero's Ascent, uh, in that if you're, if you're a server when a bunch of Heroes Ascent, then everyone in the entire server would get benefits. I Sure, but I World vs. World... I, that new thing, which is like giving you It's nothing you that directly affects the way you're playing the game. Yeah, because self-interest is the primary form of motivation in any form of online game. And yeah. g- giving yeah. more people more reason to be have to have <laughs> self-interest would lead to better and more competitive gameplay. So, yeah. And 1% just doesn't uh, cut it. The other thing they're going well, through... And, and, and I think, real quickly, before we move on yeah. to the next one, right. um, I think that, uh, unlike... I, I actually disagree with her, but I think that expanding on reasons for winning... Um, and providing a strong incentive to specific objectives, blah, 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 short-term goals. Like, that's actually, I think, incredibly important because the current reward system is such a failure. I didn't say I didn't like it. I always said I was on the fence about it. Mm. Well, I'm saying, like, I disagree with you. I think it's going to be great well, because the current reward system is, is shit. To, to be on the fence, you have to have positives and negatives. What, 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 do, you, what do you feel the logic well, it's, is? Well, I mean, it, it, this really goes back to, and, and uh, I'll reference this a bunch, but what is winning mm. in World versus World? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it just owning the most points? In which watching case, a pie chart fill up uh, with the colors. If, if, you, if you're going to yeah. talk to me about <laughs> disliking how World versus World works in an intrinsic level, I'm with you all the fucking way. Wait, so. are, are we at the level where we're going to I mean, because uh, uh, we will talk about the whole metagame of it. But, uh, <laughs> well, we may. Uh, like hopefully we got points. enough time. I'm assuming it's just, yeah, the the most points you own, you'll probably get a tick for something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, provide additional ways for uh, Wovo players to earn various power progression rewards available <laughs> across the game currently in PvE for participating in World vs. World content. Do you guys understand what that means? Because I'm not quite grasping it. Power no. progression rewards based... Uh, not really. <laughs> Wait, so it doesn't isn't it obvious? It's just like if you do better World vs. World, you'll have temporary bonuses in your PvP, PvE experience, like crafting or whatever. I bet but we we already have that. So no, as in like on a yeah, personal basis, it sounds like it's on things? a personal basis, like for you as so a player. PvE or World vs. World. So it's going to give you more of a, more of a personal benefit as opposed to just server wide yeah. benefit. Yeah. So basically, you're going to see people who are these elitist dungeon dungeoneers go into World vs. World cap a few towers to get some bonuses and then quickly go into a dungeon so they have more health or more damage. Is that a bad thing? Oh. That sounds like a good thing. I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, yeah, is that what we think is going to end that up being? That could be part of it. Like, or just like, um, if you do that, you have... Like yeah, the, sure. The, like the, something as simple as magifying. Like well, okay. High Third, magifying. Let me let me, let me, let me, let me uh, tell you why that's not necessarily... I mean, it's not that it's not a bad thing, but why, from the flip side, as somebody who plays more PvE than Love Love, um, I have seen the opposite happen with the introduction of dailies and monthlies, where we've seen a lot of elitist Wubba people coming into dungeons wanting to, you know, get their monthly and dailies done, clearly not knowing what the fuck they're doing and oh, making yeah. them fail because of it. It's it's something that has me worried is the yeah, elitism of everyone. In the end, isn't that a good um, thing? Because then they're I mean, learning. For Arena, it's a good thing because you have them, you know, doing more content. But uh, on the short I, mean, I guess, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it is a good thing because they're learning it, how to it, do it, stuff. You know, they'll eventually learn how to do that and maybe learn an appreciation for a mode of the game that they generally otherwise consider to be easy yeah, mode. Because let's, let's be fair here. Elitists of each side think the other <laughs> one is easy. <laughs> elitists are jackasses, oh, yeah. just in that's general. Just let's just, just, just be clear. Yeah. Don't be elitist. Um, so, I mean, I, I was just saying, like, you know, as a counter to what they're Unless it's structured like, PvP it and hating on other. the AP8 guys, because that, that's fair. <laughs> um, so yeah i mean it's, it's already happening the other direction so it's not it's not it's not inherently terrible it's just it's a it's a hurdle that's going to unfortunately be something we're going to have to get over until those players do grow an appreciation for it or just decide never to do it and it's, that it's not worth it yeah um it it's it, uh, i am okay if that's what the idea is i was just unsure of oh, what, what that post meant right. 
Um, yeah, that sounds. That's what it sounded like. It sounds me. like it based on them saying power progression rewards. Yeah, so it'd be personal progression or like personal power ups based available on available across the currently PVE. Yeah, so well yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, um, and then they're going to try dealing with the queue and uh, the way like player population and demand. Uh, that's a weird one to me. I, like, well, because... first off, the queue issue for people who don't know the way queuing works is there's a soft system in place where. If people join in, like streaming in one at a time, everything's cool. Um, you will get a queue if, let's say, there's 100 people on a, a map. And by the way, the maps can hold uh, 166 per side, I believe. Let's say there's 50 people on. And then 50 more people join instantly. Like, let's say an entire guild's like, all right, we're running in at this time. I think at the cap of like, if 30 people join a map instantly, it will put a queue in. And it will wait five minutes before letting five more people in and then five more minutes for letting five more people in and th- something like that. Um, so that's, that is one side of the queuing issue. The other side is I, I don't think this is as big an issue, but when you get full maps uh, with 166 people on each side, um, rotating them through for people who are on, in, in Lion's Arch or whatever trying to get in. I saw this. Yeah, I, I saw this as just the general fact that you had to sit in queue for so yeah, long. Yeah, that, that was the. No, that's why I, I think this might be there, like because the, the soft queue was put in place because uh, in the early days of World vs. World, people found out this was a valid strategy to get fifty, sixty people together in this giant ball, and then just run around from map to map to map, taking all the points. Right. So they would see like there there'd be a soft amount on every map of like okay. There's a huge attack on this keep. We need you guys to come over here and kill all of them. So they come in, kill all of them, take a couple towers, and then move on to the next map. Right. And just this mega zerg that is running through. Yeah, just map map hopping, really. Yeah. It was the thing. And that was their way of sort of countering that. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way. Who knows? But right. Yeah. No, but what was weird to me about this was, like, like uh, Cynic said, it seems like the bigger issue really is, like, Having to sit there in queue when the map is full, yeah. waiting forever to finally get in. I've and it's like weird an to hour. me that they, like, yeah, it's, it's weird to me that like on the same post where they're talking about trying to get more and more and more and more and more people into Love Love, they're also saying like, yeah, we're also gonna work on the queue system so you don't have to sit in queue, even though we're trying to get even more people in, so we're doubly making this harder on ourselves. I, th- I think the best thing that for all of this. Um, that may that will definitely help them is if they put some transparency in there where you actually see on the top right. Let's say there's 523 people in front of you. Yeah, fuck yeah. That number yeah. will slowly start like start dropping. Always, yeah. always better. That, that way, yeah. That way, I know I can look at that and be like, oh, there's 500 people in front of me. Fuck this. I'll go do something else for now. Right. And also, or, the or like, or like say like you, there's 500 people in front of me. I have time to do my daily. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this and, one, and it's, it's, it's current situation from what I remember, it's it's just you are in a queue and doesn't give you anything. It just says you're you're in a queue. It doesn't even it doesn't even show anything on your screen letting you know that you're still in queue. Uh, uh, well, that's yes, not a it, crown. It sort of does. There's an hourglass okay. next okay. to the World Wolf symbol on the top okay. left. Yeah. Okay, that 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 must be fairly new then. Uh, well, it's just not very obvious. It's not very obvious at all. It's just a little icon. Okay. Um, but I, yeah, I'd vastly prefer if I actually gave you your fucking number. Always better. Or even, or even something as simple as like mouse over the web web button and it tells you you've been in queue for five minutes. Estimated times about fifteen minutes. Oh, estimated times always useful. Just something that simple. Yeah, but yeah, I, I guess from here that's pretty much all the stuff they've talked about uh, announcing. We're going to discuss about why we like you guys think this would work and why I think it won't work. And then Cynic I, I, and Noob are going to be the people who are like, "Hey, we're dealing with a persistent world." This is the issues that they are going to come up with. Um, Wait, so what? What do you? What do you? Which? Which? Which part are we talking about? What? What are we? Are you just going down the list? Because I'm fine. I'm, I'm not really sure. If you want to go down the list, so yeah, I we, we can just talk about the problems with world we have a list versus world in general. And I thought I was going to go with like what I think the problems of world versus world are and how it can be better. Yeah, and like, and, and if we think that this is on the road or even a, a step <laughs> into fixing some of these issues or. If like it, 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 and also if you guys feel if the issues I'm going to present are valid ones, um, it, let's it, do it. Yeah, like th- things I find are like it, it's there, there's really doesn't seem to be like an end game to this. Which if they add a progression system that might solve it, but they're they're like the 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 maps I've seen are there's no reason to defend. 
because uh, apart from one map or what one tower rather, and that's the uh, the Briar Tower in the Borderlands, every tower can be tread by something else. And by that I mean they can be trebbed by uh, the trebuchet can be placed inside a tower where no one else can hurt it. Like you have to actually take down the tower or that keep to stop them from trebbing it. Um, yes, you could say, oh, I'll just build a treb and shoot it down. If the person who already has the treb set up sees that they're making a treb, they'll just shoot it down. Um, and then we get into the argument of um, elementalists and – well, mainly elementalists, but Guardians also can apparently stop trebuchet shots, which ReNet hasn't said if that's like an exploit, something they intended. Actually, how about we do this the other trebuchet way around? Shots. How about we do this the other way around? Because the, the crazy thing here is um, I don't play I, – I looked at the landscape war as well and decided not to go on. New Barama doesn't do anything that I can see. Um, what? And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and Duran has some, some ideas. the only guy who hasn't played Guild Wars 2 this week. Yeah. yeah I mean like it's it's – I feel like I need to explain. Why yeah, I, I want to hear what because comrade, you but are the guy who talking. knows what the who who knows why um, you believe what the main. I know a lot are. about world versus world guys. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear what you believe the problems with world versus world are. Where you expected it to be, where it is now, because then it'll give me an idea of what to say in re- response. Because I definitely have things to say. I just I think this is an easy way to do it because there's definitely things that you've spouted there that I I had no idea were even problems. So. What, what's your opinion on World vs. World? Um, I think World vs. World is a great thing for people who just want to run in there and attack stuff with no intention of defending unless they get to a point where they're, they've like are the dominant force in the map, in which case it's very easy to defend if you know how to. Uh, but even then, it's just like the best option still is to run around in a pack of 50. So the the crazy thing here is like when we were in the betas, um, which is a long time ago now, I guess. Um, yeah, the the coolest thing about that, that was before was, the World War. Wow. The coolest thing about that was because um, it's in some ways it's very similar. The maps were always full, and there was a bunch of people playing, and there, there were definitely zergs and people running around and taking stuff. Um, but the major difference back then was you didn't have a ingrained society of people who were a full-time world versus worlders and you didn't have the whole thing where people camped on points and that kind of stuff like you things were more mobile and fun but because when shit got real like it wasn't a situation where we it's hard to vocalize it people met at the right places and were there at the right times for fun to happen that's all i can say and that consistently I, happened I, I throughout think this the thing was is back in the betas it was reset every day yeah. With the the weekly setup, it resets every Friday, right. which that Friday is – at least for Expand, every map is full queue. Right. It's very active. Like everyone's in there for the next like four to five hours. Right. I, I, yeah, that could be very much a part of it. 20. And like people don't – like after – this is another thing that is the issue. Um, for the majority of the towers is uh, after those towers have been like completely fortified – um, especially like the, the the home ones, the natural ones. There's not a big motivation to to attack it because it's very risky. You are uh, a, a quick response from the enemy, uh, or like they'll just siege you down even as you're trying to attack from another point. Right. And so it's like, why do we want to attack this? We'll just attack these same four towers over so and over. That just sounds like a huge like the the part where you can be sieged from friendly their their enemy fortifications which aren't the ones you're attacking sounds like a, a massive issue just in general because on the one side it was really fun like back when we discovered that um early on the wolf days it was awesome because you realized that you could assault essentially by having an adjacent tower which is really cool like if you had a trebuchet on the top floor of some of those towers you can take down some of those walls which is which is awesome but on the other side of that like your your response to that it being impossible if the defenders have that tower and there are people camping there and no, like, just people waiting for stuff to happen in that area, you will get trebbed if you try to assault an adjacent tower. That sounds crazy. I, I didn't even realize that that was an issue when I first started playing World vs. World. That, that, that definitely sounds like something that can halt attacks. Like, is it, is it become a situation where it's just too difficult to assault the vast majority of the maps? Like, has it become just a couple of towers that everyone cares about and everything else people just leave alone? 
It's not really that as much as just like uh, I'll, I'll pose an example for the Borderlands before I get into the Eternal. But what happens is um, there, there's like uh, the Borderlands, as people who don't know, is it's like they're a cut and copy paste for every map, and uh, so all, like each server has their home home map. There's the Citadel up top with two towers, uh, and then the Garrison Keep. Uh, those two towers, if you lose them, can be retaken by a breakout, or if not, they are right out of one player's spawn, like the the one team spawn. So they're going to just be this constant flow, and that's eventually going to get retaken. Right. So it's it's very fun to attack that, to just run up with and drop a ton of catapults, and just make the do- like the wall walls HP drop, and then get out of there. It's not that fun to defend because uh, if you die, you have a very long run back to get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as you were to cap that point, it becomes a paper tower, which yeah. means it would be very easy to take back. Yeah. There's going to be a majority of people are going to be trying to uh, just constantly waving against it. So most people don't like defending that. Mm-hmm. Going back to the southern towers, uh, outside of each each southern spawn, there's a tower which can be done by a breakout. Um, and then there's a keep next to each one. The right side uh, is, is called like it's, it's the Lake Tower, and it's got the Hills Keep. There is a point on the Hills Keep, which is very far away up on this hill, where you can put a trebuchet. Right. Um, and only three professions can hit it, and if they do, they're going to be under constant attack from the people yeah. on inside the keep uh-huh. uh, with air carts and everything. It's a very hard thing to do unless you have a crap ton of people. Right. Uh, and if you do have a crap ton of people, you might as well just attack the keep. But if you just take that tower, there's a person on, who can get on that trebuchet and knock down all the walls and the and the door. Yeah. And I've actually I've been in groups where we like we will still hold that thing with no walls <laughs> for hours on end. That's pretty cool. But that it's like only it, it it is fun when right. the enemy is trying to attack in mm-hmm. equal numbers. Right. Which is a rare occurrence. Like it, it's very much there's a lot of fun things to do, but you have to wait for the right elements to come into play. I think that's I think we just struck in the core of it. Um Yeah, and so like I said, it's unless you have that composition, most people aren't going to try defending that lake lake tower because right. it can be taken down by one guy. But it's just like rewinding there. What you said there and what I've said in the past and everything kind of comes down to the one point which is um the core of it is, now that I really think about it, if I, if I was to crystallize it, in the betas, you never had to wait for something awesome to happen. Something yep. was always happening. It, it seems that War vs. World has become more about waiting, whether it be waiting for enough people to get together to a soldier power or waiting for a particular combination of classes so you can take out a particular trebuchet in an adjacent tower or... or the, just so, so many like waiting for freaking things to build when you've recently captured a tower so it doesn't stay papery. Like it, it just sounds like Wolves World has become about waiting, and that that's definitely an issue just for any form. Well, of it's play. it's it's the defense side of it has has become about waiting, and the attack side has been you have to attack very quickly because if you don't, you're likely to fail. Right. Um, and, and 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 quickly summarizing what I said about the Borderlands is. Most people will just end up fighting for the bottom left spawn, which takes you out of Briar, which, like I said, is very defensible. That depot is very defensible, and it's very easy to take that keep. Right. Uh, but then that results in a one versus one fight, which the majority of people, uh, d- most of the time, the home server will win because more more people are going to spawning be spawning into their home borderlands than at enemy borderlands. Mm-hmm. And so most people don't like fighting in the Borderlands because it ends up being this one versus one fight. Yeah. So most people go to the Eternal. Um, Overall, what I'd love to see them do is to add um, more ways to drag out attacking these uh, points, like uh, attacking a keep. Uh, And and I'll explain a little bit about uh, an easy way to do that later on. But then also I'd love for them to add more fights or more potential for fights just in the world away from towers. Like um, one thing I was thinking about is if you can make bridges destroyable and you uh, like, oh, you could cool. let's say that uh, if you owned a keep a nearby bridge was also under your control. And so the enemies like could destroy it uh, to sort of hamper you or you could destroy it. And then you had to do some event to get it to be rebuilt by either side. So would you say that, that your main issue Going forward now is that 
things have just become too rote. Like you want to see changes. Like is is this like bridge being like destroyable thing or moving fights away from towers and so on and so forth? Is that just a desire for change, or is it something that you actually find is a is a design flaw with the current system? Um, it's something I like to see like change just as. It's it's fun attacking a tower. Most people don't end up attacking a keep because it's usually fortified, and so it just becomes this: let's run around and attack stuff, or join the people who are attacking the gates of Stone Mist. Um, so I fear that's a problem. That I mean, it's whenever I'm in map, the most common thing I, I see that people say is that they're like they're asking questions or whatnot, but the, usually it's where is the Zerg at? <laughs> and I hate just that question. To, People who want to just ball up, follow a fancy blue icon, mm-hmm. not listen to anything, and just attack stuff. Because and, like, see, that actually – that brings me to my, my one – like one of the things that I'm confused as to why you think some of these changes are not good for Wubba because some of these changes like are straight up going in – like are, are intended to solve that, to give – people a little more of like a structure but not not make it structured um to well well get like give them things to do objectives to do i'm i'm no i'm i'm well apart from providing stronger incentives for specific specific, God, specific? Bless America. yes that word objectives <laughs> they haven't detailed what those objectives are and so that's why i'm just assuming take tower right they haven't they haven't detailed what they are, but I mean they said you know for specific objectives, um, additional short term goals, like like what they're looking at is the minute to minute in Wubbuff. I mean, because if, as it's right now, you're right. Minute to minute is follow the Zerg if you are in Wubbuff for the most part. If the short term um, goal was like you got a ton of more XP money or whatnot for defending a point in the first minute of its attack, that would be, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. That, yeah. that, that would motivate people to defend. If they gave you like points for defend, like if, if you got, it's also more- pretty shitty because again, I really hate um, awarding people from camping. Yeah, just staying in one place because those are people who. Yeah. Well, that's the thing themselves. though is it would be it would be like you know you you did that thing and then now you get a new goal. Your new goal now is to maybe okay you know assault a tower or or to you know um, take down a, a passing doliac or something like that. Basically. The idea being, what I'm assuming and what I'm hoping these are, the idea being is to like incentivize players, motivate players to move around the map and do things. That's something else I'd love to see change is with Doliaks because you could have 20 people defending something, defending a, a Doliak, and if a thief comes up, and yeah, he can just kill it with stealth and you can't even stop him. You could AoE like crazy, but he'll just back off and then hit it again and again. If they changed it to okay, you have 10 minutes to get this Doliac to a base, and it takes him normally seven minutes. If you speed him up, it takes, like, six. But if he dies, you can res him. Yeah. But yeah, if, I, I don't agree, because, like, as soon as that Doliac goes down, boom, failed. Yeah, if he doesn't make that, just, he, he turns around. Uh, let's say the supplies have gone bad. It's food or something. I don't know. Because but to I be think clear, would, like, for the thief, that is an incredibly fun experience, so you don't want to take that away. But yeah, like that would be a fun experience. Yeah. The thief has to perpetually stop these guys from attacking his Doliac, yeah. and it would it would be fun. Yeah, the idea the being defenders. like the, like once you know if if that thief has managed to take them down, then now your goal is push them back far enough so we can get this Doliac back up. Yeah, but exactly. for the most part, you don't see people defending Doliacs because a thief can just like one guy can stop them. Yeah, and so and, and, just, and to be fair, it's not even just thieves. Like there are definitely other classes that can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and people as def- an Ellie, I can go in there and kill it really quickly and get out. And, and people don't defend points because it's usually five versus 60. Um, yeah. Like if they can make it so you can quickly set up a defense or like I would be OK with people running in and I'd be OK with the five versus uh, 60 like or uh, yeah, five or 60 thing. If they added a new siege that was pretty much just a barricade. Oh, that'd that, be cool. So, that couldn't be yeah. taken down by it, it, it can't be hurt by siege. Um it can only be hurt by it, it was it was especially susceptible to players auto attacking it. Oh, and that AOE would be cool. And, and with the current model of how siege works, is if you place like three or four right next to each other, it makes a buffer so you can't place any more near it. Like you have to place it ten yards away or something. Mm-hmm. You could only re- like use these in a choke point area, and you'd have to space them out after a certain amount. 
Um, I think that would provide more incentive for like, you know, it's it, all right, we're getting attacked by this point. Let's start making defenses at this choke. And, yeah. try and like it, it, it brings zoning into the, your defense. It's yeah. I w- when I was like first introduced to world versus world, I was promised something that was going to be like a um, battle of Helm's deep. Right. It's not, it is, it is more a um, Zerg versus door or Zerg makes a ton of siege in a smart manner yeah. far away, takes the wall down and then just, kills the boss and runs off and what makes me so sad about that is that for some sometimes it was helm's deep and it was glorious but it was a lot of fun like i love fighting keeps i would love to see that drag off like drag on more where uh yes when you take like when you kill the keep lord that takes over the whole keep but you get rewarded for taking down the wall and killing the lieutenant in the first section of the keep Mm mm-hmm like if it like was progressional rewards. Yeah. If they like stretch it out. So as you're trying to take this keep, it is this like hour to two hour long thing. And with tangible rewards for each step, like, oh, we didn't take the keep, but we got rewarded for getting halfway there. But the enemy beat us back and revived their lieutenant or something or killed the enemy. Yeah. But my, my... Make, it, make it more make it more of a power struggle than it currently is. It's it just seems like there's a very small window of you can go back and forth and take this stuff. Right. But in on the larger scale, like I'll I'll take I'm red team, I'll take Ogre Watch uh, Tower, but that's just gonna get tripped down from the keep and it's gonna get tripped down from uh, Stone Mist. So there's really no point in defending Ogre Watch. We're just going to wait till the wall's down and then charge in there. I, the the only issue I have there is for all the things you've listed there, still give advantage to the Zerg. Like if yeah. if there was something which can only be defeated by auto attacking, that the Zerg would win. If, if there's like progression rewards, the, the, the Zerg will still win. Like they, they will overwhelm the defenders. Like if you made it so that um, it, it will only accept X amount of damage per second or something. Hmm. It, it, there is a timer in which it falls down, like a time, like timed defense. Like, like, yeah, I think there was like a game recently. I forgot what it was. Which um, or defenders to make a last stand and make like just a crap ton of air carts far off, and as the enemies are just breaking down these barricades, you're pounding them with uh, air cart fire or something. I don't know. But My just, Skype is it, doing a weird thing where if I'm talking, I can't hear you, Thurbleton. It's weird. Oh, sorry. That's no, weird. I, no, it's just I hate, I hate Skype sometimes. <laughs> um, third, real, real quickly, like while we're on the subject of, of siege, um, going back to your complaint, your, don't get me wrong, valid complaint about um, uh, Trebs being able to hit other like towers from within or whatever, uh, or hit keeps from within towers, however it works. Adjacent towers, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you think like I, we were talking about it in Mumble, and we were talking about ways of like reducing the range on on the Treb so that it didn't work? So somebody somebody else had 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 brought up maybe increasing the map size, but I think that that brings in way too many problems Yeah, it, uh, it, with, it, with other balance issues. The design of the map bugs me, but because yeah. redoing the whole map is way too... It's gonna, it's, yeah, it's way too much work. It's way too many resources for Arena to put down. They could alternatively just slightly lower, instead of 10,000 unit range, make it 9,000 unit range. Yeah. That way you aren't seeing this completely one-sided Trev fight. Um, but... I was also thinking, like, while you were talking about it um, a, a few minutes back, what what would you think about instead um, just make Trebs not able to be built within towers or within Yeah, keeps? that's what I was going to suggest, but I thought, because I like, didn't know Like, if, if, you if you're being assaulted by a Treb that the attackers are assaulting you with, instead of being able to build the Treb where it essentially can't be hurt, why not force the attackers to find an area outside of the keep to build their treb to try to take down that other treb if, if they like want to go down that there's path. Own, like is they, there's sufficient stuff in there for a keep's defense there, there's mortars there's cannons and there's oil pots yeah. they, they don't need Be, to have because, trebs in there it's i mean like i am a okay with that um but it's still very easy to just run out there kill the enemy trebuchet maybe die or maybe just wipe out the the defenders and then run off um if they had something like the barricade I would be one hundred percent. Well, no, no. Allowing I'm not saying. Troops. I'm not saying instead of the barricade. I'm just saying as specifically as as a way of fixing the issue with Trebs being basically invincible within a, a keep and able to assault outside. I think an easy fix would be just don't don't let Trebs be built inside of keeps or towers. 
Like yeah. make them make them like force players to build them in places where they are also just as vulnerable as the enemy. I I am all for that. I think if they did that, they would get a lot of backlash. Um, and, and, and yeah, but is it is it warranted backlash though? I mean, that's the thing you got to look at. Any change they make to it that makes it harder for people who want to do things easily, they're going to get backlash on. Well, and, and like all of this has to go in the context of um, ArenaNet said that. World versus world is not going to be balanced. Right. They yeah. Never went, I mean, I think yeah. Nobody they, can expect they, it. To be. They never went further in depth on that. Of like, is the fact that you can have a trebuchet inside of a, a keep taking down a tower and there's nothing you can do about it apart from having like a really skilled group of defenders and elementalists uh, to stop the trebs from hitting your treb as you take theirs down? Like that is the one option, and that is a high skill, uh, high coordination counter, which not most people do. Um, I, I was losing my train of thought. No, but okay. Well, I think there's, I, I, I think there's a difference between like, is that, is that it won't be balanced and still doing things to fix stuff that is cl- clearly an issue. Yeah. It, and like, I agree. It's not going to be balanced. Renet, uh, Renet believes is a unbalanced system or by, the, by unbalanced, do they just mean you're going to run into fights that are four V 50. Well, I think it's more so like not not just you're going to run into fights that are four v fifty, but more more importantly, they are not going to do class balancing based around Wub Wub. That's never going to happen. I think that's more so what what Arena is getting at with this. Yeah. Um, but with the actual like Wub Wub specific stuff, like Siege, there's no reason they can't work towards maybe not making it 100 percent balanced, but fixing things like an incredibly powerful Siege machine being invulnerable. Or at least very, very hard to counter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that. That is, the, uh, I think, the number one issue why I've been like, uh, why I've got, like, gotten out of World versus World is because it's just whoever owns SM owns six towers or at least has very easy access to attacking them. Yes, the local defenders are going to retake it, but it's just going to be this back and forth on one tower. Um, mm-hmm. and, yeah. And, and it seems like the current I, system has. Um, essentially set up a very stable but not necessarily fun metagame. Another option I'd love to see, and this is a, I agree this is definitely a radical thing, but I'd like to see them just get rid of towers. That would be cool. Because the most fun I've had, actually the most fun I've had uh, in World vs. World is when I, like, th- these past few weeks when we've been red team um, is retaking our tower from the enemy. Or not an our tower, our keep. Right. I, I I would say, like getting rid of towers would be okay, only if they were replaced with something that is compelling. But like just simply getting rid of them dramatically reduces the fun of PvP or of blah blah because there's just there's gonna be less things to do there. Yeah, but it, it, um, having less it, things to do will also um, force people to congregate more. So it yeah, could people be are gonna focus more solution. on these massive sieges of. Stone mist in the th- in the three keeps or the three keeps in the borderlands because uh, the idea of the varying types of objective in World vs. World has been the fact that you can take them on with a specific amount of people. Like for example, um, the the progression from a um, supply ca- supply dump or whatever you call them a supply a tower and depot, a keep depot. is yeah. a supply depot it's a tower and a keep is that you could assault you, their idea for it was you can assault a supply depot for five people. You could assault a keep like a tower with twenty people, and you can assault a keep with fifty. But what they didn't realize when they made that system is that so many people play World vs. World that you generally have enough people in the map to always for that churn to continuously and always be happening. And in addition to um, it being more and more difficult, like those bars are raised. You, even in a lot of cases, you can't take right. a supply with five people anymore. And that's why that's why I'm saying like I'm not saying like replace towers with something that is very similar to towers. Mm-hmm. I'm saying don't simply remove content from the game. Like if they're going to remove content, they need to replace it with something that is actually compelling and adds something to love love. Oh yeah, like now, I said, that was even a, something a radical as, suggestion. Well, even something as simple as you know maybe smaller keeps in those places instead of towers and maybe that'll do something or just simply more keeps like add more things like like you don't want to remove content from love web actually that that's just another Thomas problem has that's more um weight to it because if you do remove because again like a lot of the design 
established what was established because they didn't expect this many people to be World vs. World. And I think the strength of World vs. World is those larger fights, not the smaller ones. Because the smaller ones just become invalidated because all the work you put in as a five man team is undone in ten minutes by the next five man team. Or I mean, team to, to some extent, I agree. But I mean, you see the direction they're already going. They're adding more and more smaller, um, smaller Objectives. groups stuff to do in Love Love. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're going they're going so far as there's there are going to be things that you can do, or if not already, things that you can do as a single player to. Oh. Right. Effect Let me talk about smaller well, groups. Here, here's <laughs> uh, okay. A couple th- things I'll quickly run off. Um, first, first thing is uh, I'd love to see uh, two thing two things added. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, if you were to escort a yak, uh, you'll still get like an event credit for it, but you don't get any reward. I'd love to see that model added to if you do not have supply, a little achievement pops up at depots to collect ten supplies. So people understand they're they're naturally teaching them. You need to go to depots and get supply, and that mm-hmm. just that'll just pop up. Collect ten supply, and that like closes when you get uh, ten barrels or whatever. The yeah. other thing I'd like to see is that same thing added to when I throw down siege, it pops up on the mini map of like build build the siege, and it, it progresses like okay, this is how many supply need to be done, and everyone gets the uh, uh, achieve or the event completion, but no reward. It's built. That or I maybe think... not even maybe not even an event completion for that, but maybe something as simple as when you drop a siege, your character yells out that you've dropped whatever the siege is, and the map automatically pings for everybody in the in the area where that siege has been dropped. Yeah, I, I think it's. I'm still getting people who don't understand what supply is and don't carry it, and along that <laughs> same line of, you you think people need to carry more supply on them. I think they need to have supply depots offer more supply at a base value instead of 100. Because if I'm running around with a group of 30 and we're trying to take towers, um, we have to hit three depots in order to get everyone to have supply. And that, yeah. is, that is a decent amount of, like, that is an effective amount of, like, 25 to 30 um, people to get the right number of offensive siege as well as protective siege like error cards to to fend off attackers or people defending, and so you need a, you need a lot of stuff to do an effective siege. Opposed to let's drop go. six rams and hopefully we can take the door down before the enemy responds. Because I, I got it, guys. New love love ability supply drop. Is that class specific or is that one of the abilities that they're they're going to offer? No, I think that should be one of the new abilities they offer with the Love Love stuff they're doing. When like they're talking about you know, adding Love Love specific abilities, like that would be a great one. Just supply drop, like allow me to drop a, th- a crate that has fifty supply in it or something. Yeah, I mean it's it's. I think that's a, a nice option, but that'll get people to like, oh, we like you need to make sure you bring this if you're coming to join us in this fight. If not, like you need to get that skilled up, and it might lead to elitism. Act- uh, as, as a tactical question, Doubleton. Um, is that a op- is it an option to just grab the supply you need for everyone you need from a, a long standing um, currently owned keep by your your party because you can use um, your own supply. Can that's yeah, you can do that's, that. that's uh, like frowned upon in like nine out of ten cases where it's the the only time I think you should be taking supply from a a, a keep or a large point is when um, it's very high like very high amount like it's still in the uh, 1500 or above yeah no one's directly attacking it but isn't that the uh, case for a lot of the like well when, when i used yeah. to play that, that that was the case for a lot of the, your, your home um area games. yeah for, for a lot of the time it's okay to grab it's right after you've taken it and it's doing an upgrade yeah then it, you should not <laughs> it's frowned upon to take so it. do not take that fucking supply and jackass. you should definitely use it all up when you're getting sieged yeah um, but i mean like that's that's I don't know. Yeah, that, that's that, neither that's... here nor there. But I think we're, we're dancing around a lot of points of where we, we find World vs. World a little bit. Or at least Let's we want some Daisy. change. I can compare it to Daisy. Well, yeah, it's, it's what I'm curious about for you guys to contribute is, like, this is a persistent model. I almost wonder if it would be better if they had something like WoW did with Alterac Valley, where it's grand, it's a big map, but it's it's going to be a, uh eight-hour match. Because that that will get all three time zones of uh, American, uh, European, and Oceanic their own more or less time slot of oh uh, this starts and for the next eight hours you will try and like compete for like to get as many points as possible and at the end of it they're like the winners declared. Well, I mean, uh, let's, let, to be fair, 
that's not really a direct comparison to All Track Valley because the only reason All Track Valley would run so long sometimes was because of inherent issues with the map. Well, yeah, it, it was the because there were so many things to do, but when they dumped it down to there's two directions and there's like six things to do instead of 50, people, like the matches went much, much faster. Um, yeah. So which, which but I'm, I'm just thinking like, like the eight hour match thing though, like the problem with doing that, like I think the reason why they went with the, the kind of persistent week long love love as opposed to the eight hour match thing is, is as a player coming in and doing, let's, let's say playing it for half an hour or something. Um, you don't really get the feeling of, of the, the benefit of the win for not being there. You feel like you need to be there for like the full fucking eight hours to really get your benefit out of it. Whereas for the week long thing, it's more of like, it feels that persistence makes it feel like something you can just kind of hop in and out of whenever you want to. Which, yeah, but the downside of that persistence is by design, they want to make it so that it's like, I I almost say like most of the time, nothing exciting happens because it's built to sort of like, we have the breakout events. We have these massive keeps that are very, very hard to take. So, like, like, Grant, I'm not on during prime time, so I'm not there if we try to make attempts on these big keeps. But my time slot, not much happens. We'll run around and hit a few towers or try to respond to stuff. And I've been doing that every day for, like, I don't know how many months. And that's gotten old. And so um, with games like Arma, well, Ar- is Arma a persistent world? I know Daisy yeah. is. Uh, Daisy, some uh, servers run persistent, like, it's like that, that's shows. the model yeah. of. Well, See, think, this is this is what I got to lead into my question. In your opinion, what is the magic number for enjoying World versus World to the, the fullest? Like, for me, it was like under ten people. people. Under ten people, right? Yeah. So it's the same with Daisy. Daisy, the the magic number is first make sure you're having fun at the individual level when you're running alone. That's very important. And then secondly, at the squad level. So under ten people, it's a close close group of people you normally run with, and. In my opinion, re- like getting that magic number means everything in even like big world versus world games, because the point is what they should really be doing is having that individual doing whatever he wants in within that group and that group achieving their objectives, but within like a greater framework. So a cog within a gear within a machine. How does, I think that how would does be a lot of fun. Daisy do that? Huh? Well, how the does, point of Daisy, Daisy is has a massive map. There's no machine that is up yeah. to the cog level or yeah. there's up to the gear level. So when you have a sc- – but the thing is because where it's called World versus World has a lot more people and it's – I think my problem with World versus World is it lacks organization and structure. And the only way to build that is between players out of the game. So yeah, World, that, That's or, the other annoying thing is the squad system is completely right. shite. And the thing is <laughs> uh, when yeah, World versus yeah. World – like if, if they improve that – Right. I think that would definitely benefit coordinated group on a 20 to 30 man level instead of everyone balling up in this 50 man zerg that can go from 50 to 10 very quickly. Because within that zerg, there's no coordination amongst the zerg members other than let's follow where the zerg goes. Yeah, follow, follow and, the blue icon like right. a, a fly to a zapper. I think the best way yeah. to do it is small squads that end up building up to a big zerg, but they're coordinated. And that's like the. the I think they should build it more around having people run around in groups of 10 or less and then maybe build those into bigger groups rather than going from top down. Because at this point, it's really just top down. It's follow the blue dot icon rather than let's build our squads and then take orders from certain people. And I think because it lacks that sort of organization, there's no focus to really what you're doing unless you're connected with other people. And I think and that's my biggest problem with World versus World. Here's and something that the biggest like, faults are. Taking from what uh, Noob said, as well as cause, like, I would love for it to be small group thing of like groups of five to ten, uh, several groups of them like working for this greater reward. Um, but like, if you wanted that in a Daisy fashion, you need a much bigger map because the maps right now, I think Borderlands is a bigger map than Eternal Battlegrounds. <coughs> um, Speaking of it has less to do with the fucking map than crazy the ideas. Um, <laughs> I, 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 okay, so what do you guys think of this? This is this is one of the crazy ideas I had earlier in this episode. But I, I, I kind of dismiss, dismiss myself as crazy. Um, what if World vs. World wasn't just one set of maps? What if 
it was an internal best of three in that there were three versions of the entire set, Borderlands and um, Eternal Battleground. And so you have three servers fighting over those three maps, but that is stacked three times. So you have to win two out of the three or a worst case, if everyone gets one or in, in, if one person gets all three, whatever, but there's actually nine maps in total each just stacked in one another, and the entire the entire thing adds to the victory condition. Because will... the question so you're basically is, saying more maps. What does that maps, change really? for the average person playing World vs. Because what will, that'll change, it'll it'll reduce it the amount of concurrent players out. on a specific map by a third, which will break everything down to how it was in pretty much the betas, where you but wouldn't you, have so people. Are you saying three of the same maps? Well, yeah, just like the you same thing like as now, but stacked three you, times. You look at, yeah, if you look at now, there's there's Eternal Battlegrounds and three. Um, there, there, there's a home borderlands for each contributor in yeah. EB. Yeah, um, you're saying that times three. Yeah, so essentially, so you're talking about for a single matchup between three players. servers. Exactly, I would be so okay with that, except it would end up being, let's get into two. a ball of fifty exactly. and take everything, yeah. but you and then couldn't. these ten defenders are going. But you couldn't because you have to win two of the three to be the un- uncontended victor of the whole week set. You have to actually own, like, you have to be the, the highest scoring in two of the three of the stack. To win the whole week set, so if one, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't feel like the I don't feel like the solution is less players in Love Love. I think it is. Like the I, 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 uh, I think that I, I think I think instead of less players, I think it should be better better methods of communication and coordination. Right, and it, there's no infrastructure for coordination in Love Love. It's simply and, and that's part of the reason. That's yeah, that's part of the reason why I think that, that you know these systems that they are potentially adding in that could motivate players to do certain things will help a lot with adding like I, like I said before not structure to what blah, blah, but just things for people to to follow and to do as opposed to just following that blue dot like you know like they're described well and and it's something else that is sort of bounces off all of all of our uh ideas and and it's cynic i think i think you'd be the best to like shoot this down is uh, just because you don't like people idling if I, like if we're attacking a keep, there's no, like there's very little motivation to after the outer door is gone and ever like a, after the inner door has been breached, mm-hmm. um, to sort of stop people from coming in behind us and clearing any siege we placed. The main motivation is to keep pushing inward to where the keep lord is and to where that reward is. Right. Um, basically, the saying is if like if I'm one of like ten people who are at the door. Uh, the outer door, st- like fighting the people streaming back in who have respawned from nearby and are running back in to try and help, like stop them. I'm going to end up dead and with no reward, or I can just follow the zerg pushing inward and cap the keep. Uh, do you think it'd be like uh, after you've taken the outer door, like a circle appears of like defend this point? If you stay in this point when the keep is captured, or if you stay in the point long enough you during the, same the attack, in the keep. yes. Um, I think I think if they spread out through like if they if you were nearby contributing when a, a point was taken, you will get, you will get the same reward as if you were in the uh, final room capping. Do you think that's a good model, or do you think that can be abused by people who are farming? Uh, what do you think about that? It will definitely like- be abused by farmers, but the current thing is mm-hmm. also abused by farmers because if you if, if you see the X's on your map, it's the cross swords in your map, and you, you see them at a keep, you can you just pop in and see what's happening. And if they're taking the keep, you just kind of it's 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 a Zerg thing. Like, no, I, how many people are just running around the map aimlessly, aside from um, far, like straight up farmers? They're, they're... Yeah, I mean, like that. That's another thing. Of people have said, well, why not just get rid of the orange swords? But then you get people who are like more going to be asking, where's yeah, the where, Zerg? Where, where do you? Yeah. Do? There's no communication other than that blue icon, and that might have ten people. That might have fifty. Yeah, I, I like okay. I like I think, the idea of like mat, like um defending your entrances. If you're keeping a keep, I think, yeah, I think one thing that would help a lot, really, though, is is and this is kind of the case across the game, but I think in in Wevo of a change would, um, it would benefit Wevo the most is making it harder to get that gold level completion when doing events, because then an event like Derb is talking about, idlers won't get shit out of it, right? Because you you would be required to actually fucking do something, and and. I, like I said, I think it's a problem across the board in the game. I think it's entirely too easy to get a gold. Yeah. I mean, the, there are a lot of times, even just in PvE, where an event will happen, and you could totally go over and just hit, like, five or six dudes 
and then gold. move on and go do some other stuff. And then five minutes later, you'll get a gold for that event you didn't really participate in. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd, I'd like to see the rewards for taking something more spread out of, like, okay, once you cap this this door, there's a lieutenant behind it. And so you're going to get a little bit of reward for doing that. And then I'm okay with letting the rest of the people go for the main keep because I know I've gotten something for it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think just just in general, I think that Thurb's idea of that circle is a good idea. Yeah, I like but that. I think that before that that idea could be implemented, they need to um, change how change what's required to get you know gold, silver, and bronze level of participation. I, another idea I had another crazy idea was even though I I, I really like the stacked idea because I actually do think that reducing density of players in World vs. World would be why would you idle if there is literally another map that you can go to that you need your server needs help on. But uh, anyway, um, more maps is always fun. Um, my other idea was how to create organization within World vs. World. and Different war ranks. Um, well, yeah, it has, it has to build on the ranking system. Like when they put in the fact that some players will be higher ranked. Um, because I think they did a big disservice by adding one top general yeah. and then not adding anything in between. Agreed. Well, That's- and like it's it's the rank system and all that will like get more people into the game. But the overall issues that I, I have with it of just like the, the, the Treb game that, that is the meta, which right. I almost feel like they like Arena put that in intentionally as a way of like slowing down the back and forth nature. And just like there are these the towers become a trade thing, a pendulum. Right. Um, they should I, add a bunch of like rooms pendulums. in the towers so people can hide. I, I'm OK with pendulums. I just like them to be more than one point. Yeah, well, yeah, that that's the worst kind. Like, um, I, I would love to see taking a keep as a multi-stage process mm-hmm. and, like, taking a tower as a two-stage process of, like, yes, the outer gate's down, but then you have to get through the barricade and people can make a last stand rather than just bailing. Right. So, so yeah, my, my yeah, ideas were... Right now, yeah, once that, once that gate's down, everyone tends to just run away. Um, I, I'm surprised that we've gotten this far and they haven't even considered um, putting friendly... Um, See, like siege weaponry on your map or yeah. um on, on this in this case like because my idea was uh the top levels of players in the game um what they if they open a specific menu what they see is the whole set of borderlands just like as if you hit m and what they can do is they have say a, a pool of 10 points and they can click on a point on that in on that diagram right and invest those points and that's essentially voting it's voting on where you want, like the hotspots of on the map that you want people to attack at any given time, and so um, what what you eventually have is a bunch of people. You, they see the world versus the world map, and they all vote on say specific like two different areas. So if anyone else opens the map, they can see these are the two highest points that pe- that high ranking players in your your team has voted for everyone to pile on on. And so you can have that kind of direction of everyone being funneled towards those, those points based on a kind of voting system by the overall player base, like the higher tiers of player base. That, that, that was kind of my, just some, some way of communicating by the map because there's so much that the map I feel like doesn't do. ArenaNet just simply missed out on some of the most basic points that make it's – not, it's not necessary points, but points that would, I don't know, build up to make something so much more simpler – it's, they're missing like a bunch of steps in the stairwell. I don't know. It feels kind of like that. Mm. Anyway, regardless, I, I, think, I, mean, like I think they did too much of like a top-down approach in terms of like organization. They need to build stuff from the bottom up, so it encourages kind of why I loved to stick to alliance battles back small... when that first came out because groups of right. four because in alliance battles yeah groups also. of four right because it's groups of four running together and then between those groups they'll communicate yeah rather than. Hey, there's a blue icon on the map. Let's all gather around it. Yeah. Because it, it's it's there. They took like a few steps into like the, the system, and I think they rely on people to actually communicate. And there's like at least most of the time, there's very little talking back and forth, and some of it's even griping. Um, it, it's if they want people to, to like to spread out in this fashion, or I, I'm not sure. It's if if you look up the video for. World versus world, they they don't really explain too much other than it's a large scale PvP battleground, and I love that they have a picture of trebuchets 
point blank against the wall attacking stone mist <laughs> not even far away they're just right next to the wall yeah you no know, the more i think about it the more i agree with cynic in there should be less players on world versus yeah, world i'm totally up I, for that the the more manpower is valued as like it's it's scarce mm-hmm. the more people realize they need to organize and actually do shit together yeah. but when everyone's zerging around because there's so many fucking people mm-hmm. they they don't see the value of small squads and building together with an a surplus of well, people it, you have people camping positions and, and right. idling and stuff like that because you do have a surplus of people imagine if you were like playing arma and there was just one blue icon on the map and like <laughs> Nothing would ever get organized. I think the problem is the lack of communication, the lack of organization. I think they could do a lot more to fix yeah, that. Because in any yeah, way, it, they... it's... oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Though. Well, it, I mean, like, the, there's, they're, they're sort of like half in the direction of people can do their own thing and all that, but then it's the other half of the direction of the tools that are in the game right now only benefit, and and the way the game is like is structured only benefits everyone going into this massive ball yeah right. and they arena has like not fully stated this is the direction of of what we're wanting um like it, it, and even even that like uh reference i made earlier of they wanted to make it a sort of helm's deep vibe they don't directly go out and say that other than just in like a couple of interviews uh from before the beta Right, Helm's Deep vibes look good in movies, but they don't play well in video games. But they did sometimes. Like. They did, they did work sometimes. I mean, like I would strange. be okay to be on the defenders in Helm's Deep and eventually <laughs> lose that shit, so long as I got fifty kills for yeah. losing that shit. As long as you beat Gimli, <laughs> but and um, that's very hard to do. Uh, yeah, but uh, there's the idea of more th- maps increasing player scarcity right. underlines some of like the the basic teamwork structure that make games like this fun. And uh, also, like, undermines the reasoning for going to Zergs. Because also if there are more maps, then there's then one Zerg does less in the grass game. Well, it doesn't have to be more it, maps, just, like, a bigger map. Because if the map's big enough that um, a, a group of 50 cannot go from one side of the map where they're attacking to the other side of the map yeah. to attack another point or defend a point, there's, like, there's a reason to split up. Yes. Right. Um, or, because... or if they make it so it's easier for small groups that like if i would love to see towers um not be able to be upgraded to be fortified i'm pseudo okay with reinforced but just sort of a way for a, a 10 to 15 man group can take two towers like before a 50 man zerg can respond or something right i mean it's, right now it's you could spill it up like that and then a big zerg can just wipe everyone out before um <laughs> They, anybody gets successfully to take a right. tower. Yeah. So, like, going back to the alliance battle analogy, the point of alliance battles was if you zerg up, you can win battles, but you will not capture the points. You will not win you the will war. effectively lose the game. Right. You yeah. will lose the game because you simply can't cover the ground. Yeah. And because there are so many people, you just have three balls of zergs running around that can usually, usually access, like, the big battle points of the map that really matter and yeah. that are, like, I mean, from what I've heard, the the tier one is basically just people running around in giant zergs. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and so I I I would love to see an increase like a player scarcity. I'd like to see whatever way you you introduce that player scarcity without reducing the amount of people on each server. Like whether it be like stacked maps or just bigger maps or just more maps or whatever. like incentivize for people to run around in small groups away from the zerg. Yes. I think either by rewards by like if people in your party get kills, maybe you get bonus assist points. Because back or in the day, like, like back in beta, some. The funnest times we had were the big Zergs were internal battlegrounds, so we grabbed a small group of fucking crazy people and swam across the world in like crazy in the middle of nowhere parts of the enemy's borderlands and <coughs> capped behind enemy lines and shit when no one else was there. We I'm, just got shit when no one else was looking and, and, and that, that kind of I'm, feeling of being a commander. I'm not saying, I'm not saying yeah, it, it's Zerg entirely because that Zerg is necessary to win yeah. battles and that's a part of the game, but yeah. don't make that the only thing. Hmm. I'd, I'd like that Zerg, um, like that that idea of everyone spread out. But the thing is, is you you will probably end up getting that feeling of everyone's going to want to go to like group up as large as possible, um, because most people on their own, like just getting into World versus World, don't know the process of sneaking around, taking stuff, even a, in a small five to ten group. Right. They're going to want to just look for that blue icon. Um, but have we gotten to the point where, where we're getting a huge influx with new players into World vs. World? 
I'm not seeing too much of it, but that's, I mean, I'm only playing on one server. Right. Uh, I, I think this is, going, yeah, it's like we, we are approaching the, near the three and a half, four hour mark. So I think we're going to wind down to New <laughs> Brahma's heading out. Um, I, I, it's, I think this is going to get more people into it, but I think it's just going to keep the same metric going of um, like towers and, and, and whatnot and rarely attacking keeps. Uh, like if if somebody has enough to attack a keep, they're going to own the whole map eventually probably. Yeah. Um, just because, because like that that, yeah. that time of day, there's more people on one side and it's not – I don't think it's too fun for the defenders. Momentum is totally uh, a thing at the moment in all this world. Momentum and, is totally – I would like to see that changed. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people do like the metric of just attacking things back and forth. But whenever I see people like uh, making an attack on Stone Mist or a keep or something right now, it's just we need to attack with as much as we can as quickly as possible because if we make this drag on too long, it's not going to work. So, and so we, I guess, in the way to wind winding down, we can just like kind of focus this a little bit. So what do we think of the changes they're actually making to all this as well? Which of these do you think is worth talking about? Is, are there anything here that you think will, will significantly help what's happening? I, I think they're, they're good changes. Um, I mean, like the, I think the providing strong incentives for specific objectives and short term goals is a good thing. Whether or not that's the thing in the right direction, they haven't stated. What does that um, mean? Short term goals? I, Short short term uh, goals is like I, I think that's taking away from rather than the grand scale of attacking a keep or even the grander scale of getting points for your server. Um, short term goals. Uh, it's, I, I don't know if that's just holding minute to minute wolf versus wolf map. Yeah, it sounds like there's like holding or it's assaulting or whatever. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a tough thing of uh, like balancing all that, but still making it so that. You aren't going to end up with stuff like what we saw in the beta of uh, 30 to 50 people stacking on top of a Doliac because escorting that was a uh, greater reward versus risk than yeah. attacking. <laughs> and so I didn't you remember see that. Farmers, you see regular players <laughs> stacking up on these Doliacs just to escort it from depot to tower because you would get XP reward, like X XP coin and karma. Um, Power so it's uh, I, power I progression is definitely something like providing additional ways for world versus world players to earn various power progression rewards available across the game currently PVE for participating in world versus world content. I actually think that's a, a really big thing because when I was playing through the game, the fact that if I worked into world versus world and spent my karma on armor, I'd get this shitty looking chainmail crab, no matter what part of the game I was in, and it, it always had the same crappy stats that I don't necessarily want on it. At the, the whole like going to from zero to eighty, sorry, one to eighty in World vs. World or two to eighty, I guess. Um, in World vs. World was was appealing until I saw the realities of it and the lack of actual, the feeling of player progression and power progression in World vs. World. So I, that that change, a lot of these changes seem to be incentivizing people to play World vs. World, World, World more as individuals. Um, yep, I mean, I I think it's going to reward them uh, to get in. But probably just still keep attacking towers. Yeah. Um, the See, I, I completely disagree with that. I think by saying that you're completely ignoring the whole part about them incentivizing objectives, well, short term goals. The thing is, we don't know what those short term goals yeah. are. I'm just assuming those short term goal goals are attack the tower. But that's what I'm saying. You're assuming the worst. Like you're taking the most pessimistic view you possibly could about <laughs> the one p portion of the game that you care about the most and that you would that would actually keep you playing. You you are you do realize you're talking to a person who is sold on World vs. World and like delved into that wonderful world that it is, and then just like oh it's all just this like very easy met meta game that like balances itself out, right? And, and it seems like so they are I, trying to make steps towards making. I am a bit cynical at it, ma 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 like doing something to change that, and I, I just I don't think that taking the the immediate well they're going to fail at everything. Um, attitude is is necessarily the right way to go, I guess, or the right. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to fail at it. I think they're going to successfully bring people in, but the issues I, that that burn me out on the on the game are not going to get addressed at least in this update. I don't know. Uh, See, I, I disagree. I, I I personally feel like there is a chance that those will get addressed with this based on the wording that we're seeing. Maybe. I guess we'll set to see what the, those rewards are. For, for me, if um, this list was something like um, provides way for players to indicate on map 
um, where, where the hotspots are. And like, things like organizational stuff and, and things that like, address the core concerns of why world versus world isn't necessarily appealing to me is would be more exciting than them phrasing it, at least phrasing it the way they have. Because it sounds that they're incentivizing things in world versus world. They just say they're incentivizing things in world versus world. They don't really say what they're incentivizing or why they're incentivizing it. And that, that's probably why we're, we're assuming the negative in this case. Because, because it right. does... And, and, and that's the thing, though, is that to me, the wording sounds more like what, what you guys are wanting, which is, like they say, they're going to incentivize specific objectives. Now, they're not saying... They're not saying we're going to incentivize taking towers. Right. They're, they are saying we're incentivizing specific objectives. That is a plural thing, but which to me they, means that's like, there are going to be Noob multiple said, different objectives they're going to incentivize. That's like what Noob said, highway without the cars. It's, it's, we don't have a way to set objectives. We don't have a way to like to, for a player-fed objective system at all. So what, what if they – say what, what if they do a thing which incentivizes um, – hitting a supply camp that no one is near that that could nest that could essentially address some of the concerns we had that that could be really positive in some ways that that, that could enforce people splitting from the zerg and that, that addresses many things we have but there's also a flip, flip side to that it's like what if you what if that person was needed elsewhere what what if, what if we needed him well i think other side of the i world? think well, I guess when I, when i see um something like like that wording specifically what i look at is from the granted limited experiences I've had in well of since launch, um, there are events that will pop up when things are happening. Like when I was playing it today, I was at a, a keep. I was actually just running around doing world completion, um, but I happened upon a keep that was being uh, um, attacked, and the event pops up saying, "Hey, defend this keep," and there's a timer on it. And when that timer runs out, you get your reward based on your um, uh, how much you helped. Yeah. Um, I, I see these um, incentives for sp- specific objectives being things similar to that, but the idea basically being there are, you know, like you said, like maybe like hit up this supply camp or you know attack the supply camp, but the only reason you're getting it is because of maybe where you are located on the map and um, in regards to where different things might be potentially able to so, happen. So utilizing like dynamic, dynamic events more as opposed to... Yeah, like like yeah. you're not going to be getting... like You're not going to be on the southern end of the map and suddenly an event's going to pop up saying, hey, go attack this you know, tower up on the northwestern corner of the map. Like I don't think that's the direction they're going to go. I think the idea is to move players around the map, not to... Not, not not to send them on a cross country chase for for this event. It, it's I think it's really going to be a lot more um, regional based. Yeah. Again, based on what's what's captured, what's not, you know, that kind of thing. But we're I, all I, speculating. I, like, so, so I, I yeah, guess, it's all speculation. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's the direction they they kind of need to go with. They it. need to go. Uh, the the other thing that like it's we we talked a little bit about it was the the progression ranking system. Um, basically, it, it's the reason why I'm cynical about that is. With the current ranking system of regular players and then the commanders, that is not the best system either. Because like I've I've had situations where people will come like they've come into chat saying, "Okay, I just hit eighty and dropped a hundred gold for a commander icon. How do I play this game?" Huh. I have had to teach a person who had the commander <laughs> icon on how to no, use that, a trebuchet. I agree with that. That that is actually a bigger issue with the commander icon costing gold. Oh yeah, really? Dumbest- You're saying done. that no one before the game <laughs> came out said, "Wait, why the fuck is this thing? Why is this attached yeah. to gold? What the fuck is wrong with the arena? What the fuck are you doing?" Um, you all said that same it, token. It, it's it's more like I, I I don't see like I I I guess I don't see how adding a a personal player progression to Love Love could be anything but good. Well, it's, it, I mean, like, you will have, like, yeah, granted, the people who are natural commanders who are very good leading and all that uh, will probably rise in this progression. But then you're also going to get people who just like shooting stuff and will get the rank of, like, captain or whatever, turn their icon on for kicks and EP value and not know the crap about doing stuff because they got most of the reward Whoa. from auto attacking a door and then killing people after the door has gone down. Okay. Well, the thing is throwing the commander shit aside, like we, we can't even consider that stuff in there. Cause that's, that's the dumbest fucking thing. It is completely outside of this player <laughs> progression. Well, no, I'm uh, just talking about it. Uh, no. Well, I'm saying like, do we know that any of these ranks are going to have any kind of a, a tag? 
like yeah. the commander icon? That's yeah. Is that's that's that maybe not like the commander oh, no, icon? But they, no, they, no. They've said you get new ranks that you can earn in Werber's World, visible to all other players. Right. Right. That visible as in like a title. mean on the map. I, I never said yeah, it was on the like, map, that, but that, I mean that could, that could easily be a title. If if people run around and they see this guy that says captain on it, they'll probably follow him, even if that guy doesn't know what he's doing. I, I again, I think I, I think that that that's. I think that when they say visible, what they mean is that it's going to be a title under your name that when people click on you, they'll see your title. I, I'm I hoping it's just going to be something like the star we see for world completion. That would be nice. Um, yeah, yeah, something along those lines. I don't think it's yeah. going to be a computer like thing where you're going to be able to see it on a mini map or over their head in the but, world. But yeah. based on like based on observations of previous systems put in place, aka the commander icon, that makes me wary about ranks and progression in the current in the system they're offering because they haven't announced anything other than yo we're we're offering this uh, maybe next week or the week after that like clo- as we get closer to the uh, february update we'll see stuff like that and so we can put our fears to rest or it can be like oh crap we were right everyone hide or everyone dump out of love love now yeah pretty much i, I, I don't know what's kind of weird um, <laughs> is that when on the when the game was coming out um, they put up a bunch of posts on like this is where our current ideas for the combat system. These are our current ideas for the um, the progression and skill systems and that kind of stuff. And they changed them a bunch. Like they, they they changed them pretty much like once every two or three months. But they put up those posts in the first place and were able to get player reactions on everything they they did. It's it's weird to me, like the, the extreme lack. Oh, and we've, we've talked about this before, but the extreme lack of any form of communication between them and the players since the game came out. Mm-hmm. I mean, something that would be awesome is some of the suggestions we've made that, or like some of the suggestions that, because like every time you look at the level of forums, which I recommend no one does because you get very <laughs> depressed. All right. Um, you see tons of suggestions for World vs. World. If they took even a fraction of those for, that were very easy to implement, that were very balanced across the board, and just like they did with the calling uh, week where for one week they tested a, a system of calling, if they said, all right, this week no one can fortify a tower, or e- does this does this change the element of the game oh, in a good be, way? Like basically so a, a, a muta- um, every week there's a mutation. That would be interesting um, as fuck. Like that would be a way that to show that hey we're testing these things we're listening to you guys yeah we're seeing if this works with the the community other than this veiled cloak of yeah we're working on stuff you're going to see it in two months we'll we'll tease it every now and then but we aren't going to say anything about what precisely it is yeah and that changed from before the beta like before the game was released mm-hmm. of hey this is all the things we're announcing legitimate things tangible things mm-hmm. to yo but we'd be working on stuff. Yeah. Or I guess more importantly, it was the communication that really changed where um, during the beta and, and you know, pre-beta and everything, basically pre-launch, um, they were really out there communicating with everybody. And there was, there was a kind of a there was kind of a dialogue back and forth between the player base yeah. and and the, and arena net. Um, and then the game launched. And for the most part, they just kind of gone silent like they, you know, they have done. I think they did one AMA post-launch. Um, they, they've and, done a couple AMAs on the uh, from various people, and what's very annoying is, um, like, wh- whenever they announce that they're doing these AMAs, like I, I, I know for two examples they've done this. People have been like, "Okay, hey, they're doing an AMA on this time. Let's get all the questions ahead of time from people, and we'll like, and as soon as they say, hey, we're starting the AMA, they post this long list, and three of those get answered. The first three usually, and like the meat of the questions are later on, and." It'd be nice to see just something like that go back and forth. Well, I mean, to be fair, any AMA that I've seen, which granted hasn't been very many, um, yeah. that's not the structure of them. Like that's that's the people on the AMA doing the structure wrong, because it's always like somebody asks a question, they answer the question. From what I've seen, yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. well, they, they they get all the questions ahead of time. Either way, like and then post. the, these posts have been coming from the forums. They they use the forums, they just don't use them how I would want them. To. They just oh, I I just want to know more than. We are looking well, it, at yeah. goals for players. Like, my, so. my like for, for all we to, know. But my heart goes out to like Ruby and I think like Mike White is the other guy. But like there, there's people who are on the forums constantly like posting yeah, stuff. Definitely. But for the most part, yeah. it's account fixing or it's, it's unbanning not the people. people. We like these issues are applicable to. And I just like some something to happen where we get like we get regular back and forth like the every uh, Friday or maybe the first Friday of every month or something, there's this 
hour to two hour long thing where they answer questions. Run your yeah, shit or, or like giantbomb.com. As God you know, once, once, even something as simple as like once a month, you know, put out a big long post, state of the game. This is where we're at right now. These are some of the things we're working on. These are some of the things that we're looking at in the future. Like they started out with that, but I feel like they that dropped off at some point. If giantbomb.com is... can have Jeff motherfucking Gersman sitting in his fucking bedroom answering questions, yeah. you can do it too. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, I, I, I think we just is, need a general transparency that yeah. we're not really getting. Like, for all we know, they probably are taking some of these suggestions that, that are being made in Absolutely. the forums. We have no and, idea. And putting them on a wall somewhere that they will eventually get to once they've gotten to some of the stuff that they need to work on. And they've known they need to work on since, you know, pre-release. But we don't know that. Yeah. As far as we know, everyone's being ignored. Like, it's – it's. Uh, I almost don't want to say this because it, it would, like, seriously undermine the – uh, quality of this podcast, but if they had a arena net podcast, oh yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Where they just no, that'd be great. Yeah, that, would, that would actually be really cool. Like I get some of the, the different developers on there, just like a, you know, round table, fucking do it. You know, Wada says style because like that <laughs> would have be a, have have, would... Col- have Colin on there and have him pull in you know three different people each week and talk about what they've been doing in the game and what their experiences are and all that. Yeah, not only that, but it would be a central place for all of us to go for information rather than the current method of. We are just like swimming through the forums trying to find the one red post. Like, yes, yeah. there's the dev tracker, but you're still scrolling through those pages of unbanning, fixing, responding <laughs> to the like, things to, oh, this is an actual valid meaty response. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, like kind of going <laughs> what Thurb said, you know, undermining this, this podcast a bit. But like it's sad that for some people, things like this podcast are where they get Guild Wars 2 news. Yeah. And we because try our best to not so, just read so all the text notes and we try to like f- make valid arguments about stuff and go and like sh- really talk about these. But this is actually I the first episode we've done in a long time where we actually went deep. We shouldn't be the source for that is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, like exactly. that should be easily gotten from any player uh, of the game mm-hmm. and it's not. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but my audacity just hit four hours. Yep. So I think we yep. could. I think this is like, the longest episode ever. Can Same. can we summarize it's the longest on topic episode ever? This yeah, is by I far. Didn't want to do worst world podcast ever, but Colin Johansson's post of like, "Hey, we're delaying this a month," was the straw that broke the camel's back. I was just like, "I'm sorry, <laughs> I love this game, and like, I I really do like World vs. World, but I just can't stand playing it anymore." I, I hate World vs. World. I'm sorry, man. Game. I know you like it, but man, I, yeah, I just I just don't like it. There's, there there are many well, issues that we didn't get to that I have, and the, whatever. But, there's yeah. there's very little value in the things that I like to do in World vs. World, and it's very hard to get people to do it, especially with like the breakout events or the multitude of commander icons out there. Oh, I don't turn my commander icon on now because there's already three others on the map, Fucking and I'm like, well, icons. I am a detriment to people if I start doing this. So yeah. The commander icon thing is, is probably the biggest issue with Wolf Wolf. No, I, I think but, the biggest issue in, in Wolf Wolf and a lot of this game was how crappy the partying system is. Well, yeah, like it, well, it yeah, could, yeah. Be, could be an awesome thing if when you joined it, if you joined the squad, because people still don't know how to join squads or commander icons. Yep, they think I don't. It's just a, like, I literally don't. I have I no don't. idea. If you saw a drop down of like the different parties that people are in, and I found not even having an icon, but just have everybody, everybody in parties with a target symbol gives a more longevity for your Zerg or your whatever you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. Or just you know have it like when you join whatever map you're joining, have the game automatically throw you into a squad, and then oh, from yeah. there you can choose to switch to a different squad if you so choose. Like there are squad based multiplayer shooters that do that exact same fucking thing. It can be yeah. done. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's it, that's that's world versus world for you. Go out there and give it a try and <laughs> have some fun. Uh, Durin, do you have any plugs? It, it really is fun. Like on occasion. Yeah, it's it's fun. I promise. Every Friday night, you should give it a shot. That is the best time you're going to have in World vs. Or, you know, yeah. when your server is dominating Love Love. You like, know, go ahead and go in there and just have a little bit of fun. Yeah. Because yep. it can be. I miss the betas. And there's jumping puzzles in there, too, as we talked about earlier with Josh Foreman. Indeed. Um, during. Anything you'd like to plug? Yes. Uh, uh, just, you know, streaming stuff again. Like, I, yeah. I didn't do as much streaming this week as I wanted to, um, but... Part of that was Guild Wars 2, so I think maybe, if nothing else, I'll just stream Guild Wars 2. We, so, we'll see. You know what we should do? We should do, like, um, before the podcast or something, or maybe after, is uh, do, like, a, a live stream of us doing 
uh, Left 4 Dead or Dungeon Land or something. Yeah. That'd be a fun thing. Something for the YouTube and, channel. Duran, have you updated the YouTube channel? Because we've gotten random subscribers. I maybe have not updated the YouTube channel in a while. You, I you really get on that the fucking YouTube channel. I don't think I've updated it since January. Yeah, like the beginning. Oh, you actually did. So, so it's updated to January. I no, I mean like. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, because like last, <laughs> the last one that went up, I think was the. Uh, it, it is the one after Josh Foreman, I think. <laughs> was oh, it the one God. after? Okay, so we're like six behind. God yeah. damn it, Duran. Damn yeah, it, Duran. Really Seriously, dude. Seriously. Uh, uh. Um, I wish plugs? FFmpeg was easier. That's all I gotta say. My plugs? Is that... Oh, so much easier. do you have a new computer now? Or was it you know, just a... No, no. Uh, just the same one. Right. I hope to have a new one, but I don't know when. Yeah, I, I, I need you to start getting FFmpeg working. God damn it. Anyway, my plug? Uh, yes. Yeah, what do you got, Cynic? My plug Cynic. this week is... Hey, guys. Everyone out there... Read a book. <laughs> read, <laughs> read some more. Like, like, yeah, I, I, I've, I remember the discussion we had at the top of this episode, and I, I realized how much I like. I've grown to like reading more now. Now that I have less like average time on my hands, like I'm usually doing something whilst listening to an audiobook or just before I go to sleep at night, I, I, I read and stuff. It's yeah, it's pretty great. It is pretty great. Video games are cool too, but. Yeah, there's something awesome about reading a book. It's more satisfying to me now than most of the movies I've watched this year. So. Yeah. Oh, also that Paper Man thing you can watch on YouTube. So you can hate it like Durin does because he's evil. It's, it's fucking Disney magic in real world doesn't work. <laughs> no, so, but it's killed. it's a good improvement. It's it's a excellent. Yeah, it's, it's it's good. It's it's just it's not from a technical standpoint, I guess, because like watching it. Thinking it's 2D and then later knowing it's all done in 3D was it's it's, it's hard crazy. because apparently because they put it up, so just to be clear like one of my favorite experiences from movie going in general in 2012 was a short in front of Wreck It Ralph the movie called Paper Man done by Disney it's up for um, the Academy Award I believe for best short of 2012 um, they've posted it on YouTube.com if you just search for Paper Man you'll find it there it's got I believe it's the one at the top of the list. Um, but it's like a, it's a full on animated movie, but done in 3D in a 2D style. And it puts cell shading in video games to absolute shame. It shows you what gonna, Pixar can c- do. Uh, Cynic, oh, I'm, I'm going to say Disney you Disney. should probably post that in your links because yes, last I checked, it was still a unregistered video, meaning that you have oh. to have the link to find it. I searched for Paper Man on YouTube, and it just showed me the trailer. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put that in the show. So it's it's made like 6 million views without being a scene. <laughs> Beyond video. searchable. Without being searchable. Um, which is awesome. Yeah, which is fantastic. Uh, so it's, it's the problem is it's in 1080p on there. Um, so that kind of ruins some of it because, it's a, because by definition, it's clearer in your television or monitor than yeah. it would be in theaters. You can kind of see the edges a little bit more. But yeah, no, it's totally watchable. It, it, it's yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's like the best music video that isn't a music video, in my opinion. If you can live with a little bit of Disney magic, so I'll put that on the floor. Doubleton, what are your a little bit of Disney magic? Yeah, really. It's, yeah, it's the last like five, like thirty seconds or forty, forty five. Sentient airplane, paper airplanes. You're ruining everything. Magic. <laughs> God damn it. Disney's ruining everything. Uh, how could you I hate us? They were the first and ones to. And like uh, animated paper only because J- Japanese, I remember a Japanese anime did that too. Right. But anyway, I guess uh, my plug is I'll, I'll play my uh, stream again. I've been a bit more active on there. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Thurbleton. Mm-hmm. Um, I just realized that I can't see any replies to the Lincoln cast Twitter, which is at the Lincoln cast. Cause got weird follows. Like some people have started following us, really? but no one's replied. Yeah, I mean, like, if you have any comments on the discussion we had today, either for or against, um, if you can, put it in Twitter. Uh, If you can get that short paragraph, hopefully that's not just hate rage about our arguments against World vs. World. If you have something more more meaty that you want to contribute, you can email us um, at... Zanuck. The Lincoln cast at gmail.com. Also, Thank you. if you've listened and this long, put turkey, turkey, turkey in either the email or any post no, no, no. We anywhere. Have, we have to change it to something different because like, people expect turkey, turkey, turkey now. But no one posts it, so it's fine. It's the thing. It's the thing we do. All right, all right. We'll do it. All right. Yeah, turkey, turkey, turkey. Um, put turkey, 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 turkey anywhere. Just communicate that turkey to us. 
Turkey turkey noob. Turkey turkey, turkey, noob? turkey noob. Turkey turkey noob. I like right. it. Either like turkey, it. turkey 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 yeah. or turkey turkey noob if you're more inside the random school that is the Leaky Cast. Um, and if you do, and if Duran or Cynic are on, because they are the ones who know the logins for that those things, we'll <laughs> mention your pop, name on, I, pod, on the podcast. Oh yeah, I we'll mention you. The email there you recording. Go. See if, if anybody you, if you puts it in put it anywhere, anywhere the Twitter, the the Gmail, so at at the link not the Twitter, Facebook, not the Facebook, not the Facebook, at the link has on Twitter, <laughs> the link has at Gmail dot com, or the threads we put up on giantbomb.com dot com in the Guild Wars two forums. If you put, if you put turkey turkey noob or turkey 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 either the, either the, anywhere, we'll mention you in the podcast definitely. All right, and then um, giant bomb real quickly, we are yeah. officially in the dead zone of giantbomb.com. dot com. Hi. Oh yeah, they are transitioning to their their new site. New so. websites up. Yeah, Giantbomb.com uh, is gonna have a brand new website for anybody who doesn't know. Um, I guess uh, instead of since I don't really have anybody to uh, shout out for this week, um, I will instead give a tip about World vs. World to anybody who wants to know. Um, most people know by now that if you put a arrow cart or a catapult inside a tower, you can more or less just aim it at the door that the attackers are hitting and wreck them. Or be that's very annoying terrible. to them. Oh no no! <laughs> I mean, like that's you, you. just you hit the door and the AOE splashes to the other yeah. side. Yep. Um, to counter that, you merely put an arrow cart. Uh, let's say you're attacking. You put it right next to the door, and you can jiggle your camera so you can see over that thin ledge between door and <laughs> that's wall. <terrible. laughs> and you can attack the arrow cart that's attacking you. Nice. <laughs> nice. So that is my pro tip. Uh, so before you put the, the I don't know what you're talking about. balanced. <laughs> I know so many ways to cheese things. Fuck it's it. it's crazy. That's that's what I've been doing. Asymmetrical fighting it used to be so, awesome. So from this man. entire podcast, awesome. what we can take away from this is everyone who enjoys PvP should just go play structured tournament yeah. structured. That's, that's the other thing. Is structured. Really, just Even take a break from World of World until March and just play some some structured PvP in free tournaments. Man, because. Well, you know, if you really get really get into it, seriously, that shark rank is the, like the shark finisher is the coolest thing I've seen. <laughs> Man, oh, I, I need to play more structured. Structured is um, great. We are at four hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's just like sense. everyone have a good good night. Next day, week we're doing a scotch chest. By the way, we're talking about stuff. Probably. Oh, oh yeah, talk about next fitness. week. Yeah, and dieting, fitness, and fitness, fun. scotch, and PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you the middle sibling or the oldest or youngest? Uh, or- I'm the oldest of the middle. That There's is- four of us. Four, okay. Oh, so yeah, four you're the second. Us. You're the second yeah, brother. Second. That's okay. a lot of yeah. siblings. All right. Yeah. Four four males. That's crazy. Yep. What's that one <laughs> yeah. in? Again, it's amazing that I never broke a bone as a child. 0.5. Really? Wow. Well, I was, 16? I was 16? stabbed in the hand. What? Why were you stabbed in the hand? You were stabbed yeah, my, in the hand? My, my older Wait. brother stabbed me in the hand with, with a kitchen knife. Why the oh, fuck wow. did your That's older brother crazy. stab you in the hand with a kitchen knife? <laughs> what? Yeah. What? What? So... So okay, did you get ra- did you, did you, Are you Oliver Twist? Were you raised on the streets? <laughs> what the fuck. Well, you gotta remember, we are part Mexican, so there's that. Do you call them uh, shivs? Is is knife a new word to you? No, it's they basically have to fight for their dinner, and any weapon goes. And his brother <laughs> well, was, no, smart was actually to get the knife. My brother, um, especially back then, was not incredibly intelligent. Um, he enjoyed playing with knives. Uh-huh. And specifically when the parents were at work, he enjoyed doing things like taking um, kitchen knives and throwing them at the floor to make them stick. And a wooden floor? Uh, so he like so fucking over the I floor. I have porcelain yeah. flooring in my kitchen, so that has never happened So you're like to ruining me. your family's floorboards? Well, no, because like, my parents were in the process of uh, remodeling the kitchen. Okay. And so they had pulled the floors up and they were they were the baseboard floors. Okay. Um. So he was doing that one day, and then I guess got bored with doing that. So he came over to me where I was sitting on the couch watching TV. I had to stab and his brother. Yeah, like 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 stabbing motions, like you know, from Psycho or something. Right. And of course, you my put your hands up to to defend to yourself. Hands up to my face. Right. Yeah. And so he he stabbed me. How badly was it? How nice. bad was it? Stabbed? Did he appro- So he's not a sociopath, is what you're saying? N- no. 
Um, um, I assume no, he apologized. Oh yeah, he he yeah he felt fucking terrible. Okay, yeah, that's uh, fine. It, See, it the image when, it, it, I conjure when someone says, "My brother stabbed me in the hand," <laughs> is sociopath. So, yeah, it, it wasn't like it went like all the way through either. Like okay. it went in and back out again. Right. Um, but it was bent, so it kind of made like it an S shaped, um, uh, scar. Oh right. Okay. And took like about five stitches or so. Like it wasn't huge. Okay. Is but, it still there? Oh yeah, the scar's still there. Yeah. See. I have a story from my childhood from when I was in like uh, preschool mm-hmm. or like junior kindergarten. Yep. I was trying to stab this kid's hand with a pencil, right? Um, Why were you trying to stab this kid's hand? hand Are you a sociopath? <laughs> Is that something you didn't um, know about you? Funny story. Two days ago, my English teacher made our entire class take a test about like psychopaths and like if you close, if you score closest to thirty, you're a psychopath. Okay. Apparently, I had the highest score in the class. What's your 20, score? And that was like twenty. <laughs> twenty out of thirty, and that was significantly What's higher. What's the than test the about? Well, why are we not Everyone's recording this right now? Oh, we're, I'm recording this. This um, is definitely going to the, the, the I'm post show. I'm recording. This is going um, to the post show. What? Basically, yeah. Uh, apparently, if you if you selectively choose to feel empathy for certain people that's not actually feeling empathy so <laughs> i don't feel empathy. if you're like but doesn't well, everyone do that that's something everyone does is that yeah I, like i choose to feel empathy for people and apparently like a, for a dark how, how, how about this childhood. all right I'd three enjoy, two like, one and four people just died in the world i have no empathy for them at all i i, I don't give no, a no, shit no, but like yeah, I guess so. I, I don't understand that as a question. But now, yeah, because like it, you know, it's different. Like, I guess if they another like question is: you, do you don't? Then that's maybe a little different. Do you feel like excitement, or are you proud of the fact that you got away with certain crimes and no one found out? <laughs> and apparently, uh, that's not normal. Wait, let me think. <sighs> no, it's it's like the, for like a very dark period of the majority of my childhood life so, i like pick up your childhood and then i this feel good about on. doing it and then like apparently so this is the like pre-batman phase of your life <laughs> except i don't turn into batman i turn into like <laughs> harvey dent <laughs> oh man so so wait what what else was there what are the, what are the questions um there? there was like um Oh, fuck. There was one that was really telling. I could find the sheet. One sec. I'm gonna because like quickly. the standard Rap, like little this, story this. thing that everyone's heard, which is the the one with the funeral. Right. Have you guys heard? Like, that I'm one? assuming some people were like lying on the test to not because there were some obvious things that made you look like a scumbag piece of shit. Right. But I decided to hey, I'm already truth. a pretty big scumbag piece of shit, so yeah. it doesn't really matter, does it? I'd, I'd be more fascinated to to sell, tell the the entire and honest truth and see what the result yeah. was. I'm a good person. That's right. I'm a good person, and <laughs> I'm not gonna let anyone tell me otherwise because I'm a good person. Yeah, I don't think Certainly. I can find I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, and I'm gonna let people like me. Point. Aww. it's like some sort of official psychopath test, but I feel like that's all bullshit. I hope, some, I hope that if that part ends up in the podcast, somebody gets that fucking reference because you all are too goddamn young. Wait, wait, what, what, what did you hear? What, what, I, I was paying attention to what you were saying. What did you say? I said I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I, that sounds familiar. Is that from yeah, Star Wars? Yeah, familiar. No, it's not no, from Star no. Wars, you asshole. God Why do you damn. think everything's from Star Wars? Because <laughs> Star Wars Agent Chambers, Wars. that is Star Wars. Because <laughs> as far as Noob concerned, if it is not government related, it is Star Wars related. <laughs> what? What are you talking? I hate the government. Okay, I uh, know you work for the government. I'll take. I'll talk about <laughs> that later. 